PKA657 with our guest, Top J from Fish Tank. Taylor? This episode of PKA brought to you by Bird Dogs, FarrowDistribution.com, FarrowDistro.com, and Lock and Load, the premium, premium ejaculation supplement. We'll talk more about later. John from Fish Tank, <laughs> a lot of lore surrounding you. Thank you for taking time to, to join us today. No, no, thank you for having me on. It's a pleasure. Yeah, you've been doing, uh, I saw you did the Dick Masterson show, another friend of the show, Dick Masterson. How'd you like him? He's a nice guy, isn't he? Yeah, no, I liked him a lot. He was a pretty cool guy. Uh, I like some. I liked a lot of his beliefs and views on things. Yeah, yeah, he has some Andrew Tate adjacent views as well. And I learned on Fish Tank early on that you're the top G. You are all about Andrew Tate. I'm a total novice to the Tate brothers. What is it about them that attracts you so much that you like so much? Uh, yeah, no, my favorite thing about the Tate brothers is their business, uh, the how they strike on business and their the vision on it and how they see it and how they just get stuff done. Like you can see a lot of people out here that may talk about business, but they're not as focused as them with a clear driven drive. That's the biggest thing I like about them. Okay. So you don't you're not thrown off by the Romanian prison bit at all. You're like, don't care. What person and a public figure I have to have something like that. Like if you look at almost all the people in the government, you know, there's things about Trump, there's things about Biden, like every I would argue most awesome. people in the public eye are not imprisoned in Romania or charged with rape. Well, yeah, no, I agree to that. But okay. what I'm talking they about should is, be. <laughs> well, he means that everybody's got skeletons in their closet. His yeah. just happens to be allegedly keeping women's passports in a safe. <laughs> yeah. you got, all right, now, let me just make this point. Allegedly. We got to keep those passports safe. Someone like this gentleman could come along, tear him up. Yeah, That's yeah, true. you... That's true. Touché. <laughs> that was <laughs> the absolute funniest part of Fish Tank that had me cracking up was Sam's genuine and sincere fury with you when you decided you were going to tear up Letty's passport and Sam had a realization of like, this guy's not fucking around. He's he's going to destroy her passport and trap so, her in the United States. Were you were you LARPing a little bit? Were you joking or were you really going to so do it? I don't know if you, I don't know if you get to able to heal, but I actually got permission from Sam before I even grabbed the passport. Oh, OK. What did you say? I asked him, can I break anything of ladies, no matter what it is? And he gave me. A yes. But first I had to shake Ben's hand and then I was free to break anything of Letty's. <laughs> so, okay, so there were rules of sorts. You just had to shake Ben, so you, the producer's hand, and then you could destroy anything. That sounds to me like you were in the clear. Like he gave you the go-ahead to destroy anything. She's lucky you didn't punch her in the face. So going for the passport seemed fair to me. But Yeah, you could have chosen you, her nose. But once you yeah. had the passport, everyone was clearly screaming for you to stop and not do it. But but you persisted. You sort of ran away with it. And you were like, but you said, but you said. <laughs> yeah, he's a top G. He's not going to stop. He's not going to, he's not going to give up. You like don't take no data. for an answer. No, if I, if right? I really wanted to rip it, I had a solid seven seconds of it in my hand. It takes oh, yeah. two seconds to rip it. If even. Yeah. Top. So been like, did they yeah. got lucky. I decided not to. Hmm. They did. Yeah. It, it, I, I don't think Sam was acting. Uh, when he threw those drawers and everything afterward, uh, really though that the, the passport thing wasn't even really that bad. Like the the physical assaulting from airsoft fatty, all the spits and all that. I don't think you ever hit anybody, spit on anybody. I think you you kept your hands to yourself, didn't you? Other than Sam during sparring. Yeah, no, I, I didn't physically hurt anyone. Mm. Yeah, that's good. That's likely to bring you back. Is Sam also lucky that you decided to back off a little bit uh, for the uh, passport? You know, during the sparring and stuff. Well, I don't think I could have beat up Sam. Like, oh, okay. let's just be real. <laughs> I'm unexperienced, and he was teaching me, and he's three times bigger than me. Like, in all no, if you don't try. So yeah. you were Woody's. Woody's talked about you before, of not knowing it was you. Because you were the guy holding those pads when Sam Hyde was <laughs> kicking the absolute <laughs> fuck out of you. And and whenever we talk about Fish Tank previously, like months back, Woody would be like, I don't know. I kind of feel bad for some of these guys. 
What about that one little fellow that they were kicking the shit out of? <laughs> <laughs> so now you can get his, his perspective. Did you, did you, yeah. did you feel moment, bullied? Yeah. Did I feel bullied? Yeah, when you were holding Once. the pads. Because he was going pretty hard given the size difference. You know, I, I don't know if he did it on purpose or not. Um, I could kill less either way. But you didn't feel bullied. I, I guess well, not. No. Objection, leading yeah. witness. <laughs> I've always been to the perspective. It wasn't bullying. It was training. You practice how you play. And Taylor, can I, yeah. could I, could I, could I step in for the prosecution and just completely flip <laughs> the script here and point out that if that is bullying, then bully, then, then Woody here serial bullied every member of the Call of Duty community that he could lay hands on over the years. I have seen him choke out minorities in hotels across the greater <laughs> United States. Okay? Only minorities, now that I'm thinking. He about. pounced on Bashir outside those elevators one time, and this this young black man from Canada, okay, just, just down here to have a good time, Woody's <laughs> choking the life out of him. Some of these kids didn't know how to tap. No. <laughs> that was pretty fucked. So yeah, that, that, uh, that would qualify as bullying then. Woody lifted yeah. white boys so far off the ground, and his little I, legs well, were kicking. In in my defense, I was bullying white boy. Yes, you were bullying <laughs> everybody. That's my favorite of all times when you lured white boy into a a bullying. <laughs> we, like white boy had like made some videos lying about me, talking some trash, and and like it, it hurt me. Like it hurt Who's my feelings. It hurt my standing. Oh, so the, YouTuber. This is old way YouTuber. long ago. It might be 10, 11 years ago. And uh, this Fresh guy stuff. white boy was like a peer of mine in the YouTube Call of Duty community. And we had an online beef, but everything he said was lies. And I really didn't like his way of doing the beef. And I think he won, right? He won, but it's easy to win when you just make up your argument. And, and that's that. Anyway, as part of our sort of burying the hatchet, I guess there was wrestling or grappling involved. And In uh, I'm a lot bigger than white boy. I just am. With and, multiple uh, years of combat experience as well. And I'm I'm better trained Decades. than White Boy. So during the grappling, I got him in a guillotine, but I I was able to hold him by his his head and his neck and lift his feet off the ground. Yeah. And uh that made me feel better about the situation. Yeah. That is so much more ruthless than Sam were, kicking the pads. Were the, you there? The lifting part. Were yeah. you there for that, Taylor? Were you in that yes. room? Oh, that's awesome. I'm so glad you were in that room. <laughs> yeah, that was rough. I, I couldn't remember for the life of me who else was in that room. Yeah. I thought it was Woody hilarious. wrestled me on that trip. And mm -hmm. like Woody has beaten he everyone doing. I know up in the YouTube community, including, <laughs> including this a long time me. ago. He didn't beat me up, but that was because Woody chose not to. That's, <laughs> he, 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 I was in the position. But I wanted to, to talk about Fish Tank more. There was one guy Sorry. on there from early on, Simmons, who he's the gentleman. Kyle and Woody, who was discovered to have written a very, uh, very spicy book about being a camp counselor and how to hook oh, up shit. with campers and all that. And before that was all revealed, John, you and Simmons seemed to be like getting along like he was successfully coming off as a really weird guy, but kind of, you know, just harmless until that got revealed. Was that upsetting or, or annoying or do you feel tricked or anything when it came out that he was a real ghoul and you'd kind of buddied up to him? Well, to be fair, I was kind of using him as a bitch, essentially. I don't know if you guys noticed. Anything I wanted done, I had him do it. Mm -hmm. And he would start to ask permission before he would go do something. So I was, I was kind of using him. Same thing with a couple other people there at, at the first couple of weeks. Um, like, I thought it was going to be like Big Brother. And, you know, Big Brother... There's a lot of manipulation tactics you have to use. Mm -hmm. So I saw him as a pawn to win the game. Was the entirety of Fish Tank, you know, you said you thought it was going to be like Big Brother. Were you? Did you know who Sam Hyde, Million Dollar Extreme, who they were? Or did you go in like, I can't wait to be a part of Jason Goldstriker's big game? I went in there blind. Oh, okay, wow. yeah. so you did not I know that I was Sam I Hyde. Knew, I didn't know who he was beforehand. I saw one YouTube video about That's two cool. months prior of him talking about Andrew Tate, and that was the only thing I've ever seen about him. And then oh, yeah. when he walked in the room, I was like, oh, that's that guy from that one video. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Except he's dressed up in a giant suit kicking me. 
Was there an advertisement um, looking for actors, people? Craigslist. I was so on Craigslist because I do modeling, so I respond to lots of like act, you know, modeling gigs on Craigslist. Mm-hmm. And then I just see who over bites and they they sent me a message. So I sent them a video of me talking about myself. And then they wanted another video, and I forgot to send them that second video they wanted. And then um, I forgot about them all together. And a month later, <laughs> they asked me if I wanted an uh, interview. And I said, yeah, but who are you guys again? <laughs> and then they told me, and we had the interview the next day. It's so good um, you said, yeah, who are you? <laughs> yeah, who are you? <laughs> That's very Sigma male behavior. Yeah, I'll do it. Who are you again? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. So you just went Craigslist. in Craigslist. No idea. Craigslist yeah. feels like I didn't know Craigslist was still a thing. I remember a long time ago it used to be where you could go for like a skeezy hookup, and then they took all the adult stuff off there, and all the hookers left, and all the all the dirty <laughs> people left. I didn't know it was still a thing. I didn't know it kept going. Now you use it to yeah. find people for well, reality. I think shows. it's it's going decently in Facebook Oregon. I know in some other states Craigslist isn't really a thing. Yeah, How does I feel the, like Facebook Marketplace killed it. But it's yeah. not totally dead. It did. It's better. Uh, I think it's. You talked about anyway. modeling. How did you get into that? And is it just like hard scoping Craigslist you're looking for? Or at this point, do you have people reaching out to you? How'd you get into it? So when I, I first started doing it, I was a wild and file fighter at the time, and I was just we were sitting around that day. So I put up my phone, went on Craigslist, and then I was like, oh, I could get paid for someone to take pictures of me. Yeah. Well, Let's naked? do that. No, I wasn't naked. I was. It was like for a bank. It was for one of the local credit unions here. They wanted a picture of me in their pamphlet or their paper nice. ad or something like that. Nice. That's a pretty like, good gig. That's like a respectable gig. Sometimes when you see people portrayed as like tr- struggling artists, they end up, I don't know, in some weird Japanese soap commercial, like scrubbing themselves with panda bears or something. Yeah. Doing, but. <laughs> But just, yeah, we want you on this pamphlet of in the bank. That's respectable. Like you, you can immediately show that to your grandma. You know, yeah. as, a, as a guy. Who's yeah. Starting out. We need you to be the bad credit score guy. Like <laughs> you, know, you can work up to the good credit score. Guy. How would you like to be a white home intruder? <laughs> yeah, put the fucking ski mask on you and break yep. into a the house in the middle of the day. Yeah. That, is uh is the modeling going better since Fish Tank? I imagine that kind of attention has probably helped out, right? Oh yeah, everything has uh, gotten ten times better. Uh, nice. For example, my job, I've recently signed out a, a couple of companies to partner with, and they've been sending me multiple clients a day now, and which they found me through Fish Tank. Your job and is then modeling. We're talking obviously about? modeling. I'm I'm probably I'm about to get picked up from a modeling agency, and there's this other modeling academy. They want to hire me as a coach, which I don't know how legitimate that is, but I guess I would see. But like, yeah. um, if, if I would think they would look into me and know I've only done modeling for a few years, so I don't know why they would want me as a coach. Let me, yeah. let me ask you this. Do due diligence. When you, when you correspond with these people from Craigslist and other, other places, um, do you are you always um, – you always write to them the same way that you wrote to uh, our guy, Chiz. Because he sent me the email that that uh, he had with you, your correspondence, and it is wordy. You sent him uh, one, two, three, four, five, <laughs> six, five. seven, eight. I'm going to call that nine paragraphs. And it is it is some 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 cool stuff. I, I had a blast <laughs> reading through this. Do you, do you Do you write to everybody like this? No, not everybody. That was only for you guys, actually. For the <laughs> modeling gigs, it's usually a lot shorter and straight to the point and all the facts and details they need to know. What do they usually ask when uh, for like a modeling gig? Is it requirements like height and weight? Yeah, height That's and weight, it. age, uh, where you located, uh, what's your social media accounts, uh, the usually want a portfolio, what have you done, you know, just a whole bunch Write him stuff, information about you, like your name, phone number, yeah. email. You mentioned uh, before modeling, you were a firefighter, a wildlands yeah. firefighter. That's really cool. How how long did you do that? And do you have any crazy stories or did you get to go try that out? Like actually fight fires or never got the Yeah, job? so I did about three to four years. Um, you okay, Carl? <laughs> yeah, he's okay. okay. He's just getting um, high. 
<laughs> no, just, just trick it by trick. So yeah, I did it for about three to four years. Um, I have this one good story you guys probably like when I caught my ass on fire. Oh shit! Um, That'll ruin your yeah. Mind. So, so I was in Northern California on the July Complex, 2020, and we were we were putting. I was putting out this juniper tree. Um, it's like a 500 year old juniper tree. And I was putting it out, because I was assigned on an engine, engine 3.5. And I was putting it out with a hose with 350 pounds of PSI at the time. Mm-hmm. So I put it out, and then I put out the next tree, came back because it flailed back up. As I was putting it out, because I was on an incline on the hill, and it was all sand. And I guess my white foot was standing on an L pocket. So my foot went like a foot or two in the ground because the sand just caved in on me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the holes while I was using pushed me down on the ground. And the sand was all wet and hot as fuck. So steam ended up going through my pants and giving me a second degree born on my ass. I was only on the yeah. ground for like a second. It blistered I jumped up off so fast. It blistered up. got blistered up and everything? Oh, yeah. And nice. that's not even the worst part. The worst part is for the next week, I had like, 30 people look at my ass, you yeah. know, from doctors to nurses, you know, every person you could think of. Did but it scar or is your ass all back to normal now? There's a small scar about like this big right now. That's small to you? Okay. That's a How pretty big, big scar. How big are your big scar? It's like the size yeah. of a face. <laughs> it's, a small it's, like scar. it's kind of a small scar. <laughs> in, the, in the same way, Alaska is a small part of the U.S. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. The small scar, size of your fist. Yeah, well, that it just makes you look tough. And that's actually a good scar story of yeah. I was fighting and I burned myself on the steam yeah. viciously. That's cool. <laughs> Do you think you'll ever go back? Do it again? I am actually getting certified uh, here in a couple of weeks because I do kind of want to go on another fall assignment just for fun at the end of the season. Um, but it wouldn't be permanent, though, just because the government, they never paid for the medical bills. They fucked me over on that. Really? Do they pay well? What is the pay for wildland firefighter? I, I, Dude, I, I can't when imagine. I was doing it, it was 13 an hour. It was shit. Thir- yeah, if you told me it was 50 and that like there's an emergency and they open up the coffers to pay, I'd have bought it. If you told me it was minimum wage, I, I'd have bought that too. I had no idea. Yeah. yeah. No, it, so it, it, you, you work a hose these... mostly? Because hose sounds doable. I feel like hypothetically, if called to it, I could work a hose. If you ask me to put out a fire with a shovel, 18 minutes in, I'm going to ask you for a break. <laughs> I'm done. It, it depends on the assignment. <laughs> that, that's, that's quite the workout. Yeah. <laughs> we do a whole bunch of different things. Um, you know, sometimes you have to carry a Mach 3 pump into the fall beforehand. This is um, a big hose, a Mach 3 pump? No, that's a pump. So it's a pump you put into like a river or like a stream, and then we connect the horse to it to make a horse lay throughout the whole fall so people could put it out. And the Mach 3 pump is a medium-sized pump. It's about 40 to 60 pounds. Um, so you usually have to carry that out. And then... You usually have to carry your pack. Your pack is usually roughly 45 to like 55 pounds for the average portion. So if you have the pack and then the Mark III pump, you know, it's basically 100 pounds right there. That's um, a lot to haul. I mean, how far are you yeah. going with it? Well, one week I had to do that five times and I was hiking like five miles up a mountain with those. Jeez. And oh, there was shucks. multiple times and sometimes in the same day a pump would break. And then I would have to hike it back out and get a new one and hike it back in. What are you, you wearing? Thirteen dollars an hour. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. are you wearing for this? Like, are you in like heavy you hot have. firefighting wow. gear, or you're not expecting to be that close to flames when you do this? So you're wearing a uh, flame resistant pants. Um, like I have one pair. This one of the pairs I own is five hundred dollars. Like you know, it's it's not the it's not like structural firefighter clothing. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of more looks like, uh, I guess kind of like army or military. Like Wait, you had to like buy it. your own fire resistant? No, 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 no. The one I, the one I personally owned, my oh. boss had it from years ago. He gave it to me because he got it too fat. Um, <laughs> that, that happens. <laughs> yeah. Small miracles for you. That's but, <laughs> no, they do provide all the gear you need though, but that was just a personal pill he gave to me. Okay. 
Yeah, that. And so, so it seems like you've had you've had quite a a number of careers. You're you're in like your mid twenties, I'm assuming, right? Yeah, like 20, twenty five. So. Okay. Do uh do you have any other dreams or aspirations of a job you would love to do? Like if you something, had your so, opportunity, something I was going to do. Accountant. Right before COVID hit, I was actually going to join the army. Just. Be- I know the army, the pay is all this shit. And Everyone's dream it? job. <laughs> don't forget, you don't have to pay. I hope you why, make it. <laughs> you don't have the reason to. why I want to do something like that, though, is, is for the brotherhood and for the skill set, the skill set mm-hmm. of learning mm-hmm. how to shoot a gun properly and, and how to, you know, just fight. And let alone travel a little bit. That sounds like fun. Travel while fighting people. Um <laughs> Yeah, that is the, the French Army. Foreign Foreign Legion over. is way more your style, though. Like, like the French I know. Foreign so Legion I've been thinking about go. them lately too. You've been thinking about joining the French Foreign Legion. That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, I could see. They're, you they're, I that. think or, they're pretty intense. Like they're known yeah. for being intense. Taylor, I'm with. You. I, I'm like, the, the army is a very survivable job, especially right now. We're not involved Gosh. in any major conflicts. In, in, in the next four years, we probably will be because it's America. Well, exactly. Not. That's why you join now. So you can be hard on the wings when it happens. We'll watch. <laughs> they're going to try now. to recruit everyone and list, you know, like. So you're going to get in early. So you're you're out of the, the grunt zone by the time it happens. No, why why the army? Not, out of, not out of the grunt zone, but I have more experience at that point. So yeah. that's you have to be on the ground die. fighting. Why? Why the oh, yeah. army though, instead of like Marines or something like that? So, yeah. So I might say the thing with the Marines, like I probably could do them, but I just don't know if I want to do that. And What's your ideal army role? Is it like paratrooper, tank, something else, like man. a maintenance job of some sort? I feel like you either paratrooper or just like a straight up soldier, like the infantry. Right. Right. But at the same time, they would I, I love might, to hear that. I might <laughs> you join. go to a recruiter and start talking like this, he's going to be patting you on the back, buddy. Yeah, uh, he's yeah. going to get that job. Yeah. And they're they're going to drive a truck it, for the next four uh-huh. years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like another good one would be is the natural guard. And the reason why I say that, they actually do get a lot more training than every other branch because they have a lot more free time training mm. on guns. So if you want to get really good at shooting guns, the National Guard is the way to go. But they have a lot more free time. They always win the competitions they get in. Really? Is National Guard like yeah. a – is that a full-time job or is that like a – I've never known that. So that some people there on, are full-time jobs. That depends job on what you want it to be. There's some contracts you could do where it's like a part-time job. You do X amount a month. Or you could do all the assignments that the Army goes to. And um, there's reserves, right? There's like yeah. a couple – you can be in the reserves and you do that like I don't think you do anything. I think you show up every few months and like do yeah. some basic shit to like kind of check in and yes sir, Not ready to ready report if shit hits the fan kind of thing. But essentially, yeah. Man, right now, um the thing to do if I was 25 I would probably fucking do it. I would I'd be in Ukraine doing something silly, either <laughs> drone op, either operating a drone or um or maybe something scarier. I don't know. I'm I if Yo, somebody did you guys was like see that video of that Russian dude who uh, got shot and then a bomb dropped on him. He just rolled over on his back. And you like look I, into your shoulder. There's just a giant gaping hole. Ooh, I actually know the one you're talking like, about. Just yeah, three I know, the, day. I know yeah. the exact one he's talking about with the giant gaping hole in the back of his right shoulder when he rolls over. Yeah. They hit him with something big. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that dude's insane. Was that the alone, grenade? How did, his yeah. whole, how did his body not blow up? First off. Uh, that's just not how explosives work, you know. It's got to be a big baboom to blow him into smithereens, you know. They're just dropping yeah. those grenades right on top of them and blowing chunks out of them. Is a grenade uh, strong enough that, like, if it was, like, surgically, like, saw-style implanted in someone's stomach and then it blew up from in there, it wouldn't, like... Like, would their body be turn- total, Like, would they be in half or would it, it would just explode out and they'd just be, like, all shredded up, probably? So... I'll say this because that's like a made up hypothetical. I don't know much about, but lots of guys have thrown themselves on top of grenades and survived in world war two. It happened a lot. They would throw their chest and their belly on top of it and get severe shrapnel wounds or their ass. Um, I think grandpa Simpson did that. Um, I think he, I (laughs) I think, I think, (laughs) I think he did that. But so I think, um, 
But if there was a grenade surgically put inside of somebody's body, I think it'd blow a big hole out of them when it, but I don't think it'd blow them to smithereens at all. Um, Because when you see grenades go off and... There's no way that those were fully functional grenades. There had to be yeah. something wrong with them. Like they didn't blow up all the way or they didn't shoot all the shrapnel or something. There's no way you can jump on top of a grenade that works 100% perfectly. And survive. What if you put your helmet on it? Just like that's Abe what Simpson. Grandpa yes. Simpson did. That's, that's oh, did he not? <laughs> yeah. Captain he, America he did, on I it. think. I'm oh, not really? sure. <laughs> yeah. Captain America stole that from Abe Simpson. No, Captain America, like, like, like when the field it, right? like position it, around exactly. the grenade. No, there's... Uh, there's multiple cases in World War II, I know for sure, of guys throwing themselves on top of grenades and uh, and surviving it. And then plenty of people dying, you know, as well. I wonder if What's the safest now? job if you're, like, an elite soldier? I always thought, like, Driving a sniper, fucking truck. But, like, the sniper actually seems unbelievably dangerous because you're all by yourself out there or, like, with one other dude, right? Um, I think there's um, some positions on big Navy ships where people tend to survive a lot. Especially now, yeah. Because yeah. our Navy's ship, superiority is so lopsided. That, oh, if you wow, do, did you disagree? You, you rolled your eyes. If you do well. No, I was just thinking of like all. First of all, in, in our military, the survivability rate is insane. Half of our military deaths are always contractors. If you look, go back to Iraq and Afghanistan, they'd be like, "Oh, we lost seven thousand people. That's not that bad." And seventy five hundred more mercenaries that we were paying too. They don't, mm-hmm. they don't talk about. But it seems like if you're just a grunt in the army driving a truck, your odds are pretty fucking good. So if you put yourself now, you're, I don't know, seaman first class McGovern's who turns mm-hmm. a wrench on some Navy ship. Are you just sit behind a computer somewhere on the Navy ship and monitor the fucking cooling system or something? You know, it's one of those ubiquitous jobs. I think there's 5000 men on an oh. aircraft carrier. Well, well, shit like that. Like, yeah. But I mean, like of combat people yeah i'm like, glad you said that Taylor, Z- zach has some lists on the side like there's admin financial management hr right and that's HR. my um my brother-in-law was in the air force i mentioned him briefly his job was to look at pictures that satellites took carefully and circle things that he thought other people would be interested in like hey look this truck moved a little bit pass that up the chain and see what they make of it um that is a high survivability job. <laughs> yeah. you know, he's not getting hurt at all. He works in air conditioning. The yeah, idea you circle the wrong truck and they kill you, I doubt it. Like, this is, yeah. this is not going to happen. But, like, if you're out there in the mix, like, the grunts have to die. Or, like, the, the grunt equivalent of the SEALs or the Marines or whatever. The front man who's, like, mm-hmm. really fighting, bursting in the, like, there's no way that, like, even a sniper, like, that's got to be way safer than that guy. Is there anything yeah, more dangerous than the guy going in first? There's kicking down a door guy. seems extremely dangerous. The yeah. first guy through the door. Shout out my buddy. The... That's what he did in Afghanistan. Tough as shit. Did he hit the door or was he first through it? Because those are different guys. He was first through with the shotgun. Yeah, see, that's the worst. That's got to be the worst. There's no way that that's not the highest he mortality said he, part. He, it was the most exciting thing he's ever done. I it, bet. You know he what's went... tough? I, I'm sorry, Kyle. Did you want like to go? talk or... to that guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dude, is he ruined for normal life now like like i am a little bit i have made good money not working very hard am i still capable of working like i used to i'm not even sure this guy has to readjust to life where a fucking i don't know roller coaster at six flags is supposed to be considered exciting it's not exciting to this guy Oh, there's no way it's exciting for like there. I, I don't. He's I think I told this on, on the show. Death's door a hundred times. Yeah, many years ago I said this on the show. Like, so he dipped out of college because he got nervous that Afghanistan was going to be done before college, and so he <laughs> oh, no. he, he left because he wanted to go fight in Afghanistan, and he got there and everything. And it was maybe I was a junior in college. This is like 2011 or whatever, and he called me. It was like three in the morning my time in Missouri. And I got a call from him and I'm like, what the fuck? I literally know he's one of my, my best friends. I'm like, I know he's in Afghanistan right now. And I answer the phone and I'm like, hello. And he's like, kind of scratched like Taylor. And I'm like, what? Like you're, and he's like, yeah, I, dude, I just got in my first firefight. I was shooting. I saw bullets coming at me, whizzing past me, running around gunfire. It was the most wild thing I've ever experienced. And I realized I absolutely can't call my mom. I absolutely can't call my dad and tell them about this. And the only person, like friend of mine's phone number I had memorized was yours. And I just got to talk to someone about this, man. It was fucking wild. And I'm like, I'm I'm glad you're okay, man. Like, is 
when are you coming home? <laughs> like, 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 never. Like, Cause he's like leaning into it. Like it was insane. Like I, the, the, the rush, like I couldn't stop moving around afterward. And I'm like, so you like saw bullets coming at you. And he's like, yes. And I'm like, but not close. And he's like, no close. <laughs> and then, yeah. I was like, Oh my God, dude. Like, and like to him, he was so amped up. The adrenaline was pumping. But to me, I was just like, fuck, I don't want one of my best friends to die in Afghanistan because he's so amped up. But Aren't, are you yeah, and now like that? he'll talk about like how crazy it was, all the experiences. But then like when I see him with like another Marine, you know, the camaraderie they just instantly have as Marines, like they start sharing stuff. And then you like see the excitement come back out of like, Oh, do you remember this and that? Were you this kind of guy? And and something I have seen that's funny is he's a like frontline fighting combat Marine. And every so often, like I'll see him talk to another Marine who will be like a higher rank than him and be like, oh, I, you know, I was at West Point and this and that. And, but because that guy didn't go through like the level of shit, there's almost like a deference respect of like, mm -hmm. ooh. Like <laughs> that you went through a different level. I have a friend who served in the army and I don't think he was quite as like kicked down doors as your friend was, but um, he was in combat and stuff. And it's, I don't want to say changed him, but like it, it, it's helped him put a different perspective on life's stress. So mm -hmm. he's in a job interview and the person interviewing him, right? He's the candidate was nervous as heck. And I loved his line. He's like, I can tell you nervous. Don't worry. I haven't killed anyone in like 20 years. Yeah. And <laughs> it's like, holy shit. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> you, your can, friend you can tell the people cool... that have... Oh, what's that? I was going to say, does your friend have any cool tattoos? Like, does he have like knock, knock Marine Corps, like on his bicep or something insane? No, uh, not not, nothing like that. But he has a ton of tattoos. Nice. a ton of tattoos i'm like pressuring him because he's got one giant full sleeve and he's like i want another full sleeve and i'm like no like if you're gonna i have no tattoos so i'm biased but it's like no like if you're gonna have a full sleeve you need that point of comparison with your regular arm you know otherwise you get that like joe rogan just like dirty like middle school desk scribbles look taylor's <laughs> friend if you're watching get a tattoo the pka pill logo is popular Fuck with the girls. yeah Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a good one. He, he was so funny getting his tattoos early. He was just like, he'd come up with something he thought was funny and just get it. He got a chest piece, like a giant chest piece that just has like a wolf in a tuxedo holding two guns pointing out and it says <laughs> relentless. And he's like, what? it's hilarious. Like, it's just, <laughs> it's just, <laughs> he's got a bunch of funny tattoos. That's but, an yeah. awful tattoo. Shout out him. <laughs> yeah, shut up, Taylor. Yeah, friend. Tell him that. We should. Yeah, that's great. So he had a shotgun. I like, like that's yeah. why I would like to talk to him because I've never talked to anybody who used one in combat. Um, I remember seeing some videos of guys talking about using them in combat indoors and how you could fire the buckshot along walls and ceilings. You know, you spray into the wall or the ceiling at a very sharp angle or a flat angle so that it sort of rides that yeah. flat surface and goes under doors along walls because people will be peeking just outside of a uh, a doorway and you can make all that buckshot skim along the the wall if you shoot it just right if it's a, That's so it's crazy like a, i didn't know that it's shotguns are fucking nasty such a cool weapon the shotgun yeah if he it shot if he, if he if he did what he did then he has blown holes through people's heads as big as your fucking fist you know that thing was up yep. close a shotgun with buckshot is just insanity mode Oh, it just deletes people, apparently. It does. <laughs> it does. Yeah. Fuck. So if you were to be a, a warrior, John, you're going out there. What is it almost a fantasy that you think it would be fun to be in the war? Or are you serious like you would actually want to fight? I, I want that skill. I want that uh, combat skill. Like That's why I, I started uh, Muay Thai and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Because I want to know... How to fight properly. Mm -hmm. So if I would join like any type of military branch, the main purpose is to have the combat skills. Okay. But I feel like well, I feel like everyone's going to need to know that skill here soon with the way the water is headed or heading. Um, is it the more, more the gun reason. skill you're looking for, or like everything fighting? Okay. Yeah, combat tactics, gun marksmanship, yeah. like the whole. Because I. I I, I, I want to stay focused on the guests, but like in watching the Ukrainian thing, 
I realized how much I don't know about how war is conducted and, and uh, from yeah. the tactics of how you navigate a mm-hmm. tree line to the strategy of what, how, you know, when you might use a pincher movement, I still get baffled by like, say there's a front line, someone makes some progress and now there's a bulge in that front line. Why is that bulge good for me? Cause I feel surrounded. Right. And, and then on the other hand, when they make the bulge, they are surrounded. I get very lost as to who has the advantage. Like I, I know the, basics like high ground is good but it has shined a spotlight on how little i know about how to conduct a war and that's what he wants to know and it also like to me it it shows how impressive like ancient warfare was and how they had to communicate like look how difficult communication is in a modern war with walkie talkies and radio and like instant things imagine like tens of thousands of people on horseback or on foot and the advanced relaying of information you'd have to do, the anticipating of what moves you were having to do because you can't wait until real time to respond. Like Flags I just, it, it made me think about that. And it was like, God damn, like there's a reason Alexander the great is still looked at like that because he didn't just win with numbers. He defeated people with way more numbers all the time because he was so good at that. It, I've been watching, um, there's a mini series on Netflix about, uh, I think it's like 16th century J- Jap- Japan, and this uh, this leader who was like a minor leader in the smallest province who conquered like 95% of the island of Japan um, with his armies. And those armies would be like 40,000 versus 40,000 samurai. And uh, this guy was really innovative. It, it, it's been a cool show. The first thing he did... He was like, we need peasants. Fuck all these like highborn, like this and that. Arm the peasants. They're with us. They'll fight for for everything. You know, Mm -hmm. if they win, they're they're going somewhere in life. They'll fight harder than a rich man. And then um, he imported the the guns. Like the they were shitty guns. They were the ones that have like a a a a a burning fuse on the back, and when you pull the trigger, the fuse touches the powder. And we did start. Who is this? He was a Japanese warlord who conquered all of Japan in in the 1500s. And uh, so he set up these barricades with like spikes on the front and you'd have like three or four riflemen in each one and three or four bowmen in each one and then three or four spearmen at each one. So the riflemen would be shooting and when they're reloading, the bows are covering them. And if anybody gets too close, the spear guys stick them. And, and all the enemies are trying to ride on horseback and they can't and they can't run them over because they're behind the big spiky shields. And they just slaughtered like huge, huge amounts. Like, like it, there would be. 4,000 versus 4,000, and 1,200 of the enemy would, would die, which is apparently a, a huge number. They talked about presenting him with 5,000 heads at one point. It was, uh, oh. it's been fun. I can't I always There's imagine so much that ritual suicide back. I, I don't know, it, but, but for, for, for that to be true, like every historian on every continent would be, be exaggerating, right? Because this is the Jap- this is the Japanese and their records saying thirty thousand versus thirty thousand oh, yeah. and, and stuff. I like was that. meaning like like a lot of people th- like in the Macedonian histories or whatever. It's like Alexander the Great defeated a million Persians, and it's like, well, he defeated a shit ton of Persians, <laughs> probably not a million. Persians a lot of you know, Persians probably not admit, like, the same way that like in the Bible every time you see the number like 144,000 or whatever or, like okay or that, that, well, that just means like a shit ton <laughs> I, I know that city one of those cities the uh maybe the capital um when uh, the Spanish came over and conquered was like the third or fourth biggest city in the planet it was it was like half a million people or something no it was more it was, it was the third or fourth biggest uh city on the planet at the time is that they the same population uh, density it was like on an island, and it was uh, the population density of modern de- modern day New York. Ugh. Where awesome. I believe uh, in South America. That when uh, is it Cortez? Was he the one doing it all when the Spanish came over and conquered? It's Mexico to me, but I'm not sure. Yeah, Cortez conquered that. What were you saying, John? Uh, so I believe originally the Spaniards before they got uh, well, what people believe for the population size is actually ten times bigger back then. I guess what happened. When the Spaniards went over, they did bring over disease, and they just kind of like killed them all by accident. And which yeah. is why when people came back there, there wasn't so many cities anymore, just because the disease went rampant. Yeah, did it yeah, ever work the uh, other way? Because without cities, they just didn't build immunities and sickness. Is that because like I why think- is it when Europe comes to America or South America, they bring tons of disease, but they don't get any? 
So they the reason tons. is is apparently because well there there are some diseases they get but I, what I've read and who knows how true it is is that because the Europeans had been uh, breeding and raising like animals and shit for so long like being around pigs and cows and chickens and all that stuff has a bunch of disease that you're exposed to all the time and if you're not raising pigs and animal husbandry and shit like some of those guys weren't when they showed up in South America they weren't used to all those pathogens that you got just being around chickens well, and cows. Well, also what you got to keep in mind is like smallpox is very deadly. And, and a yeah. lot of these people would have already had smallpox and survived it. And that means you're immune to smallpox, but it doesn't mean you're not they had tons of animals with those fleas on them with the fucking small. No, that's not how smallpox is spread. Oh, that's what do you know? But that it was, is how smallpox is innocuous. That's how the right? plague. Isn't there is something spread. about cows giving you a non deadly. Is this smallpox smallpox? basically like chicken pox? Yeah, it's well, just like it's way more, deadly, more severe. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and scarring. Like I, I think they. Um, I remember. I think that's watching... what it was. It was smallpox for South America. There's there's mm -hmm. a couple of documentaries that talks about that. Yeah, but I just don't yeah. know how it spreads. How does small? Does it? Do you call skin contact? Cough, right? Skin contact. Really. Skin contact is the easiest way to avoid a disease. I can't remember what I watched not too long mm, ago. I think it was the John funny. Adams documentary, <laughs> but they were showing how they inoculated for smallpox back then. They the doctor rolled up in front of these rich people's house with a dying boy who had smallpox in a wagon and cut open one of his sores. He's like, it's easy, boy. One last time. And like cuts open his sore and takes the, the pus out and then goes in with like a pus covered mirror and like scratches it with a needle and starts stabbing everybody in the family in the oh. arm repeatedly, giving them little pus injections. And and like he told that. her, he's like, and because they were doing it like that and not whatever modern methods we have of weakening the, the virus or whatever, or bacterium, whatever. Um, one of the girls got, just got smallpox. <laughs> he was like, it may be light or it may be heavy. It's like, this isn't a period motherfucker. It's smallpox. Yeah. And the one kid's in bed. But by the time they find out, sores. I'm two towns away. Freaking <laughs> some other family with my As fucking... Kyle was telling that story, I had no idea where it was going. He's like, they take the boy from place to place. They pierce it. They get the schmear. And I'm like, is this going on crackers? What? What's coming next? Do <laughs> <laughs> we have peanut butter, jelly, no, and crackers. smallpox? Yeah, yeah. The, that would be disgusting. You have to, it's like, uh, you know what? I'm not looking the sword juice. I'll just take my chances. <laughs> that, that's why That's why I wasn't, I, I didn't mind lining up and getting the vaccine because mm. I know in olden times, that's the sort of shit we had to deal with. And yet that lady was like, yes, cut that goo out of that boy and get in here to me and my little girls because we don't want the fucking smallpox. And then, so, oops. <laughs> well, I mean, one of them got it, but she healed up. She was a little, you know, like, like a bad case of chicken pox, really. Yeah, but I mean, she probably never, never looked the same. She had Edward James I mean, almost face. Yeah, but yeah, maybe so. That's true. Mm -hmm. And he's ugly. Oh, what's your thought on the vaccine now? Do you still have oh. the same view on it, or what? I'll I'll tell you the the things that I don't like and and that stick out to me is weird on the the whole COVID vaccine thing or um, some of the stuff that the that I've heard about Fauci um, and, and some of the times that he was purposefully misleading for one reason or another. And just, there just seemed like there was a time when it was how many boosters and vaccines do I need to, do I need to get before you'll allow me to keep my job again? Like how many more? Like, like, like mm -hmm. just, I mean, let me know the number. I, I'm okay. For this like, job. Like, <laughs> I just need to wrap, I'm just saying, like, if you're a guy working at fucking Apple yeah, or at Amazon. At this job, or, Kyle, like, you get out of prison, you're just better. Yeah. You're just, <laughs> you're you got stories. <laughs> the show is a resurgence. <laughs> but imagine if you work, worked at fucking Apple, I don't know, doing Apple yeah. things, yeah. and they were like, you need your JB12 booster, Woody, and it's 2023. Ooh, it's been and you're like, you need nothing. You're like, one, what buddy. are you talking about? My JB20L booster. Yeah, it's the it's the newest thing. You'll need four shots and uh, and an enema. And <laughs> I do what I'm told because I'm a liberal cuck. There's no amount of you know, shots at some point, or masks or costumes I won't wear. <laughs> what I was behind was the idea of look. I don't understand this... the gimp mask, but okay, Biden. <laughs> I don't think this ass plug is keeping me safe. <laughs> Are you it okay? I'm pretty day. far from fucking okay. I'm pretty fucking far from okay. <laughs> there was just that point when like global commerce was shutting down and it seemed like prices were getting high, and there was this seeming risk that the whole global economy could shut down and 
I, it seemed like maybe around then was when that shipping uh, ship got stuck in the Panama Canal, maybe around that time too. And just uh, was, Suez Canal. I think that the happened Suez again Canal. since okay. then. Yeah. Was it the Suez Canal? I thought it was the Panama Canal. The Suez uh, Canal is the, I thought the Suez was the one where, um, with the oil and, um, it is, it was the Suez. That is the one and that is where it happened. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. I always thought he was in the Panama Canal, like fucking wedged in South America. Those are the anyway, only two canals I know. It just seemed like we all needed to fucking like buck up and go inside and stop the spread. Cause I, what I was thinking was that there were people out there just coughing on everybody running around. And if they just cut it out for a week, just a week. I'm not going to take your life away. Not even your whole goddamn summer. Let's all stay inside for a week. And it just seemed like it'd go away. Like if everybody stopped fucking for a week, we'd get rid of certain STDs, but we just can't. That do is it. not how that would work. <laughs> That's exactly how it works, Taylor. You think, you think everybody's crazy? Crazy. That's gonna go away. Hey, Taylor, trust the, the science. Dude, Woody, trust just, your science. Dude, Kyle contracts syphilis. You stop fucking. It goes away. It just, if, it just disappears. Well, I think you, in Kyle's well, scenario, I, you treat it. You treat everyone. <laughs> All right, you, imagine think how, you think that's how shit works? Like you just don't that, go outside with the flu and it goes away? Everybody but wait, wait, agrees? actually, Taylor, I am kind of confused because like, fucking. let's pretend this is a universe where you could get 100% compliance. 100, no exceptions. Couldn't people with fucking syphilis take their penicillin, all get better, and then it's just eradicated from the planet? What am I missing? I'm missing something, maybe. I don't know. Like, I don't know how that works either. Yes, but I it would like, because it's a virus. Kyle's applying that to COVID, and I don't know why he's wrong. With like, like it would go away entirely if everyone. Well, let's, let's say COVID. Let's say you're. Um, just, some I'm people think word. COVID just springs out of the ground. Out. You're infectious, right? You're able to transmit this for two weeks, hypothetically, because that's about right. Um, could you, if everyone everyone stayed inside for two weeks then i mean that's just the, the whole like that's just silly though like that's not how it operates right like the vast majority of people are not podcasters who can stay home most people have to go okay okay so i'll admit it's it's uh, hard to achieve nearly impossible to achieve like so i'm on board with yeah. you there but in theory i think kyle was like if we can get close to everyone i'm willing to partake for two weeks Hold up, but I thought uh, covid was able to go through some of the wild animal wild animal life as well though I don't they, think that's true. They did say that for a while. I don't know. I, I was don't like, think that's a like, thing. I was like, dogs can get it or something. There's yeah, no way the dogs get COVID. Thing. I don't know. All <laughs> I know is the media, they were talking about it. They were pushing it kind of hard at one point. They were species. saying dogs can get the it. The same reason they were you don't get killed, asshole. It, <laughs> Don't do assume I've never had you ever gotten Parvo? <laughs> Parvo? <laughs> Parvo I've, got, I've got the ick right now. <laughs> Wait, do dogs get ick? No, I don't think oh. so. No. I believe you know, dogs, dogs get, get the diseases. black plague because rats they usually carry most of those stuff through oh, ticks. Carry it. And then oh fleas. And mm -hmm. then if it could be passed on to other animals or humans. I believe that yeah. is a thing. Yeah, a lot uh, of diseases can be spread from for every disease. Some diseases, diseases is only well, for humans. This well, the is black plague is morons disgusting. The black plague is a bacteria. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's I, that, I, what's I, that I, animal I, that all of them have leprosy? Is it armadillos or a lot of them have leprosy? Something like that. There is something about yeah. they they could they have you can catch leprosy from an armadillo. Like I guess they all have it latent, but they are not susceptible to leprosy. So like they're this not. This is they're how the Walking Dead universe out. worked. Like yeah. it's just there below the surface. Dude, leprosy is a terrifying <laughs> disease. I didn't know until ah. like the last few years that apparently the vast majority of people have an innate immunity to it. Like even if like all of us. If we went and like shook hands with a leper and then like licked our palm, but, unless we were predisposed to it, we'd be fine. But back in the day, like the Bible doesn't sound days, terrifying didn't know at all, that. Taylor. I'm not ready, prepared to take on leprosy. Have you seen the the pictures of people with leprosy? Oh my god! Like they have that shit where like their teeth are still in their mouth, but their lips are long gone, and like they look like a scary skeleton. Their that noses sounds... run off, all their appendages. Like it's hell. All teeth, no lips. This is the worst date ever. All teeth and no lips. Dude, I, dude for me, a woman has up to have bitch. lips. <laughs> yeah. So what uh, what do you do for fun, John? When you're not grinding, when you're not looking for new business opportunities, what do you do to cool off? I guess nature is my favorite thing. Um, 
I like learning. I love learning a lot. Like lately, I've been learning uh, Muay Thai and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I don't know. I, I love a challenge. If it's challengeable, I like to learn it then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't I like thinking, learning things. Like, like, like I don't want to rain on your parade. I mean, it sounds like you, you like the idea of joining the armed forces, but you could learn those skills without signing away years of your life to the armed forces. Cause there's oh, no. a chance that they'll just send you through basic training. You'll shoot like, I don't know, 300 bullets and then they'll make you drive a truck for four years. But you can like, hire be, somebody yeah. to teach you how to shoot. But as know. long as, as long as you read the contract and you get them, if you tell them exactly what you want in the contract and you won't sign it and you got basic training already and you won't sign the contract, they're going to fix the contract for you. You sound like you know more about it than I do. I, I just yeah, see I people on Reddit sometimes true. who are like, signed up to do this. And it's like, I don't know, call of duty. <laughs> well, now I'm doing this. So a lot of the time, <laughs> they tell <laughs> you, <laughs> quote unquote, you have a job. But if it mm. says something else in the contract, well, that's the contract you fuck now. You signed it. I actually, so I've been on some of those subreddits too, like ones that active duty army people are in. And there's some of them give advice to people entering the army. And it seems like a good place to spend your time if you're about to do that. They'll tell you what to say to the recruiter and what to make sure is in the contract. Because just read the contract. That is advice that was given to Call of Duty YouTubers in 2013. Reading contracts is hard. And sometimes they're intentionally written in a way that's difficult to understand. Oh, yeah. I, I've, yeah. I've been through a lot of school. I still struggle to read contracts. I would hire someone to help me read it. Um, I don't I don't trust myself to read any contracts that matter, like with any amount of money or any amount of me being given away, like like literal, you know, I I don't trust myself to understand what that. Maybe if it was like a couple sentences, but then it's like, shit, what is this not covering now? I've been, there should be more here. <laughs> right? Yeah. If it was just like, you get this, I get that. I'd be like, Man, we probably should have covered some what ifs in here. Yeah, yeah. It, it. The more they add, the harder it is to read. The less they add, the more you're. I don't I know, a lawyer. At risk. I need a lawyer. That's the racket. I um, you know, like like you gotta you gotta pay them their little little percentage to make sure that you don't fuck up, because you know, like you said with those YouTube contracts back in the day, there's a lot of that. Um, most contracts are predatory in nature. The first one oh, you'll yeah. get. Well, um, for example, right after I got off the TV show, um, mm-hmm. I did a photo shoot with someone, and they were trying to convince me to sign this contract. And they threatened to sue me if I didn't sign the contract. And the contract was basically saying if I sold anything under my name, they would get 25% of it. And that would have lasted for seven months, but there was a loophole, I guess. It could have lasted indefinitely. So this guy, if I would have signed, it would have owned 25 or something percentage of everything I sell under my name. Right. Remember the um, the grand finale of Fish Tank when Sam Hyde read the contract and told the people that there was no guarantee they were getting paid yeah. at all? Yeah, that's true. Contracts can be like that. Now, he was uh, not predatory, so he paid people. But mm-hmm. if he was, everyone there signed the contract, including you. You know? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. So... Anyway, but but the nice thing about having autism or any di- disability, if you sign a contract, you can get out of it because Jesus you Christ. want in your <laughs> white mind, quote unquote. Just I'm like how sure all that, those chicks true. when they get married and they sign that contract and they want to take none of this money away, I was depressed. That contract doesn't count anymore. I doubt that's true. No, no. That those contracts get thrown out all the time because, quote unquote, maybe she drank that day or maybe she has anxiety or any type of. Dis- are you uh, telling me prenups are thrown out all the time because maybe yeah. she drank or was depressed? Yeah. There's um, a lot of cases. Where all the guys same. Read over. your contracts and get a lawyer. So like me personally, I wouldn't even want to get married <laughs> with the, legally with the government just because of that alone. I bet there's a good like website or service that does that, that, that you a lawyer reads your contract for a quick flat fee and like gives you a quick one over. Like I, that should be a thing, right? Like, like I don't, that need, is a thing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't need your services. I don't need your whole uh, uh, firm getting an order. I don't need an appointment to your office. That I have to drive to, can we get well, a video also, call? If, if you want a lawyer to like read your contract for free, all you gotta do 
is tell him you got this case for him that he could make a lot of money. And he would read it for you and tell you what you should do. And then he's going to expect you to sign up. And then you just don't sign up. Yeah, I don't want to make any enemies in the legal world, but I would <laughs> like an app where I could just legitimately like pay him whatever, $100 even for a 20-minute conversation that, that was filled with knowledge and wisdom. But you could just do that have. in person at that point. Yeah, but I don't want to avoid that. I want to avoid the in-person. I don't want to go see you. I want to click my phone three buttons and go, hey, lawyer man, I've got this PDF got just got sent to you. Would you look that over and we have a call in two hours? Absolutely. See you soon, Kyle. Yeah. My theory is Kyle goes through spans of time where he's part vampire. Just like, I don't like no, no, story. I've been I've been uh, diurnal been for a long time now. For a long time, yeah. Yes, I've been a diurnal boy for for a year at least. Ever since I got that dog, I have to be because he's up at What's six. Diurnal, I know nocturnal, that, but that means I live. I'm up during the daytime. Isn't the that just? Of, it's oh, just not nocturnal. Oh, it's oh, fine. it's just the normal one. It's the normal. Well, one. normal if you're a man, not if you're a bat. <laughs> Let's not be species here. Let's be all inclusive. Yeah. Any bat people out there living are like normal, huh? What are we? <laughs> Dude, diurnal is a pretty smart. It's a pretty <laughs> smart inclusive to the Batman. Okay, that's all I'm saying. Uh, yeah, no. Since I got the dog, I'm up at six a.m. He with with him every morning. So if I do have a dog, night, uh, it's a Bernie Doodle, half Bernie's Mountain Dog, half Poodle. Very silly looking oh, nice. dog. Yeah, but uh, I've got to get up with him. So I go to sleep. Sometimes I'll stay up till four. But then I'm I'm up at eight. You know, I just gotta get up and go. That's not enough. What a for me. what a horrible day that must be. Like I would be in a bad mood all day if I slept from four to eight. Nothing would get done. There's no way I'd work out. Not me, because I'd nap from noon to four. <laughs> well, no, yeah, you gotta there's, there's nothing nap worse. Too. There is nothing worse than like laying down thinking you're like gonna nap for like 40 minutes at like 1 20 in the afternoon and you wake up at like 705 and you're like oh, oh like what day is it like what's happening yeah. you feel you're, you're so do you guys I, I get i get so disoriented when i wake up from a nap if it's at like seven at night or this guy or is complete this is the story of someone who's incompetent at unemployment you need yeah. to get more comfortable <laughs> with day napping my friend i need i to, just set an know. alarm <laughs> i just I, I set an alarm when i take a nap i'll often take like a 40 minute nap before we start and, you know what you could then, do too that could help a lot if you yeah. lay down with your head elevated back and your feet about two to one feet above your head um that's the jocko wilnick fucking nap <laughs> Wait, honestly, how does it work so you, you lay, lay down, down flat head a little bit tilted feet a power up um an all black room if possible you do that for yeah. about 30 45 minutes and you get a lot better sleep because all the blood would go to his brain. Jocko that, says, Jocko says, you know, there's some nights I get like, you know, 12 minutes of sleep. So during the day, I'll need a few naps. And I, let me tell you how Jocko sleeps. I get maximum efficiency out of my naps. Elevate my feet, lower my head, dark room, 12 minute nap. I'm good to go. If the CIA was <laughs> torturing me, shit. that's how they'd make me nap. That sounds yes! like bullshit. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I've taken, I've taken those naps before where you need a nap. But mm -hmm. eight minutes into actually being asleep, you wake up and it feels like you're hung over and like, <laughs> like, 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 like I'm it's drunk shitty. now. Like I can't operate heavy machinery. I feel so out of it because I was just in yeah. sleep and then jerked back out of it. Yeah, I agree uh, completely. The counterpoint, I've no taken good. those naps where 20 minutes later I wake up and it's like the right in the right part of my like sleep cycle where I am the best me. I am just charged up. It was the greatest nap and now I'm ready to go. I can be a I'm real piece of shit if I don't get my whole, if I like, there's a period of waking me up during my nap where I, I, I become grouchy, Kyle, and I'm just a piece of shit. I'm just so, I can feel how mean I am. I'm like a rattlesnake. Like, I just want to hurt somebody's feelings. Sometimes I, I can't, I can't tell shit. that I can't tell that Kyle's joking about being cranky, like in the chat sometimes, like if we're in there with the patrons and Kyle will be like, oh, this game's driving me crazy. I can't find this item. And I'm like, ah, like he's goofing around and someone will be like, Kyle, I think I found it over here. And then they'll be like, that's not the item. You fucking retard. You <laughs> fucking idiot. I fucking hate you. I hate that's you. True. I know you think I'm joking, but I hate you. Like, you know, just, <laughs> and I'm like, dude, it's just a, it's just a gem in Diablo. Like, it's like, I need <laughs> all the gems. <laughs> I need the gems. Yeah. I, Kyle, I, I, I you about too, John is oh. you're a, you're a very religious guy. Very uh, 
devout Christian, I believe. Is that something you were raised that way, or as an adult you jumped into it more? Uh, so I was raised it like I accepted Jesus in my heart when I was a little kid. I, was, I never really learned too much about the Bible or the church. It kind of something I jumped into more my, by myself in my mm-hmm. mid-teens. Okay. Um, yeah. That's not normal. You don't see that a lot. That's a bad way to phrase it. That's not common would be better. I'm sorry. Um, so in your teens, you got more into religion. Yeah, I feel like most teens are scratching away from it while their parents pull them towards it. Yeah, so so all the churches here locally are kind of like trash. Um, they're always pushing some type of weird ass agenda. Oh, okay. And so we never ended up going to church because of that. Mm-hmm. And you know, around 15, 16, I was like, I didn't like who I was, so I was trying to change who I was mm-hmm. and I found this Facebook group with actually a really good pastor, someone you know who wasn't pushing an agenda at all. So I started watching his live streams and then I found this friend on this app, you know, just to make friends. And uh, Katie, she started uh, doing Bible studies with me and helping me out a lot with that, which was pretty cool and mm-hmm. got me a lot more into it. Nice. Hmm. It's a, uh- you know, I, I went to religious school and what whatnot growing up, but something I like I've noticed with religious people I know is that the people that are that get into it on their own take it much much more seriously than people who kind of just continued it as a habit through their childhood and now just are kind of like, yeah, I'm a Catholic the same way. Like I sometimes only eat fish on Friday, never. Like that, like yeah. basically, like my whole like dad side of the family, where they're like, "We're Catholic." Yeah, it's like you guys haven't <laughs> been to church. Like you're not even Easter Catholics. Like you don't, you don't even go for the two big days. But uh, have you found that it's it's been positive for you in in all aspects of your life, relationships, jobs? You you glad with how it's going? Um, I feel like it, it has a lot more positive outcome than negative outcome. I would say. Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree with you. I, I, the people I see in my life who are like sincerely religious, they seem to have more happiness and contentment, which I guess makes sense because like I'm very jealous of that. Like I wish, don't you? Like I know what you've like come down on the other side of it, but like, mm-hmm. wouldn't it be really good? Like to believe sincerely, a hundred percent. Like after this, there's something way better. Yeah, like, yeah. My um. So my parents are super sick right now. Um, they're in their 70s. My mom's had cancer twice this year in different places. My father just got out of the hospital. And, uh, you know, I never knock people who, like, find God, even if it's temporarily in mm-hmm. moments of, of stress. And uh, it's not what I've done. But if it's what you do, that's cool. I'm not knocking it. And I can see the appeal of you know, a, a little grace, a little heaven, a little like, you know, just some goodness on the other side of this thing. I, uh, yeah. So I can see why it would give someone a sense of peace. Yeah, absolutely. Like it'd be positive to be like, Oh God, life's pretty shit right now. At least this is just like a little preview for the good stuff. Like, <laughs> yeah. Right. Or, yeah, like, yeah. In my case, it's like, Oh, someone I care about is, is going through it right now. So, uh, but you know, I have full confidence they're about to see Nirvana or, or you know, whatever you want to call yeah. it. And, uh, yeah, that would give comfort if, if I could buy that. What is, what's your conception of, of heaven, John? Like, what do you think it's going to be like? Um, you know, I haven't read too much in the Bible about heaven specifically. I know it's not what you see in the movies though. Um, Mm -hmm. a lot of people think, you know, it's like all clouds and some gay ass shit and all these people (laughs) have wings. Most people don't even know what angels look like. Most angels, they have like a shit ton of eyeballs, you know, um, feels going around them. So like, Mm -hmm. I know heaven is not nearly what people think it is. Same thing with angels, at least not for media. Um, Mm -hmm. Uh, 
from what I do know about heaven, from what I have read, it, you know, it seems like a, a cool thing. It seems like an awesome thing to do or go. Yeah, <laughs> it does mm-hmm. seem cool. If I'm going to be in heaven or hell, heaven 10 times out of 10, hell, terrible marketing. They let you know up front it's going to suck. It's going to be bad. See, some, but, something that yeah. a lot of people tell me is uh, because, quote unquote, you're a Christian, you know, God will always, or well, Jesus will always forgive you when you could, you know, if you, you make a mistake. You know, mm-hmm. you, well, you're forgiven always. And the reason why a lot of people, they use this excuse is uh, Jesus has uh, gifted you with the internal life. Okay. He never said that internal life is going to heaven or hell. Mm-hmm. Okay. So a lot of people, they get that tripped up. So I'm thinking that's why I think Orthodox Christians is a little bit better than regular Christians. Okay. Because internal life just means internal life. Does that mean you go to heaven? Or does that mean you go to hell? Yeah. Well, hopefully heaven then. Yeah. What is it about, uh, I guess, the orthodoxy that, uh, I guess, attracts you more than Catholicism or Protestantism or any of the other ones? I feel like uh, orthodox Christians, uh, not, I don't know how well it is in the West because I haven't gone to it really a choice for that yet. But I, from what I have looked into in the in the Middle East, it uh, hasn't really lost its teachings. Mm-hmm. Most is most of the other uh, you know chapters of Christianity or whatever you doesn't yeah. teach what is in the book anymore. They they're pushing an agenda. A lot of people they'd be all like like they'd be teasing it, like well. The way I see this, or the way I think it means by this, is so and so and so on. Well, no, it's, it says exactly what it means. And then these people put a whole completely different spin on it. Mm-hmm. Um, which is why I don't like most of the chores here locally. Because they always, they always put some crazy spin on it. Putting other That's words with different... Because each word has its own definition. Why are you putting all these different definitions in a word or in a book that was never dealt before for that sentence or something like that? You know, yeah, with the I don't know if it's just Catholicism or if it's the Orthodox churches also like one thing I I know about the Orthodox churches. I think it's all of them. That's obviously better than Catholicism is like the priests can have wives and children and families in like the Orthodox churches, which I would imagine helps weed out a lot of the ghouls that go there to prey on children in the Catholic church. That would make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you you think they go there to prey on children. A hundred percent. One hundred percent. People who prey look, on children will go places where they get access to children. So if you I look just, at uh, uh, Italy, there's this. I forgot what the city or capital is called, but it's un, it's under control of the Catholic Church. Vatican and, City, yeah, yeah. That place is the number one place where kids go missing. Yeah, mm. I, I would not doubt that in like some per capita look like at it, but yeah, like a lot of these priests, 100% are doing it because they want uh, guilt-free, blame-free association with kids. And, and that's why, why else do they These priests, my... they, get moved, they get moved to different countries all the that's time, cool. too. Yep. That's a reason for that. I think that perhaps the lifestyle of being a priest, this is, you know, remaining celibate mm-hmm. when humans aren't supposed to be that, can make some people become twisted. You, know, you might have been a good person when you first decided to become a priest. You might have been the best. I, I can see that. And now you find yourself at 35 years old, just jerking off for 35, for <laughs> yeah, maybe 20 years. And, uh, and and you're like, I don't know, finding your most vulnerable outlets. And, and some people go in that direction when if they could have lived a normal, more fulfilling life, they wouldn't have, I think. Maybe. I... Maybe I'm just more cynical. I think these, I think those predators seek out positions like that to abuse them. Yes, there's I, no I feel like it could be that, a little that, bit of both. Thinking, like, about I don't it. think that they became a a, a child abuser. I think they went into it like this is a way to do this. You're born a pedophile. You don't become one. You don't train people to become pedophiles, and they certainly aren't doing it in seminary school. I, although maybe they're they're allowing <laughs> it. And there's, I bet there's a subculture at seminary school where guys are like, hey, ha. <laughs> <laughs> it's like <laughs> got you there. Well, Kyle, you don't think it's possible that these people get a little fucking warped and twisted trying to live a celibate life for an entire 
old hood. When you get warped and twisted, you get into big titty girl porn or glory holes. You don't <laughs> say. You don't catching say strays I want to... every episode. <laughs> catching, catching <strays. laughs> you don't you, you don't suddenly say I want I want some little boy ass. You don't you don't say that. And mm-hmm. that's what these guys do. Just like that coach I was talking about that they found with all those videos of him drugging. Uh, it's they have a a thing they're into. Like the thing that they're into will often be a boy. And and it's not that they're that they haven't came in a while and they're extra extra horny. Mm-hmm. Like like don't even try to relate to them. Because yeah, they're, they're another thing. They're pedophiles. And and then we our brains literally don't work the way that theirs do. Because yeah. whatever like the thing that attracts you most about sex with women and with or, or like the sexiest thing in the world to you, to them, that's children. That's children. And yeah. I don't think you ever become that. I think you just are that. Yeah, I haven't so be, be thankful process. you aren't. Where I often try to like rationalize or normalize what people are saying, right? If Taylor told me he could jump off buildings, some people might be, that's just a total lie. I'd be like, well, probably some buildings, you know, like <laughs> up to two stories, maybe he's better than most. <laughs> like I just yeah. try to make sense out of it mm-hmm. instead of just calling a non, you know, outrageous. Is, is that the same thing about gay people? Do you think, Carl? I think that gay people are born gay. I think that many times because of the way our society works, for better or worse, people don't discover that they are gay until later in life, or people don't discover that they're bi or somewhere else on that so spectrum they of sexuality it. until later in life. And it, not necessarily suppressed, but maybe just never even entertained the thought yeah. because it, it's it's so other. It's so it's the hated mm. thing or whatever. Like you would never even consider it. It, you know, um, you know, I don't like Russell uh, till I tried them. Have you ever heard the psyop that Russia took credit for about making uh, America gay? No, um, I did not. What did they say? Um, so I, I forget the dude's name. I could pull it up after the podcast and send it to you. But that's back in the 60s. There was this guy who did a whole interview uh, with some U.S. No, not a U.S. A Canadian uh, talk host guy. Mm-hmm. And so he did an interview with them. And he told them exactly about how they were planning around this time in the U.S. Most of the people here would be a lot more, a lot of the guys would be a lot more feminine and a lot regal. And the way, quote unquote, the way they started it was through college. They they put these uh, teachers in college to teach their views and their ideas to all these students. And the idea was these students would slowly do the same, you know, then they we, they become teachers, they become high school teachers, elementary school teachers. Sure. And over time, it was going to happen. And I believe they said they basically accomplished what they wanted in half the time that they were expecting it would happen. And I, I don't know, that, that's just from the interview I watched. The full interview mm-hmm. is about two hours. There's a few different articles you can find online with like a 10 minute clip. Explaining. The Russians made us gay twice as fast as they had predicted. <laughs> I would love to watch that movie where, like, where, where Igor, had... come look at the numbers. They are gayer than ever before. <laughs> Was it called no, no. Operation Infection? I will email it to you guys after this. Yeah. <laughs> Operation Reach Around. Yeah. <laughs> Operation, I Googled it and saw Operation Infection. It's not sure it's the same. Thing. Operation Pink Kryptonite. You know, that's the Operation one that makes Superman Don't show, gay. don't tell. Mm. Is Pink mm. Kryptonite part of the lore? Yeah, in the Wait, comics. is it? I know. <laughs> that's do you think that's a... It makes him gay. John, do you that's think great. that is a bigger contributor to, like, the feminization, the lowering of tea and men and all that? Or do you think, like, the, the food that we eat and all the... So the lowering of tea is from many different that? factors. One is tap water. Um, the soaps people use, the plastic we use, the foods we eat... Uh, these phones we use, the electronics we use, everything basically we have in this world, it lowers your testosterone. Um, Nick, the vape stuff that lowers your tea, smoking weed lowers your tea, smoking Nick, smoking uh, cigarettes that's made in the US lowers your tea. Tobacco by itself can actually, in not all those chemicals added. There's a whole bunch of different things that can lower your tea over time. And if you just put your body through all of that, like if you look at Amish people, for example, 
a lot of these Amish people, they don't get autism, they don't get heart attacks, they don't get diabetes or any really diseases or cancers. Mm -hmm. They live in a world without all this garbage that we use that's poisoning us. Like the phone is useful, yes, but it has a it has a cost, it has a price for it. I wouldn't swap places though. I'll take the cancer. You know, those, those Amish fucking losers, you know, like like the ones that are out there actually Amish life in it for realsies. Like, Dude, I bet there's so life. much happier. Die. There's you so much Amish people. Yeah, because they don't know any fucking better. Is okay. I was reading about this. They're good with electric bicycles now, which feels really high tech. But they're just like, hey, you know, just better than a horse and buggy, better than a regular. I don't bike. like that. That's cheating. That's not in the spirit of it. I I want <laughs> the Amish to stay Amish. What I it's love not a real Amish if they're doing it, then why? They're Mennonites if they're doing that. They would I think dress they like drink, real Amish. Though. Drink? No, like I, don't think, I think I don't they think... brew cider or some shit and drink it every year because I've seen so many Amish DUI videos where the cop's like, hey, pull over. <laughs> God damn it, he's asleep in there. And the horse is running away <laughs> the horse with him. Is running away. <laughs> he's asleep in the buggy, passed out drunk. And the horse is, he goes, ah, hell, the horse knows the way home. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Probably it's like true that the horse has been that way before. The horse knows uh, Jebediah's just taking a nap. It's fine. No yeah, big I mean, deal. It, it's true. I guess there's carcinogens and everything, right? But yeah, you, at, at they are way you, healthier than us because they eat way better food than us. Dude, I don't know. And they're active know. all the time. Dude, they, like, do, they do studies on this. They're literally way healthier than us. They, have they lower do studies on of, it because I would like to see on the, on the Amish. I, yeah, because they like think about how much impact, how much impactful. What's more impactful than the food you eat? Every physical day activity. they're eating fresh, clean stuff, and they're physically active. Like that would, like, I, I bet you could feed them what? What? I, I bet you could give them Burger King, and they would be just as fucking healthy because they're in that goddamn field plowing that bitch up every day, burning them. Are you sure on. about that? <laughs> they need to yeah. study the rums. Yeah, the one. But hold up, bro. Whoppers are good. They're flame broiled. All right, the whoppers are no, fine but no, burger. no, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> sure. uh, are you guys? <laughs> You're on your own. Do, with do you guys the, the Burger King. King. Don't forget it. <laughs> What's that, John? You never look into conspiracy theories. We love conspiracy yeah, all, theories. all sorts of. Yes. Them. What are the? What, what's one of your favorites? What are a couple of your your top conspiracy theories you've been get, getting? So this into is recently? this is one of the ones I learned about uh, about a year ago. It was covered in the media about this happening across the U.S. and Japan. Um, so people would be eating at like McDonald's or something, and they would find like mm -hmm. a teeth or like a toe in the hamburger. And teeth or trace, toes. And it usually okay. traced back to a little kid that went missing. Um, and if you look at how many kids go missing a year in the United States, there's over 500,000 kids a year. And so they expect excellent because, you know, what do you do when you're done, when you kidnap someone? Okay. You can't just like throw them away. Someone Dice them, find them. Throw them in the fryer. If you put them back in the food and have people eat them. So let's say if 5,000 kids. No, not 5,000. 500,000 kids go missing a year, okay? And you ate 5,000 hamburgers from McDonald's. You're eating about 100 pounds of human meat, like, a year then. If you ate 5,000 McDonald's hamburgers, okay? And those 500,000 kids that go missing, they never get found a year or two, just in the U.S. alone. Well, that's not um, weird. 500,000 American children oh. go missing every year? That doesn't seem right. Well, he's he's real close. So so what what's true is that there are 500,000 reports of missing children every year. 90, over 97.8% of them are found, though, because you've got so many... Yeah, you know, we find their teeth in the burgers. They were just down the street or whatever. Half a million children go missing, but... Nah, I'm fucking of sick of Burger King. It's all toes and teeth, and I'm tired of paying for this shit. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm on the I'm on a website called I got silk and Chinese the, hair in my teeth. I'm on a website called findthekids.org. <laughs> uh, so, so those are their numbers according to their research. So, yeah, so so half men go missing, but they find them all, you know. And no, yeah, they, they do find most of them. What better way for a human to get nutrition than to eat another human? It seems like they'd Child. be perfectly formulated for what you're trying to build. Yeah. You are what you eat. You are what you eat. Yeah. <laughs> Genius. That's what they meant. <laughs> the human trafficking victim. <laughs> is oh, yeah. That's what they meant. I that's no interesting. I don't know anything cannibalism. about the cannibal. You don't have any issues with it other than like it's it's disgusting and wrong. If I knew that the that the meat it's only wasn't disgusting from because you're biased. If I'm I knew biased. that the meat hadn't been taken from someone who'd been like violently killed, like 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 they're like taken from them, for example, especially for the meat that I don't want to do. 
But if someone had passed away or if someone had, for whatever sick purposes, had volunteered to be eaten, like whatever, if we got a fresh kill that's that's uh, guilt free, I'll say, uh, I would absolutely partake. Like, if like it's you my dying, a, if, if it's my dying wish that you guys both have to eat me. Yeah. Would you do it for my right dying now? Meat? I would. Yes. Brad Taylor off my plate. <laughs> off the Sexy you know what? Taylor, <laughs> give me seconds. <laughs> you'd have um, my big like fat like ham hock shoulder, and you'd be like, "God damn, I'm tired of all this silvery skin and fat. I have to oh. cut off." <laughs> right? No, I want. I want 2023. Yeah. I would eat. I, I wouldn't eat you guys. I, I I wouldn't do it. I think I'm a little offended. Is it because that would be? Old? Is it the chemicals? <laughs> No, it's that. I, oh wait, I, I would. Talk. I would see I it as. Too. I would see it as bullying. I would be like, I'll make he's more trying to give. He's trying to make me traumatized as a joke, as like an after. Because that's would, the only reason I would request that you guys eat me to fuck with you after I die. I would eat like, you happily. I would, I would invite people. I do a. I'd live stream eating Taylor's ass, and I would be. I, I look. You see the little divot right here, and I'd be cutting into a sous vide. I would sous vide you, right? Up yeah. to I don't know what the correct temperature for human is, but I'm gonna bring you up to 165 like your chicken, and then I'm going to take you're gonna be in there with rosemary, garlic, some butter. Sides. Take you out, throw you on the uh, the cast iron, right? Get a nice sizzle, get a, get a little uh, little char right out of there. Base with butter, base with butter. We got to work quick now, okay? If you're gonna eat Rest a person, for five minutes and right on the live stream, cutting you open. I'm going the other oh, direction with my live stream. We got a pathetic meal time. This thing I'm gonna put oh. Taylor on a George Foreman grill. Shit. Stall I'm gonna I'll fucking haunt you. <laughs> you do that. You I, I would not abide that. So John, what are your do you think do you agree with me? What cannibalism your is is immoral, <laughs> that it's wrong. The recipe of it. So I'll give you two different answers. One, if if you're a dude and you eat another dude, pulls off that's gay as fuck. Uh second <laughs> answer, uh, is that true if you eat gay cows and stuff? Like or, or like chicken? <laughs> yeah, Maybe, like if you eat a male animal. Is that Second, rooster, is that me personally, uh, I would rather uh, just starve to death instead of eat a portion. But I wouldn't starve to death. I would just fast and meditate. Yeah, but you there is a time you when you can't fast by anymore. fasting and meditating. So it's all about how you think. What's going to happen if you if you think you're starving to death, you're going to starve to death and die. If you're uh, fasting, you control this reality. You control what happens. What other pieces of reality do you control with your mind? Thank you. I don't know. I guess just my life. Just that one? Just starving? Okay. Just that one. Like, what, <laughs> right, what if I slowly raise the temperature in the room to a temperature that would kill a normal man, but because you were meditating and thinking, that, you, uh, like imagining a shield of ice, do you think that you could withstand higher temperatures than a, a regular man who was unprepared? Oh, I know. I, I know I could sustain a higher temperature than the average person without a doubt. Just because of my experience as a wildland firefighter. Um, no, that's true. Let alone, also, I uh, I try to put myself in extreme conditions at all times. For example, this past winter, I went swimming when it was uh, five degrees out in the river here locally. Okay. Uh, I do that on a regular basis. Day in winter, and then day in the summer, I try to put myself uh, in extreme heat conditions without water. I could go for days without water, weeks sometimes, if I wanted to. I, when I was wild and firefighting, I would usually only drink about one water bottle a day while hiking up all this stuff and doing all this work when everyone else would be drinking a shit ton. And I'd be fully functional and I would do a lot better than everyone else. Because your body is more efficient. Myself with the lack of it. Yeah. I wish Taylor had been here for that. Taylor Taylor drinks a lot of water, but he probably doesn't need to if he could master that technique. Yeah. If Taylor had a stronger mind, he wouldn't need water either. That's incredible. So you, you think that through experience, through toughening yourself, through from exposure and from focus and meditation, you've you've been able to you could you could weeks, you think, without water or or or, or maybe just a week. Well, so know. if I'm doing weeks, I would have to walk myself up to that. Yeah, of because course. The longest I have done has been a week. You know, it's not uncommon for me to go three or four days without water. Just because, you know, like, I don't always drink water. Um, three or four you, days are, regularly. Are you drinking something else? Like, you have, like I survive strictly on milk? Because that's less impressive. No, 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 no. Like, if, if I'm not drinking water, I'm not really drinking anything. 
So the only two drinks I drink now currently, I've, I've quit the coffee actually and the mm-hmm. alcohol completely um, because coffee and alcohol is uh, makes you age faster. The only two things I currently drink is raw milk and spring water. I actually, I got a fresh spring water from this morning I collected. <laughs> Stream. So you're, you're loading up on water. Kyle, unmute yourself. <laughs> you're loading up on water in preparation of your next four-day bit. No, no, that's, that's just the spring water I collected for my week. This oh, is okay. stream water, like from a nearby creek, a small river. No, uh, it, not a stream, a spring. It comes directly spring. out of the ground. Water spring collected. water. Okay, okay. Yeah, you don't want to drink stream water. You'll get very sick. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 Taylor. I, that I can toughen you. <laughs> and then I, <laughs> then I don't get viruses. or so, fucking shit, dude. That man, just, I, can I see that container one more time? Because it looks like something from Supernatural. Like you just caught yep. a demon's soul and you've got it bottled up in there. Holy fucking shit. Look at that big boy. Okay, you got a little spout on the end. A little dispenser. Little He's like the spout. That's my favorite part. That's pretty so, cool. Uh, you throw a couple lemon slices in there. Get a little vitamin no. C going. Keep the scurvy at uh, bay. No, I, I used to just eat my lemons by itself. Oh, oh you're just, just like eating an apple? lemons? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, you're not. Peel? Like, I don't even know. Like, like, like you're eating it like, a, like, an, like, like an orange lemon. slice? All right, wait like a second. Little... Do you have any lemons right now? No, I don't. Uh, <laughs> wolf them <laughs> down. <laughs> Dude, you can't keep lemons around this guy. <laughs> that's, that's wild. That's what do, do you uh subscribe to any of the other uh online influencers medical advice like like the uh the liver king? I don't know if you were you watched him. He was real big for a while with his raw diet. And I think maybe he also preached exposing his butthole to the sun's rays. I think he thought you need to get butthole UV radiation exposure uh, to your asshole. <laughs> Oh, um, that's Hunter Biden. That's right. Yeah, yeah. No, he he yeah. did have something about like you should be naked in the sun. And of, of all the things he said, there's no way it's bad to be naked in the sun. That probably feels great. But your asshole specifically, your perineum and 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 booty. Oh well, booty hole. like how are you supposed to enjoy the sun? Like laying, pointing your ass at the sky. He's that's... like downward facing dog essentially. Like you're you're offering your butthole to the sun. Oh, I thought it was more <laughs> just kind of enjoying nature. And, no, you chant raw. Take my hole. What was what time. was that guy's fucking retarded website? We we made fun of didn't we make fun of that guy's website? Like all his tips, where it was like the fifth principle: ferocity. Enter every engagement like a lion pack. You are <laughs> the, the alpha. I don't remember that. I, and it's like you're five four. A lot of times when I go to these things, eighty percent of it makes sense to me. Like I feel like it's mostly right, and and mm-hmm. it doesn't matter who. Mm-hmm. Like I don't mean to lump all these people together, but it could be just pearly things. Andrew Tate, Liver King, uh, Jordan Peterson. You look at what they're telling you, and there's only a few parts of it that are objectionable. To yeah, because yeah. yeah. it's because most of it. Uh, I I haven't watched many of any of those people, but the stuff I've seen that oh. like everyone agrees with seems to be like the Jordan Peterson one of like you should clean your room and be responsible for your life. It's like. Yeah, that's that's the most basic of basic bitch advice I can imagine. Take yeah, responsibility uh, for yourself it, it, it and, is and be basic, ambitious. But most Americans these days they kind of need that. Like I know people here locally, they're twenty five, they still live with their mom and dad. And the mom and dad still makes them breakfast and wake them up to go to work. That sounds I like, dope. I I was about to say I like that. I like that in Italy that's a common thing. And uh I, I think that, that can be you know, like yeah, nothing wrong with rent. living with your family. Yeah, I don't. I really don't think so. Really? Think so there's nothing family. wrong with living with like, your family, but if your mom is still taking care of you, waking you up to go to work, cleaning your job. bedroom for you, doing your that's laundry good for you, that's interesting. Yeah, it's I'm, a good mom, but she's making you fucking a lazy prick that can't handle. I mean, my life. mom never. My mom <laughs> stopped doing that shit for me when I was a child. But I'm just saying, if I can imagine, if you were like 25 year old you who's hustling hard, you're not just laying in bed all day at mom's house. You're you working your two mm-hmm. or three jobs and. You're online doing this and that. You're really going at it, putting money away or investing, whatever you want to do. And your mom's making your bed and and hooking you up with breakfast. That's just a loving mom. Who's yeah, but those kids here, well, a dog seal, they don't they don't do that. They don't make money. They smoke true. weed, they go drink, and then they just uh, play games and fuck. John, I have a question for you because I want to see if you line now. up with me. I don't know about all this. Do you share these same feelings <laughs> with girls? Like if there's a 25 year old woman and she's living at home, do you look at her the same way you do a dude? So I, I I do not look at them as the same way as a dude, no. Me too. Tell me more. Why? Why is it okay for girls to stay home and not boys? 
Well, I guess I guess it depends on which culture you are we talking about. We're we talking about the U.S. culture. We're we talking about like you know, for example, the Middle East. I was thinking of U.S., but I'm open to hear what you have to say. Okay. Um, I think the reason why it's a lot more acceptable for girls to do that here in the U.S. is because usually, like for example, growing up as a kid, most kids like the girls. They get babied usually by the parents. Like that's just a thing. They usually get taken care of. Like I've met so many families where the boy has to do all of his things. He has to become successful himself. From what I've seen, I could be wrong. There could be other families that do it differently. Versus the the daughter, she would get those callers paid for. She would get this paid for. They would do this for whole. Um. I don't know if that's true everywhere, but from here locally, that's what I have seen is kind of like they see girls are more innocent and they need to be taken care of more. Mm. Um, and I believe like in the Middle East, for example, or like Northern Africa, you know, it's mostly a lot of it is Islamic people though. Mm -hmm. um, and usually, for example, the daughter, she would stay home with her parents until there's a suitor who marries her. Um, so, you know, usually, but the only difference is like, they're usually the daughter would do a lot more to take care of the parents for Cecile. It's kind of the opposite way around the parents mm -hmm. usually kind of take care of the daughter. Um, at least from what I've seen, I, I think it's like a cultural norm because for example, like as a kid growing up, if you're a dude, someone punched you and you start crying, you be like, don't be a fucking pushy. You know, mm -hmm. people tell you to shut the fuck up. Versus the goal, if a goal gets hit, if you watch these videos online, if one chick gets hit, the whole the whole room of dudes turn around. Mm -hmm. If the guy getting his eyes beat, no one gives a fuck. He can defend himself. True. You know? So I think yeah. it's just like a cultural norm at that point. People see females are more fragile and we have to take care of them more and provide for them. I think that's mm -hmm. how it's seen. Um me personally, like if I saw a female you know, get intact. I probably step in a lot more likely versus a guy. If I see a guy physically fit, I probably want to do it. If it's a guy that was disabled or someone who's a lot younger or maybe small, I might step in then. Because then at that do point, do not step into street fights ever. No, no, no. Did you hear him? I like what he said here. He said, if it's anybody that, that he might have to tussle with, I'm out. I'm walking away. I'm keeping myself safe. But if it's a okay. kid or an old man or a cripple, mm -hmm. I'm stepping in. I'm white knighting the shit. Some like out of mouthy situation. quadriplegic. Yeah, what? you fucking Fuck him dumping him out of his wheelchair and kicking him at kicking him in the ass. I don't think that's what he said. I think he was saying what he said. I think he was saying if the victim is someone in need who's small yeah. or old or oh, disabled, yeah. then he's more inclined to jump in. If the victim okay, is well, an able-bodied guy, he can handle. You know, fuck it. You should have been even more able-bodied. Dang, I thought we were on the same page because everything I said is what I. <laughs> no, what you need to do is is just look down and go away. <laughs> if there's if there's people fighting in public, assume they're crazy and go away. Really? That's not who I yeah. aspire to be. That, that's kind of like a coward thing to do though. It's, no, it's like, a it's a smart thing to do. Have you seen these I'm retards out. that jump into fights on the subway and then they have their lives ruined? No. Maybe their faces slash the razor blade or something yeah, crazy. I'm gonna jump into a, a public fight because no, the, the world is not Hollywood. And this you is don't, not a and, movie. And, and, and a lot do, of do you time, not carry? Do you not carry on you? And a lot of the time, she's a gonna gun? leave nah, with no. him. Being no. a, and, and, I, and, and I got the, my clock right accomplice. next to me. I Which? keep my laptop, my clock, and my passport. What clock is it? Which clock is it? Clock seventeen. So that's a full size nine. Am I right? It's a big yeah. boy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you you that's mentioned a lot conspiracy <clears throat> theories earlier, and I just wanted because you said you were researching some. I just wanted to run through. A list, just a few off the top of my head, and I want to get your takes. Are they real? Are they bullshit? Starting off, like like the whole flat Earth thing. Is I, that I worth looking into, or do you I'm think it's not an expert on conspiracy theories? Like I could none of us. If I, if, just I, talk. If, I, if I hold something, I could let you know what I know. But if I don't know it, I'm, I'm not going to speak my mind on it. Sure. Do you know anything about the flat Earth? What do you think about that one? Um, I really don't know too much about it. I know okay. there's a big movement saying it's flat. Um, and I know there's a big movement saying it's not flat, obviously. Yeah. Um, I, I think the, really... the flat earth people are mostly trolling. It's hard to find people who are sincere so with it. I, I think some of them are trolling. Mm -hmm. And then I think some of them truly do believe it. 
Um, so there that, are that's some when, who do, yeah. That's that's when it gets a little tricky. And a lot, you know, a lot of from what I've seen, a lot of these flat off people, they always go back to saying NASA's fake or something like that. Because mm. NASA, it was founded by a lot of Nazi scientists. So it makes it hard for these people to trust them. Um, mm. And then they try to go and say all the space academy or like space stations in every country have basically the same logo. Okay. So, you know, that's something they always try to say to you, saying it's like some big conspiracy and it's mm-hmm. all made up worldwide. Which, who knows, it could be. I haven't really looked into it myself. I don't know. I can't give you a good answer on that. Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure the flat Earth would. Why, why would the hemispheres see different stars? You know, like... like, see, you, like that one, so I, I, I just don't, I I don't believe most it. people think that. I, I've tried so hard to find unironic, genuine people who talk about the flat Earth thing, and the, at, I've maybe found like one or two. Every time, it's like... Fuck, yeah, he I, got me again. Like, uh, this yeah, person I, I, just said something that made it clear they're, like, fucking with me. I, I think yeah. when I look at a cons- conspiracy theory, uh, the first thing I ask is, do it, would they stand to benefit by by cooking mm-hmm. this up and making it a making conspiracy, exactly. which is a crime, usually? It's usually a, most conspiracies are crimes. Um, like, like w- would it make sense for this to have been done? And you've heard about enough government programs that some bonkers ideas... Especially, I was going to say in the 60s and 70s, but Jesus, even still, all sorts of remote viewing like programs and, and, and dosing people with huge amounts of hallucinogens. You say remote viewing is not real? What? No. Uh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. He I know what remote about. viewing is. Uh, like, I'm just saying, thing. remote viewing is when um, you are s- sitting in a room and yeah. they give you, say, an envelope with a photograph of a place and they tell you to go there and without showing you the photograph by touching the thing you go there or by by looking at a oh. perhaps you look at a picture of a missing girl and you're like there's a river nearby i can hear the water there's a coca-cola sign uh what ah, else? Um, yes i don't know i was with you <laughs> there are the, trees at the start you didn't have me i'm like well pictures are definitely so, real let's see where this is going i think it's well, maybe more i don't think it's like a, it was it was like a cia thing that they were try, trying to oh. figure out like they i don't think that lot. they've done so much shit the cia i, I don't like, think it's so, like a, i really a like kyle's team. thought of does this potential liar have the ability to profit from this lie. That's yeah. a Who that's a game? red flag. The other one that I call upon a lot is how many people need to keep this secret for it to be true, right? If it's like, man, there's 33,000 people working for the media all not telling us the truth. It's like, ah, you know, there's, that's a lot of people yeah. who know the real See, truth who aren't pitching. That one's it. not compelling to me. Like the secret keeping one, like, like, cause you don't, have to have tens of thousands of people keep a secret. You just have to have the five mainstream media companies that control 90 plus percent well, I think, to I agree think the not to talk. The same way that like the, uh, they knew about the Epstein stuff for years and it was like, they just didn't report it. Like, I so really like, you, like if you why. like, like right now, Woody, if you had a pamphlet, let's say just moon landing, picking something out of my ass. Let's say you have a pamphlet that has verifiable evidence, cannot be disputed that the whole thing hullabaloo made up. Okay. What do you do to get it out there? It's your mission to spread it. Um, hopefully, I have undeniable proof that I can share, and then I don't know social media websites. Yo, you're gonna get banned. The internet, mm, and you're maybe. gonna report it. You're gonna send it to CNN, and they're not gonna run it. And so, like, yeah, the whole, yeah. like I'm just making the point that like it just the gatekeepers are the media apparatus, not the individual secret keepers. I. I, I hear what you're saying, and, it, and it's not insane, but I still think that if a large amount of people need to keep a secret, it's a red flag. Sure, it depends I on the that, secret. But like, you know, military like, Taylor, you're talking like, about more of an idea and just sort of a, a, a state of being. Like, yeah, we don't talk about that here because it's a, we don't have un, we don't have verified sources. But, but also, if you look at it like this, from what I know, a lot of these people, the reason why they think these secrets could be kept so easily, uh, you know, Freemasons, for example. There's almost three Mason lodges in almost every major city. Okay, so mm-hmm. if there's like a three Mason lodge, like in every city that has a hundred thousand population, I don't know how accurate that is, but I know it's 
basically every city usually has one. Sure. So if they if they have like a network like that, it wouldn't be that hard to keep things hidden at that point if everyone followed the same rules. Obviously, mm-hmm. how likely is it if everyone's going to follow the same rules? Because humans get curious. Humans like to break rules all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those guys don't have any yeah. secrets. No. No. Well, those uh. What was that thing that Alex Jones broke into in like 2000? That like owl thing? What, okay, what was I don't that? know about that owl thing. They might have some secrets. Bohemian Grove. That's what it was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I, I was at- thinking about the widespread secret keeping thing. Wuhan lab leak, right? I It seems like everybody in power wanted this to be a wet market. But then it comes out that some lab worker's wife was like, patient zero and people start looking into the dna to see what's possible whether it came from infected bats or what have you and now i don't know if truth is out as a quite thing but certainly the wuhan lab leak is maybe the predominant theory on where Mm -hmm. covid came from yeah and uh people were blowing the whistle on that at the time i want reparations hmm reparations (laughs) um yeah financial reparations in in, from, from the chinese from the Chinese, okay. Yeah, no I was denied yet. my freedom to travel and and to make way as a sovereign navy vessel. Uh, and <laughs> Kyle was down Kyle wanted to, to travel so bad. I had places to go, time. people to see. Like, oh, they had I me locked down travel. for two years. I want, I want recompense. I want restitution. I want money. It's hard uh, to suppress a truth, but, you know. Even it if is. Yeah, truth tends to come out. Or you, you like to believe that that it I don't know. I mean you know, I, I think they, I think the CIA killed Kennedy. Like like I, I think when it's I think <gasps> the CIA keeps secrets. I think the CIA keeps yeah. secrets. I th- I th- I, agree. I think the people who that's keep a little conspiratorial really well are, are intelligence agencies. <laughs> Next the thing people- you know, there's a thin blue line where the police protect each other. I'll put- <laughs> Next thing you know, you're anything. gonna tell me that they poisoned St. Louis on purpose in the fifties with chemicals. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did that happen? Yes, a yes, little, they absolutely a little poisoned bit, multiple cities testing bit. to well, see what when you put it like that in mostly low income and black areas. Louis. Yeah, they, they say like the crack None thing of that's a hundred percent poisoned. True. Yeah, were you also damaged by the Tuskegee Airmen experiments? No, you were. Your people were fine. It's well, I wasn't so there. <laughs> like these secrets no, don't stay at the black. They come out Airmen, like after Airmen. it's like no longer important though. It's like oh, by the way, in 1947 we poisoned a bunch of people in St. Louis. It's like you bastards. <laughs> like, oh, I'm sure you're not doing anything now. Like, I'm sure it's all above board right now. I wasn't yeah. really alert at the time, or maybe alive, but like, what, what started the Vietnam War? Like a fake the Gulf Mabel's? of Tonkin, right? Of Tonkin, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm looking for. I bet that was immediately questioned. Like, I don't know when the Gulf of Tonkin, Tonkin happened. I'm going to make it up, 1972. I bet in like 73 and 74, people we're questioning it. Kyle, do you know when it happened? My so, best mm-hmm. guess is 64, 65, no, 65. Oh, well before. What well, started oh, the war, the war ended in 73. No, no. That's my mistake. Yeah, but I don't know much about like the dates in Vietnam. I really don't. Mm. No. It gets overshadowed by World War II and all the media. Yeah, I like that one. I like that one and uh I like I like the Civil War. The Civil War is neat. Um, it's, you know what I would do if I was like the king of, of all media in Hollywood is I would put a 20 year hiatus and it'd be like for the next 20 years, you cannot make any media about a superhero or about World War II Oh, because everybody you keep going back to those same wells. Oh, you're going to make another World War II movie again. No, you're being lazy at this point. Pick another war. Do you know World War War? One Do you occur- how many how many good World War or I'm sorry Korea War movies are there? Like none. The Korean War is like the most forgotten war ever. Let's explore a little more than World War Two. Yeah. Let's do more. Well, uh, World War Two is a good one. I don't want you to totally cancel it. Think of how good the movies will be twenty years from now about World War Two when they've had twenty years to think of a new angle. <laughs> oh yeah, I'll totally be able to remember. Yeah, I'll the totally yeah, you barely remember them now, Taylor. You're cursing me. <laughs> well, twenty years, years from now, they just have a movie about World War Three. What about the oh, yeah, um, yeah, World War Three movie? Ukraine be... War. I'd love some movies on that. I think there's Spanish be... American War. You start with the with the Alamo. Mm-hmm. That's the beginning. You know, all the heroes dying. Jim. How about Bowie more ancient history? How about some ancient history wars? Oh, that would be great. What about the? Um, they have a movie or document. Well, they already have a documentary about this. But the pyramids in Wisconsin lakes. Most people oh. don't know about that. That's cool. What as is, well. the, the pyramids in Wisconsin Lake? Yeah. Are, are that's actually really cool. YouTube will found it a while back. What? Huh. It, it, it's a yeah. 
a, a YouTuber made it or it's old? No, a YouTuber found a pyramid okay. in one of the lakes in Wisconsin. It's really cool. I mean, that's... I'm planning on like, flying, though. Yeah, they, they find shit under, underwater all the time. I don't. How big is the pyramid? Is it an impressive one? Or like a, oh, yeah. Oh. It's impressive as fuck. Huh. That is interesting. You can find it on Google. If you they... type in Wisconsin's lakes, Wisconsin pyramid lakes, it would pop right up. This is a 45-minute yeah. documentary on History Channel. That's really cool. Yeah. Pyramids must be like the easiest shape to build for all these cultures to have like landed on the pyramid as like the big structure. What you know, the if? first the oldest pyramid is is uh is those is the Great Pyramid in Giza and the and and those th other three that are there. Those are the first ones, the earliest ones, and they're perfect. Maybe yeah. pyramids are just more durable. That like there were tons and tons of towers that are actually easier to make, and they're just gone yeah. now. <laughs> Oh, this, uh, God, I get the like the time frame mixed up, but I believe like the Sphinx in Egypt was there is more distance between the creation of the Sphinx and Cleopatra than there is between us and Cleopatra. Yeah. And so like, they don't to know Cleopatra, the Sphinx was already ancient. No, I think she that, was that Egyptian in... stuff. That's the conspiracy theory, if you can call it that, that I believe. I, I don't think the Egyptians built any of that stuff. I, I think they built that. I don't think they built. Yeah. I think they built that mud brick shit later on. And that old the older you go, the higher the quality and the craftsmanship is and the statues and stuff. I think the Sphinx is way, way, way older than the it Egyptians. Is. Yeah. Yeah, or like really what cool. we think of as Egyptians, you know, like like those people who were making pyramids. And 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 like the other thing, I love this when people actually think that the Jews were slaves in Egypt and built pyramids. That that, that didn't happen. That's it's, it's entirely Hester made up. Yeah. <laughs> That's a Charlton Heston movie. That's like angels with goddamn feathery wings. That's some Hollywood shit. The Egyptians were like, we need people who are great at manual labor to enslave. Ah, the Jews. <laughs> like, <laughs> Can we back up to the angel thing? It's been mentioned a few times. They don't look like John Travolta from Michael. Hell no. no. If you read Revelation, it describes you can't angels one. as like, uh, it, it's not an angel well, it description on what, what of them. Of it's, it's, it's like Peter or Justin. Paul or, or whoever writing a perspective of them to just, I don't think it's an actual description of angels having a thousand eyes and multiple wings and the head of an eagle mixed with a bear mixed with a lion. It's like, that was just him saying that it can't possibly be quantified in terms that you can understand. Like it's, it's something indescribable and horrifying. None of them say like yeah, angels say are scary. cool. Every time they see an angel, people drop and are terrified and are like, don't kill me. Which is a terrible way to, you know, like God knows angels that's going to be the cool. response. No, they angel, like no, no, they're 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 super powerful, but they're also that's unbelievably, exactly uh, like. yeah. yeah, they're they're very, or I guess Lucifer as an angel was jealous of humans, and so that's why he bailed out and was like, "What God, you're giving preferential treatment to these things that you made in your own image? I'm infinitely better than any of these things." And then God was like, "No, you're not. Your arrogance." is evil and then throws them into into hell there you go there's the whole bible the whole, the whole story of it <laughs> and yeah, i can't be like, an angel no no they're a different you know what, species you're a human yeah, you, know what, you, you do not become an angel you cannot What's become that, an angel have, have you guys ever looked into the grand canyon i haven't yes, been there no. i have I, literally I stood at the top <laughs> looked into so it. at the grand canyon a helicopter there's an asian city that was uh there was like a cave system that people coughed out and they found a whole bunch of artifacts the the same type of artifacts you would find in Egypt, you know, all the same stuff you would find mm -hmm. in the Grand Canyon. Huh? So like the same it, kind there's of a 45 minute documentary mean? about that too, from the history channel. There's so much about history. We don't know. Like yeah. I, I would 100% buy that. There are entire civilizations that we just don't know about like that have been buried or you know, a tectonic movement hid them. Like if we've been around for hundreds of thousands of years, like there's gotta be older stuff. Yeah. I really I like agree. that, uh, that younger, those younger Dryas theories by Graham Hancock, like the idea that that, uh, comet strike flash melted all that ice and caused a great deluge. And that's why you've got this worldwide great flood myth. And when he talks about Gobleki Tepe with the, with the huge structures that seemingly, were built using technology that shouldn't have been around. We should have been hunters and gatherers, you know, clubbing around with sticks and pointy rocks. But here are these big monolithic structures that would require teamwork. 
And you mm-hmm. can't have like a group of, you might think, well, yeah, the hunter gatherers, get, get them together in a team, but somebody's going to be growing food for there to be this multiplication of like effort to food so that some people can just work and become yeah. craftsmen and, and, be, and have specialized jobs. It's a big step up on the tech tree when humanity was like, yeah, Farmer John oh, yeah. makes enough food for all of us. We can do whatever we want. I'm a blacksmith. You'll be the cow mm-hmm. herder. You'll be the sheep Figuring herder. out agriculture really, You're a really boosts everything. You can't stay. Or you can become a special man in a coat actually, who has access to the kids. The pedophile's like, actually, I, I saw a bright light in the sky, and they said it was A-OK. Really? How bright was it? I found <laughs> golden tablets in central Missouri. And they told me, where do you come down on, on Mormonism, John? Do you think that it's, uh, do you think that they're real Christians or too misguided? I'm, I'm not too sure, to be honest. Um, like, I never really looked into the religion that well. You should. It's entertaining. Um, so, so I, here's I the Mormon to them. religion. I they're very to wonderful lot, people. Mm-hmm. But I've never really looked into it myself, so I don't have a good education. Okay. So quickly, Natural. here's the deal. I would say they're real Christians. They just add, they just have an extra little addendum that's a little silly, but they're such nice, good people. A couple hundred years ago, they, this guy named Joseph Smith, who was a con man, claimed that he found golden tablets in the ground that were written. You know, there were new there were mo- new books to the Bible, and they described Jesus Christ coming to North America, meeting with the Indians, and a number of other things. He never showed the tablets, and he would only read them by putting them in a goddamn magic hat. And they there was also a couple other ways they found him to be fraudulent. Like the guy is transcribing what Joseph Smith. Uh, what is it? It's Joseph Joseph Smith. Joseph Smith. Yeah. It's such mm-hmm. a plain name; it's easy to fucking forget. Yeah. He has a man transcribing what like he reads. Man. He's looking in that in the fucking magic hat, and God said, um, "Joe, you're a swell guy. You should have fifty wives. You got that?" And the guy's over there writing it all down. Well, the guy goes home, and his wife is like. You did what all night? That guy's fucking full of shit. Here, I'll prove it. All that shit you wrote? Give me that. Go tell him you lost it. Tell him he'll have to transcribe it again. He goes back. Joe's, he, dude's furious. And he says, he, he'll, see, he'll have to go talk to God about this. God says, because of what, that, of what happened, that book can never be revealed again. That's lost unto mankind now because of the deception. Dude, that's a... That's such a good spin. So Isn't that what happened next... on the South Park episode? Yeah. Well, they're telling the truth. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's the history. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they, they are. They're uh, they get the Mormonism shit in South Park pretty correct because they're from Utah or no, they're from Colorado and like Colorado, Utah, Idaho. There's a huge Mormon population there, and so especially Idaho and Utah. If you live there, you know a shit ton of Mormons. Those are swell people. And to a T, they are like kind people who seem yeah. to have happy families. They all have like seven kids. Yeah. Like they're, they're planning to farm. You would think they'd be out, you know, breeding us, us awful regular folk. They are out, out uh, breeding us. They've all Is got it a the bunch celestial of temple. They go to when they die, because that's also where the wormhole aliens live in deep space nine. No, it's definitely not. And the if celestial it's the same temple. thing, if I can get to meet captain Cisco by converting, Oh my God! I'll go. I'll do whatever they want. If I could go to some sort of Star Trek heaven, <laughs> I don't think that more. No, it's Jehovah's Witnesses. I think that get their own planet. I think that is correct. Yes, the Jehovah's I think yeah, they get their own whole world. I think Mormons have like a, a normal idea of heaven. Maybe. No, the Mormons have the celestial temple thing where like everybody in our our, our like Heaven's poor family group, the husband, the wives, and the kids <laughs> are all in our own little group together. And and th- that's that, that that's definitely true. Like that oh, wait, is all of well, hold up. If that's if that's the case, <laughs> imagine this. Let's say, you know, I have a family, I have kids, okay, and then mm-hmm. my kids have a family and they have kids, yeah, and so on and so on and so on. Okay. Well wh- where do I go? Do my grandkids get to see me then? Do no. my son sees me? No, you're so, only no, they'd son. have to. That wouldn't be heaven if you couldn't see you, your friends and family. You know, you're going to have to ask a Mormon. I'm sure they know all the answers to all these questions. <laughs> Dude, I, I remember that scaring the shit out of me as a kid when, like, they taught us at one point. They're like, when you go to heaven, you're just part of, like, God's family now. And, like, that scared the shit out of me. I'm like, I'm not going to, like, I won't recognize, like, my grandparents and my mom and my dad and my brothers and everything. And, like, I remember this pastor being like, no. And I was like, 
<laughs> what? Like, <laughs> like, like that's old the horrific. I, I don't know. Five, six. Like, so they're <laughs> telling yeah. five year olds they're going to be separated from their parents. That's solid. Dude, my mom, I, no, no, no. I my got, mom told I, me I that. got drilled in the head with hell so hard my whole child that I was terrified of hell. Yeah, my mom told me that in the car one time. My dad was like, "Don't tell him that." <laughs> Dude, that horse shit. Dude, I was a I was a real deal adult before I found out my dad was just playing along my whole childhood. It was just like, hey dad, like ever since you and mom divorced, like you just have not been to church ever. And he's like, Nope. And it's like, <laughs> so you just don't do that. And he's like, It's such a waste of time. Like he's just he, <laughs> he hated it. He he, yeah. he he just would golf every day. Yeah, my dad clearly Sunday. did too. Yeah. It's uh... it's boring. It's fucking oh, boring, it's, and they don't keep it fresh. It's a guilt trip so often. It's the this? same shit over. Like, do you know how often I sat and I heard the Beatitudes? Matthew 5, Beatitudes. love is patient, love is kind, it does not boast, it does well, not envy. No, not like, even just I that. Like 5, For example, like a lot of these churches here locally, they would be gossiping, you know, and that's quote-unquote a sin, but you'd be talking shit about everyone there behind their back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about a it's, snake handling yeah. church? Like, like I think I could get on board with that. If if I if I could go to one, here's what here's what turns me off about church. It's a demonstration of faith. Actually, believe. let me talk, let me tell you what I like about church that I that I've enjoyed every time I've gone. I okay. love the singing. I like when there's dancing. At a white church? And, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a ton of singing at every church. Oh. But I've I've only seen terrible singing and awful songs with dodgy lyrics in church. A lot of well, the I'll, dodgy lyrics will be there. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of professional, a lot of professional singers start a church. Um, um a lot of them do. They, 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 really good singing at, 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 Toby at Keith, churches I've Taylor been Swift. to. Um, <laughs> the guy from uh, System of a Down, um, uh, that chubby chick from American Idol. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, I don't and know what her name is. Kelly Kelly Clarkson. Kelly Clarkson. She got big. Did she? That probably helps her singing voice. Oh, I don't. Seems like fat I wonder if she has access better. to Ozempic. We're I don't think she the... wants it. Everybody wants it. I don't know. I don't know what a zip you know who's does. not taking it is uh Sean Connery's wife. Have you seen oh. those pictures of like Sean Connery with his where he's like it's him Sean standing Connery's with his dead. no not Sean Connery the other James Bond the fucking uh, Daniel Roger Craig Moore. are they dude they photoshopped Daniel Craig's wife to make her extra fat and no 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 it's him. it's it's a funny one where like you see him standing next to her when she's like thinner and younger and he's like grimacing and then like he smiles progressively more and more like the the thicker she gets and she's like Pierce got, Brosnan he yeah said. Pierce Brosnan it's a That's very funny picture I hmm, think uh, also cool. uh, Hugh Jackman's wife is uh you know doesn't match him physically speaking. If you want to talk, uh, Hugh Jackman's coming back to be Wolverine in the new Deadpool movie. Do you know about that, Woody? They talked him into that? He has resisted they, that for like 10 years. Forever he resisted. Not only that, Woody, I don't know if you watched the comics or, or read the comics or if you ever watched the animated show. In the animated show, Wolverine has this wild costume. It's yellow and blue. And and the images I've oh, seen, yeah, yeah. he's in the fucking costume. He's in the but, yellow costume with Deadpool. I think that's so he doesn't have to take so much fucking trend. Perfect. This time Perfect. Yeah. I don't need to see him all muscular. I I want to see him no. in a costume anyway. Like like use some CGI. He'll be fit if you enough. To. Isn't Hugh Jackman older than me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's it's been doing that look. character since I was in high school. It's hard to have a superhero body <laughs> when you're in your fifties. I mean, you you know, not without some chemical uh, uh, intervention. I don't think anybody can be a superhero in your fifties without it. You got to be like one of those specimens. What's a What's another great conspiracy theory? I want to I want to get John's take on another another great one. Moon landing? That's almost adjacent to flat earth, I feel like it's definitely both space related. But a moon landing. Kyle, don't fucking sway the results. John, do, moon landing. Do you think that happened? Do you think it didn't? Do you not not really care either way? So mo- most of these so me personally, I don't really care for conspiracy theories. It's just like mm-hmm. who gives a fuck if it happened or didn't happen or what is true or what's not true? Like, Look at that. At the end of the day, how is it going to affect you? Yeah. Oh, the moon landing didn't happen? Oh, it did happen? Okay, who cares? Like, how is that going to benefit yeah. you? Either way, at the end of the day, like, that's the biggest conclusion I have for most of these conspiracy theories. It, like, if it's true, it's awesome. If it's not true, okay, cool. You know, it's vice versa. It doesn't affect yeah. me. Yeah. I, I totally feel you on the moon landing tier ones where it's like, I 
it does not matter to me. I, I could learn 1,000% it didn't happen. And I'd be like, oh, like, oh, Is damn, that- they got, I'd be like, they got me. Like that, like, yeah. like, like that, that would be about it. I wouldn't, I, I don't yeah, think like, that one's it. What do you truly get from knowing if it was fake or if it was real? Like either way, like it doesn't, doesn't yeah. really matter. I feel I, like. I don't think, uh, I, I also, I haven't looked into the moon one at all. Seems like we went to the moon. We got the, the the videos and all that, but I could be wrong. You, you, seems like we it went. Seems like we did. My, yeah. my thing, I'm back to the. It's a lot of people to keep a secret for. Is it 70 years now? Something like that. There, you know what's funny about that is there does come a time when it's way easier to keep a secret, like because everybody dies, <laughs> like like 80 years after. That's that's prime secret hour. It's cemented but, in. Yeah. yeah but see, like, the difficult part is that years first 60 years. Later, years. Who's gonna care at that point? That's true, actually. Yeah. You know, like it, uh, JFK, though. I, I want to know what's up with that. Seems like Dude, the CIA, you right they kind now? Of come out and almost admit it, like that it was a CIA related thing. Well, he, no, let, okay, let's say know. let's say if JFK was killed by the government, if they told us that right now, what's really going to happen? Probably nothing. Nothing. I have yeah, no nothing. power. I would not ride in the streets. I'm. I was not alive if, during JFK's life. If it yeah. happened, if they told us the very next day it happened, something probably would happen. People would be wild yes. up, but right now, who gives a fuck? JFK I don't. I don't like, think people would even care. Like they, like yeah. the CIA has admitted, like, oh yeah, Operation Mockingbird in the fifties and sixties. Yeah, we had the CIA gave talking points to all the mainstream media organizations to launder talking points and beliefs into the American people to bolster support for wars and foreign intervention. But we're not doing that anymore. And it's like, <laughs> really, really, Dude, like, so you, you did that, and oh, but you're not doing it anymore. All right. You're young for this, but the first Iraq war, the way they beat those war drums was next level. Just Condoleezza Rice out there with, you know, mm-hmm. hey, you don't want the next mush- the next 9-11 to be a mushroom cloud over New York City. We have to go into Iraq. It's like they had nothing to do with 9-11. You just yeah. ma- She's like, no, no, no. I didn't say they had anything to do with 9-11. I would just, you know, put them in the same sentence repeatedly. Yeah, but Iraq, pretty scary, right? Like, that's right? Not, that's Saddam's a madman. He kills his own people. Meanwhile, like, yeah. his people are trying to have a civil war. He deserved Dude, that he invasion for threatening people. to kill George Bush. Did he threaten to kill George Bush? He didn't. No, no, no not just threaten. He, they, 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 uh, they stopped a plot to kill George Bush Sr. Um, uh, that was uh, from Saddam Hussein. Um, so yeah. just for that, I always felt like that's why little Bush went in. He's like, he threatened to kill my dad <laughs> and I'll bring, you know, the entire front of the U S military to your country and have you hanged then. And so he did the fact that we Bush held on for like another anything. half decade or whatever was what never made sense to me. It's like, dude, we hung Saddam Hussein, who in my childhood was like a TV bad guy. Like you, it would be like if we hung Kim Jong Un or something. Or like, or if we got Vladimir Putin, like they went and got him and hung him. We did it. that. It was, it was his fucking country. Way more. Um, a long time. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. He was in. It was. He was in power for a very long time. I really don't know how long. Maybe since the late seventies or something. I don't know. No. I remember. Maybe you've seen it. Uh, I I saw it over and on the History Channel. It's when he took power, and um and and they're like coming in and grabbing. St- I don't know what you call them, maybe senators or the equivalent of that. They're grabbing them, the ones that aren't with him. And everybody's in the room sweating, fucking not knowing who, who's next to be grabbed by the fucking security forces. They're dragging people out of the room to be tortured to death and fucking executed and shit. Yeah, he was yeah. wild. Well, but yeah, I don't know why we hung history. around for all those years afterwards and just poured money down the... Probably money. Yeah, yeah. everything's money related somehow. Yeah, but why? Why was it? Why weren't we more upset about it? I mean, I didn't care because I wasn't there. But it, it just—it was like, why are we still there? Like everybody seemingly should have felt that way. Oh well, ISIS is there. That's where we're fighting them. It's the front line for ISIS. It's like they're only there because it's where we are. They're saying the same thing. Why? Yeah. Why are you invading Iraq? That's where the Americans are. We're invading. We're, that's where they are. <laughs> this is the front line. If we leave, then they leave. We don't give them a front line that we're sitting there waiting with a fucking rifle. That, that was, was the silly. Taliban we were fighting all those years, not that, ISIS. Not in Iraq, though. That was Afghanistan. Oh, yeah, Afghanistan. Yeah. The it's Taliban, the absolute them. 
funniest videos out of the Middle East was when the Taliban took back over and then they posted all those videos of them doing like lat pull downs and like bad form rows <laughs> and they're all in their <laughs> fucking like Arab outfits just like yeah. just having fun in the in the the newly yeah. conquered uh planet fitness. That was <laughs> hilarious. I loved that. Yeah. Just a, a bunch of guys who are sick and tired of doing their rock lifts in caves Dude, ready for they've See, been trying to fly Black Hawk helicopters. It's not- it's by trial and error. I can only imagine. Like, like, <laughs> like, like they must ask the group of, of potential pilots who wants to fly the most. <laughs> like, not who's flown the most. Like, who would like it the most? Like, 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 they get up there and start doing. I don't know what that thing is, Woody. When they're like counter turning the rotor or whatever, it seems like what they're all doing as soon as they they try to take off and they're like, uh oh, uh oh. It's like me trying to fly fly a helicopter in Arma. It's terrifying. And then they all crash and die. <laughs> that's so uh before we jump to the next thing we're gonna hear from a couple of right. wonderful sponsors can you do you guys have your your bird dog tumble actually get your bird dog tumblers it says in the ad read that we're supposed to oh. have them i'll be right back i know where it is this we're is the thing the that just arrived yes the, the, the uh, shorts uh, i've got the shorts I'll right here right i'll hold back. those up you in read. a minute but won't be long First, we hear from Faro Distro. Faro Distro, folks. Happy 710 week, or I guess now it's a week after that. From FaroDistro.com, we've all had those days when we'd rather face an alien abduction than deal with life's stresses. Well, FaroDistro.com can't offer you a UFO ride, but their products may, might make you feel like you're on another planet. Step up your vaping game with Faro Distro's HHC is Better Carts. As the name suggests, they simply offer a better, more premium vaping experience. And with their consistent potency, you can trust HHC is Better Carts to deliver the high-quality experience you desire. Plus, they're lab-tested, assuring you're only inhaling safe, pure, and potent HHC. For those with a high tolerance or simply looking for a more intense experience, meet the 3,000 milligram clusterfucks. Here's the clusterfucks. Sure. It's a little it's a little intense. Each cluster fuck contains 300 milligrams and is designed to give you the powerful, potent feeling you crave. Please, please take it with caution. With ferrodistro.com, you know you're getting the strongest and most reliable products on the market. For those on the quest for mental clarity, focus, and a boost of energy, Ferro Distro's functional mushroom gummies are the perfect choice. They've expertly blended five different functional mushrooms, lion's mane for cognitive support, reishi for stress relief, cordyceps for stamina, shaga for immune health, and turkey tail for gut health, creating a powerhouse of benefits in each gummy. Made with 100% natural ingredients, they're perfect for giving you that much-needed boost to conquer your day. For this week, we're celebrating with you the fans get 30% off. Yes, 30% off your order with code PKA30. This is all products, including the exclusive Dab X. PKA30. Check that out. That includes the Dab X. The magnetic dabbing experience is coming to your home now with a magnetic base plate to keep your nail in place, an anti so good design so your dabs aren't gooping up your experience, and a rugged spill proof travel case. Dab X provides the premium dabbing experience only found at ferrodistro.com. Faro Distro is an exclusive partner of Dab X. As loyal listeners of the PKA podcast, you get an insane discount. Just use the code PKA30 at checkout for 30% off your entire order. Visit ferrodistro.com today right. and use promo code PKA30 Marketing. for 30% off your order this week only. This week only. Well, that's the same ad as last week. So I got this thing going. in the mail. PKA30, think- check it out. Ferrodistro.com. This, this Dab X is fucking thing. awesome. This, I. Like I've been, I, I I got the little bauble things that they sent with the HHC, and this is what this this thing is so unbelievably convenient. This I is love this it. this thing rules. I've never really done dabs before. This is sick, and get thirty percent right. off of it. The Dab X so convenient. I don't gush about our sponsors unless they're really fucking good. That Dab X thing. I had the 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 the. It's called a vape. No, it's a Puffco, a Puffco or something. It's shit. It's so much more expensive. It's probably the good one in that category. This thing blows it out of the water. Uh, it's so much hotter. It burns so much better. Uh, having a carb, you've got a button you can press to clear it. Uh, just on the side, there's two buttons. It's so simple. You can operate it even when you're high, and you, you can't burn yourself. If you heat it up the wrong way, you mm-hmm. still can't burn yourself unless you stick your hand in it. Like You have to be a moron to mess this up. And it things like this need to be made that way. It's idiot. An overcomplicated like, stoner device is doomed to fail every time mm-hmm. this thing is perfect and the magnetic thing's great i love it i love it's it. it's so great I'm, so check out when i leave back, i'm going PKA to my bathroom 30. and hitting it 
<laughs> after after the show tonight, I'm gonna get high as shit on the dab X and play fucking Diablo. Uh, so check Our it out. Are uh, crazy. I'm always getting stroke. drugs and bongs and whatever. I I opened a bong today. And I'm like Jackie's there. I'm like, I ordered an Xbox controller. <laughs> she didn't get the meme. <laughs> I ordered an Xbox controller, but we're just too cool because our audience loves, <laughs> loves getting high. So check it out, ferrodistro.com, PK30. The Dab X is excellent. And, of course, uh, the edibles, the clusterfucks are super strong. If you don't have a high tolerance, please do not buy those. Um, I'm up to two the, now. The weaker ones, take don't. Two. Just be smart. Don't, do, don't fucking do that, man. That's, that's Bro, insane. Two, two is wild. That's 600 milligrams. It's so strong. It's so Dude, strong. I, I'd be high Sunday if I took that right now. Like I, I would be, I would be I was texting, next three days. I'd get nothing done. I was texting you about how high I was and it was midnight or one in the morning and I had taken them at like 7.30 p.m. So like yeah. five, <laughs> six like hours five later. Five and a half hours later. I'm very high. Yeah. All right. Next up, Bird Dog. This episode of PKA is brought to you by Bird Dog's Shorts and Apparel. Bird Dogs makes you look great. Their stretch khaki shorts are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg, giving you a truly sculpted look. They fit way better than regular shorts that are made out of stiff, restricting cotton. Bird Dogs fixes this issue by inventing cloud knit fabrics that looks just like khaki but stretches so you get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. They use anti-stink sweat, whipping fa- sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long. So go to birddogs.com slash PKA or enter code PKA for a free Yeti tumbler with your order. That's birddogs.com slash PKA or enter code or enter code PKA for a free Yeti tumbler today. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. And I've got my, do you guys have your shorts? I, my shorts you are your downstairs. Little, your little shorts. Air, I, I wore a pair the other day when I went out with the dogs on a long walk and they, they needed a good wash. Dude, but, I feel uh, I feel good in these shorts. They're, they're Dude, shorts. you look good in those shorts. Dude, I, I well, maybe it's because I've been losing weight and I'm not fat because yeah. I wouldn't have worn these beforehand, but I've. Of course not. These are going to help me with my thigh confidence. Yeah. Because oh. what I realized is that I've been pants mode for so long because I was insecure about being a big fat fuck that my legs have kind of the color of a like corpse. a corpse floating in a river. And so <laughs> I'm going to be wearing these shorts, these bird dog high quality shorts, code PK for a free tumber, birddogs.com slash PK. Excellent quality shorts. Check them out. Uh, I'm going to be tanning up my legs looking hot as fuck. Fuck yeah, man! You ever get yeah, the, you well, maybe maybe even hop in the tanning bed, get a nice little uh, get, get some char, get some char on tan that get a little you char. You think yeah, so? Yeah, I don't tan not. well because of the Accutane. Oh god damn, that's right. Um, I will say this. Uh, I, I like the shorts a lot. I think they make your package look good too. They are. Uh, they do make fitting. your dick look good. Yep, I've already got the like, some special underwear that like lifts and presents, and uh, the bird dogs just really set everything off well for those. Uh, I need underwear that lifts dogs. and separates. It My lifts and from separates each <laughs> from each other. Yeah, yeah. I qu- there are three distinctive quadrants that I create, and I, I want every. It's on display for everyone. Yeah, I keep one testicle left hand leg, one right pant leg. I need underwear and of that course, blows. Everything else is stupid. Don't don't, don't slide past the tumbler because I wanted to say this is legitimately my favorite tumbler now because the top is like hard to get on and off because of the gasket, but then it's got this like little magnetic fucking. Doopy doop seal, so I don't spill the motherfucker when the dogs knock my shit off my desk like they do look at that. times a day. Get yourself a free tumbler and also some nice ass shorts that make your dick look nice and your thighs look fit. Also, of course, mm. lock and load the premium, creamy ejaculation mm. increasing supplement brought to you by experts like Derek from More Plates, More Dates. Heard of wow. him, perhaps? Yeah. Code PKA, code Jizz, ten percent off. You can get yourself protein powder. You can get yourself energy drinks. You can get nitric. Uh, pre-workout with no stim or you can get the stim pre-workout weight loss supplements whatever you want 10 percent off over at gorillamind.com code pka code jizz and if you're sick of coming like a little bitch you know who i think would enjoy this i bet john that andrew tate would love to come more mm. don't you think so he's an alpha male he's a guy that likes to fuck he's a guy that likes to come and he's probably never heard of our product shout out andrew tate let's get him a bottle of this let's ship a bottle of this to romania in prison. <laughs> he's out of prison he is now. now. Is, I think his brother's pr- still in there, maybe. That's wonderful. Well, then we'll ship it to him, not in prison. Get him some lock and load. It's excellent. You may not know, John, but there is a way to make yourself ejaculate much, much more. So, me personally, uh, not currently right now, but actually, I really do like the products from Gorilla Mode. Um, mm-hmm. I do have the Toker Stand and a couple other products they had. I had one of the products from their sister company as well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they make good shit. I, 
I'm not when I took I was taking the product when I was on fish tank. Like well in mind, that shit works. I felt like a, when, when I first got on the, the Tokistan stuff, I was getting a crazy pump from that. Nice. Yeah, I've I've took some of that as well. I fell off of it though. I forgot to have Derek send me more, but I was yeah. I was taking a whole bunch of those at one point. And I'm apparently a lot it, of it works well. A Derek's lot of had me take it. so many more pills than a doctor ever has. Like <laughs> Dude, there's no I trust more than Derek. Derek could beat up any doctor. Dude. Oh, you Dude, joke. Derek is extremely it, educated. Like yeah. if I, it, it's, 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 if a, there's been times. He's some of my favorite content. Like if I'm watching, if I want to learn something about working out or about some type of medicine or anything related to health, I always could look at his stuff before anyone else's. Yeah, he's he knows his shit. He's smart. He does. He always he makes you feel smarter from watching it because he'll like <laughs> see that's something true. that's like. Well, clearly right here, he's talking about dexeltryptane instead of monodexeltryptane, which is duh. And I'm like, fucking, yeah, that idiot. Like, <laughs> the opposite <laughs> happens to me. He's like, you know, we've got dexeltryptane, which is an antagonist, and this thing, which is, I don't know, a protagonist? I don't know. And, and I'm, like, <laughs> I'm not it's keeping true, up man. with this conversation at all. <laughs> so you got the protagonist. Like, that's, the, that's the Tony Stark. <laughs> and then you got the antagonist. That's the Thanos. Or whatever. I, uh, I've, I've had I've had a doctor disagree with him and found a new doctor. <laughs> Dude, that would be a, <laughs> Dude, that would that would be a good uh, good ver- like a good parody of Doctor Disrespect. That's not nearly as interesting. Doctor disagree. <laughs> I I don't doubt I doubt that. That's all he says. Don't think so. <laughs> He's a terrible character. Man, I fucking hate Dr. Disagree. That other guy is better. <laughs> this guy's not happy. This guy's boring as shit. Did, have you guys seen uh, the tweet about uh, Sam Hyde wanting to fight uh, Dr. Disrespect? Yeah, I did see that. I I don't think the doc is going to agree because he's yeah. a much higher... He's a much more famous guy than Sam. And also... That if he did agree, that's got to be a fight that would give Sam actual like nerves going into it because Doctor Disrespect, I believe, is even taller than Sam Hyde, and I, uh, I think he was I think he was a collegiate athlete, right? He's a basketball player, and that's a I, problem. Yeah, he's got good cardio. He's naturally athletic. He's going to pick up anything pretty well if he played any sport at that high of a level. Yeah. So Zach wrote, Dr. Disrespect offered a million to fight Sam Hyde in Muay Thai. No, it, reverse. Although that sounds Sam, reverse. Sam Hyde, yeah, Sam Hyde offered a million dollars. And I believe Tristan Tate offered to uh, train Dr. Disrespect. Really? Andrew Tate offered to train him? No, Tristan. Oh, Tristan Tate. Okay. Yeah. Who They got involved with the oh Elon Musk Zuckerberg fight, right? Like Tate was going to train Musk. Does that sound right? Do I have it mixed I up? Think, I think I, I saw something about that. Yeah, I, I knew I, that wasn't going to happen. There's no way. I'm concerned the about our billionaires men fighting each other. Do battle. I'd love to see it. Like it, it would. It, it's it's almost like it, the idea of Commodus coming down from the stands into the gladiatorial arena yes. and, and and lowering himself to and doing battle as a as a gladiator himself. It would be wild to see to see someone like that. I mean, you would ha- draw win or lose or whatever. You would have more respect for whoever does that because that's a uh, it depends yeah, on that's their a crazy thing. Yeah, I know. It, it it t- I've comical, said this a lot. If- Not comical. Zucker coward would win, right? That's what I look for. Oh. If Musk went in there and was terrible and got knocked out, respect. If yeah. he goes in there, shells up, runs, fights in a really cowardly way, and taps when he's not in danger, yeah, that's where he loses me. Yeah, that's no good. Yeah, that's no good. Anderson Silva used to fight in a very like weird, shitty way. Um, that was that was super unentertaining. I remember Dana White Sometimes. threatening to take the belt, uh, not not just take the belt away, to fire. Him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's like, he said it. He's the ch- gotta keep in mind. He, he's the champion. He's a very popular guy. And Dana White was like, if he puts in another performance like that next time, he's not gonna be working for this company anymore. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I don't know how I'm gonna make it up to the fans, but I promise you, I'm sorry for this fight, and I will make it up to you. I don't know who. Who do you guys take in the the Sam Hyde Doctor Disrespect fight? Doctor if disrespect. it did happen, Doctor Disrespect. Well, I got to stick with many, Sam. Do you know how much experience Doctor like Disrespect him. have? 
for combat stuff. Yeah, I don't think yeah, he has any arts. like boxing or martial arts experience, but he's taller than Sam. And Is like he we said, he's a, he's a he's the same height. No, he's he's I think a couple inches taller than Sam. Did, didn't uh, Doctor Disrespect? Did he? I don't know. Isn't he, he like six eight person? or something ridiculous? He's he. I, I don't know. He's a giant person. I but, want to know the training yeah. period, right? Like, I'll tell you what. I think if Sam meets Doctor Disrespect and they don't like each other and they're just bump into each other in an alley, my money's on Sam. If they both get six months to prepare for the fight, it's trickier for me. Yeah, yeah that's agree. fair because he's people who are natural athletes like it. It's okay. It goes without saying. Yeah, so like, right you're way six, better. Five and Doctor Disrespect is six eight, but Sam has a lot more weight on him though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I imagine with Sam though, like when you're the size Sam is, you're not used to fighting people with equal reach to you. And so that's probably wild to go from outreaching yeah. everyone to being yeah. outreached. That happened in the UFC. John Jones is the guy. Kyle probably knows this already. When he fought a guy named Gustus Gustafin? Gustafin? I'm stressed suck with Probably Gustafson. Yeah. Gustafson. Yeah. Anyway, struggles aside. Um, he was the first guy with like the same height and length. And John Jones didn't beat him, even though you'd really expect him to, based on their records. It, it, he beat it, it, him. Um, um, the reason he struggled the first fight is because he was up the night before doing cocaine and partying and drinking. Up all night. He did that, Taylor. So if he did lose, because he was scared of losing to Gustafson, he was like, if I lose after a night of binging drugs and alcohol, then I don't feel bad afterwards. I'll be like, it was the drugs and alcohol. I'll come back and get him. It was like giving himself a, a get out of jail free card in case he lost. He barely ekes out a win. So they do Gustafson two. This time Jones doesn't party, so he smokes him like an amateur. The the guy's always just been so much better than ever. His he had a couple fights last two th- three years ago that were close, but other than that, he's he's just a. Scary how about how about guy. this a little little hypothetical? Mm. Eight months of training. Oh, okay. Sam Hyde and Dr. Disrespect versus John Jones. What rules? What are the rules? What rules do you want? MMA or boxing? Yeah. Uh, uh, boxing, I think it would be a pretty easy win for the two. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but MMA is what we should talk about. Like, what do you think MMA wise? Only eight months of training. The doc and Sam what are John the training Jones. in the US or the training uh, in like Thailand? They can. They have the dealer's choice. Anywhere they want to train, they can train. Why would that matter? Yeah, they I don't think that it's in. important. But but I, I think it does. I think it's, I train. think that's a big importance. A lot of people in the U.S. the way they train is completely different. Like if you go to uh, Shaolin Temple, you know one of those guys who's trained for one year versus people who train ten years here in the states, they could kick their ass. That's not true. Well, they're not Shaolin monks. Yeah, no, I know, but you, you, get you don't my see point Shaolin there. monks ever doing anything impressive in like fighting leagues. Like it, they're it's just because, because they don't go to fighting leagues. But if it's oh, isn't that it's convenient? All, yeah, it's, it's legend. It's, it's against like, my religion to whoop all y'all's asses. Lucky I can for beat you. everyone in the UFC, but I'm so dangerous. Most of my moves are outlawed. These hands and lethal weapons. <laughs> would, you don't understand. If yes. me and you were to square off and I kill you, I could go to jail. The yeah. only reason you, you won is like, because I didn't reach into your chest and pull no. out your heart. <laughs> Kalima! <laughs> Dude, that's where you need to train, is in the, the Temple of Doom. The Temple of Doom. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, the no, Kali I, cult. I think I... Uh, because John Jones, 6'6", six, six, right? Like, he's a tall guy. Yeah. Shorter, or same height or ish oh as Sam God. Hyde, shorter than the Doc, and the amount of weight that the Doc and Sam could put on him is a like two big guys of weight. It, it wouldn't matter. He'd win. He would, he would, I, I think he's capable. All right. So I, I just thought about like his last fight was against kind of the other best heavyweight that was available. This technical, large, strong, fast man. And John choked him so fast. No one understood what had happened to the point where the man was, you know, tapping out. I feel like he can do that to either one of our friends mm. before the other one could, like, like if he just goes, yeah, Sam, start hitting me while I put Doctor Disrespect to sleep. Oh, those hurt, Sam. Wait till I'm done with the doc. Oh, they really hurt. All right, I'm fucking done. Come here. Who did he just beat? Was it <laughs> yeah. Cyril Gagne? I can't remember. 
<laughs> yeah, John Jones gone. would fuck yeah, him yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he sat gone on his ass and fucking choked him out. And it was there's that amazing picture. Jones is walking away, going shh, and over his shoulder, gone is on his ass, go, looking confused and afraid. He's like, ah. <laughs> it's so it's perfectly framed. It's if great. you were to take an entire professional team in one of the four major sports, well, yeah, and like make them go to a different sport. So, no. like, let's say, let's say you take the Atlanta Braves, and they have to like play against the Dallas Cowboys in ice hockey or something like, <laughs> like, cause do you remember, do you remember this show? Do you remember that show uh, pros versus Joe's? Yes. Where, yeah. And, and everyone used to like, I remember the episode where it was like a meme where they're like, Oh wow. This professional race car driver is in the mix with this NFL player, this NBA player. I can't wait to make fun of this professional driver. The professional drivers fucked them up in everything. He was unbelievably athletic. It turns out that's way more difficult than, they let on is is being a professional driver yeah okay. it, i was surprised by it what sport do you think would translate the best to the other one so do you think like an nba team would beat a mlb team in football i yeah. think the nba is pretty high up there just as they they tend to be super athletic they're tall and they're strong very fragile in combat sp- or uh, collision sports though i don't know dude mm, they're, depends they're, on it's the a player rough sport they're banging each other in a lot. I don't know. It's not it, a rough sport compared to rough sports like the, hockey. The and NFL, the NFL has to be the pinnacle of like athletic achievement in mankind. I don't see any sport on the planet that moves as fast as Rugby. the NFL with guys who weigh three hundred fucking pounds and all the helmets and armor that go along with it and just the speed. They have no cardio, dude. They 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 have short versus talking? cardio. You take them versus a basketball team and put them in like another cardio heavy sport yeah they're gonna yeah. get blown out I, i'm with taylor i think that basketball players could beat football players at soccer <laughs> yes 100 100 because Cause basketball of the cardio. players have better cardio yeah okay yeah. i honestly think football players would perform the, there is not an nhl team that would get tired before an nfl team there is not an nba team that would get tired before an nfl team there's no yeah, way hockey yeah. players play for 20 seconds at a time or 60 seconds at a time yeah, but they can play a lot more. Do, do you really think they have that bad of a cardio in, in the NFL? No, no, no. Obviously, their cardio is excellent. They're professional athletes. It's just compared to other athletes. Like, honestly, people shit on soccer. I can't imagine soccer players <laughs> losing in this. Like, soccer players are so no. fucking good at always moving. Yeah, I agree with that. Soccer is absurd. It's just con- continuous yeah, running. I played soccer as big. an adult. Like, I gave it a go. And I was like, how is this even possible? <laughs> <laughs> like, Dude, so much of soccer it? is like jogging. And then you see someone kick the ball back. And you're like, oh, oh, <laughs> I was oh, playing hockey awesome. at the time. But now in beer, like in professional hockey, these guys are very fast. In beer league hockey, you can take three good strides and then coast down the ice <laughs> to get to the other side. That coasting down the ice isn't a thing in soccer. It's exhausting. Yeah. No, you can't coast down the field. You just have to run. Mm-mm. Yeah, so people shoot on soccer, but I really think that soccer players would outperform most other professional sports if they had to play. It's a lot Depending of on the competition in in a sport that neither one's familiar with. Like, yeah, I don't unless know. Unless it's, it's like it's, super physical, like rugby or something, then I like it, obviously the NFL team's going to fuck up a soccer team in rugby. Yeah, unless they're just so much soccer. faster. Uh, I don't know why that soccer field is so goddamn big. They need to shrink that thing so the sport's actually watchable. They do a. Uh, my my younger brother does indoor soccer like as a hobby, and basically it's the same thing as soccer, but they it's like half the size. The field's half. The I size. saw I saw street hockey, like indoor hockey, I should say, like played on a mm-hmm. surface. Um, yeah, roller hockey. And there was a fu- no 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 sneakers. Oh, floor hockey. Yeah, cool. Yeah, and then there was a fight. And I was like, this is just a fight now. Like this isn't even <laughs> a hockey fight. It's just a regular <laughs> fight. Yeah, and, that's uh, they- that's frowned upon. Like you shouldn't be. <laughs> They were they like squared yeah. off wait, wait. and everybody treated in it like deck a hockey. Standard... You think fights are frowned upon? I think not in Philly. They had each other. They're it totally normal like, where I played deck hockey. Dude had his jersey. They were going round. It was mm-hmm. great. Well, I mean, I I will never not be pro fighting in hockey. So if it's <laughs> happening, I will always be pro pro fighting in hockey. Is my. Do you guys have like a subject in your mind where you're like, I could defeat anyone in a debate on this subject? The, it's the most uh, pedantic thing in the world. But 
Dude, you're, 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 you're over you're like five. That's circumcision. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, Taylor, with your circumcised penis, tell me more <laughs> about your side of for anti-circumcision, as in that, as in you know so much about it. <laughs> what it's like to be a man who walks the street uncut. See, that's that's a good one. I, I am confident I could beat anyone in the hockey fighting debate, but there's no one mm -hmm. who wants to have it because it's retarded. And the only people who think there shouldn't be fighting in the NHL are people who are like paid by safety organizations to say that. It'll be someone who made their bones beating the shit out of people their entire career and then be like, I don't think we should be able to fight. It's like, fuck you. I of course you should. No, no. It's a pressure release. I don't think they should be able to fight, but I think that um, that... The, as yeah, a fan, I would rather much them more fight. Than circumcision. Like, 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 I want to see them fight. I want it to be part of the game, mm -hmm. but I don't think they should. I think it's ridiculous. No, it it is one hundred percent necessary. It's that only because they don't enforce the rules with any kind of teeth when people make uh, hits that could be career changing. Like you should just be. Oh, you cost him his career. Guess you lose yours too. Like you can't throw him out of the fucking no. league. A accidental hits. Accidental hits. Oh yeah, let's that, do battle instead. Come on, everybody. This is no. It's it is. Uh, th this is something that like Kyle may not know. It and Woody would. You are much safer in a fist fight on ice than you are getting blindsided by a professional athlete going twenty eight miles an hour. Like it's it's not close. That's oh, why that's they have it as a pressure release because thing I didn't argue against any of that. Yeah. That has nothing to do with what we're talking about. <laughs> well, you were talking about not calling dirty hits intensely enough, and I'm saying that hits are so fast that. Often grievous injuries occur not out of maliciousness. The kind of hits that would normally draw a fight, those hits need to be punished severely enough that you don't want to do that anymore. They are. So they they are punished by the penalty book. You know, they go to the box. Not severely but, enough, though, obviously, because we're willing to do it. No, because then what you're trying to avoid is another player taking a run at your player, because that's mm -hmm. the natural thing, is they will take a run at you, and it is safer for everyone to have a fist fight People very rarely in the NHL oh, actually wait. get injured fighting. It's much safer to have it be an understood thing between the teams that they send out a bruiser who fights the guy who did the, the malfeasance. And then after that, it's an understood thing in hockey culture that it's settled. It's done. There's no right, more Taylor, fucking with that guy. I've listened to everything you've said, and, I, mm -hmm. and I've absorbed it, and I don't disagree. But I feel like you didn't counter Kyle's point, which was that people wouldn't have to fight if say a shoulder to head cost you 16 games, like if that happened, then people would ba wouldn't have to fight. See, the thing, with, the thing with shoulders to the head is it, it's just such a fast sport that when there is a shoulder to the head in a malicious way, they suspend them. And that guy's going to have to fight too, more likely than not, or they'll just kick him right out. Well, the, the thing is, like, is that huge hits that blow someone up, like often aren't, super dirty or intending to hurt someone. And so the response from that from the other team will either be one, we send out a guy to blow up one of their players, slew foot him, fuck up his leg, ruin his career. Or we have our bruiser go out and fight the guy that did this. Nobody's going to get hurt. They'll lose some teeth at most. And think, then the game goes back to a normal pace. What you I don't, if you I don't release that pressure, you get consistently harder and harder hits and people get hurt. Well, I think you touched on another problem then in the league. If there's a situation where there is likely to be a conspiracy where we will slew foot someone to ruin their career, Not then I think we, it, then now I think it's going to be well. If one player says it to another that we should do it, we now have a conspiracy to to cripple a player. So now we need to move beyond league penalties and start rounding hockey teams up and <laughs> throwing them in prison. Clearly, <laughs> <laughs> like, like, so like, just, I'm, I'm not even kidding. Like, 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 are you telling me they're going to? Oh, we're going to. Yeah, I heard the coach say he was going to cripple him. Well, good for you, son. You're part of the new NHL <laughs> initiative. God get, damn it, our team's been terrible since they threw our goalie in jail. Yeah, <laughs> fucking lock that cocksucker up. If you're going to cripple somebody up in baseball, the if there's been a, a kerfuffle, there's there's high tensions, the, the ump will come out and he's like, warning to you, warning to you. First hint of any horse shit, you're out of the game. And yeah, but like it. tensions don't get high in baseball compared to like a physical sport where you're you're hitting people and fighting and you're up in their face. Oh, wait a minute. Are you, I don't know if that's true. They, they have bench clearing Dude. brawls in baseball. Yeah, show me one bench clearing brawl where more than three punches was thrown. It is a bunch of why I ought to bitching. It's a bunch of why I ought to bitching where they pretend they're going to hold a bat threateningly. Pussies. 
Puss. All right, well, I can't win like, arguments if my position's just wrong. Dude, have you seen those crazy NBA brawls where they like chest bump for two seconds and then the announcers act like it's a thing? Whoa. Well, it's what, not about NBA the fighting in baseball. And that's not what their lack of talent. Yeah, These are NBA, you know, you know where NBA, throw punches. Yeah. NBA players have to go into the stands to fuck someone up. They have to find a five foot eleven overweight goober to, to beat the shit out of. But when they do, it's a lopsided victory. Yeah. So it, in baseball, sure. it's not that you're you're not afraid of getting in a fight. It's it's they're going to throw at your head with a ninety mile per hour fastball. That's what the warnings about, and that's what the instigations are always around. Mm -hmm. be, they hit your guy, and now you have to hit their guy, and a whole you can't allow that to just keep going back and forth because then we're all unconscious, or you know, we killed fucking <laughs> they should have Rafael Ramirez in baseball. They should have real fights. Those guys are. I so like it when uncoordinated. Every whenever they throw a punch, moon, it's bad. weird baseball shit happens. I I saw one. This is a long time ago, but basically, a player A was traded from the other team to this one. So now he's friends with his ex teammates. He likes them, mm -hmm. and they ask him to go out and get revenge on his ex teammates. It is a fucking pillow fight. He's throwing it at the other team at like thirty six miles an hour. I, it this happened, and I loved it. It was uh, I love baseball <laughs> stories. I wish uh, what's his name John Boy was around at the time. Um, yeah, I uh, yeah. yeah I, I like or that one channel highlights. you told me about. Kyle, baseball isn't real. Yeah, that's where it has like a, it goes through a bunch of like old baseball tale, and I don't give a fuck about baseball, but it's like just cool old sports lore, basically. Yes, they make baseball watch, interesting, which is hard. I watched <laughs> a, a, a video of Babe Ruth teaching hitting the other day that I had never seen before and didn't know existed. He's that is like audio and video. He's like, I'm gonna tell you, there's a couple schools are hitting, and he's got this bat, and he's like, some fellas grab it down here, all the way at the bottom. And the, some guy throws the ball, and he knocks the absolute shit out of it. Pow! And then some folks, they like to choke up on it. Do these little slap hits. And I'm thinking, like, yeah, that's what Ty Cobb did. And he goes, slap! And, like, he, you hit that, and it just puts on a little hitting clinic. And I'm like, why have I never seen Babe Ruth teaching hitting? Why? That's really cool. Dude, <laughs> I, did, so I cool. saw this, uh, this baseball graphic that was, like, in the past couple of days. It was, like, the furthest home runs ever hit. Oh. And it was, like... Some random guy, Babe Ruth and all that, and some guy commented, he's like, damn, it's wild that all these bombs stopped happening the second we were able to accurately measure home runs. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> it's like, yeah, like you do have to be a retard to think some goober in you know, 1921 hit it 700 feet. Oh, it's not. It's 500 foot plus ones. Like, like 585 that, was the record, which is yeah, like babe, babe Ruth might have a five. It's a five. 585 something. was claimed. And I think 590 was like some other guy. But it's like all yeah. the things were like the most recent was 1951 or some shit. And there's no way that Mark McGuire and Barry Bonds. Those are just the two that I know. Yeah. Like weren't hitting dingers at a more intense. Like I get Babe Ruth was an all timer. If you take Mark McGuire and put him back in Babe Ruth's time, they're not even letting him play baseball. They're studying him to try and get ready for wars. <laughs> like, that's, that's, that's what's going to happen. They're going to be like, four Captain arms America. this time. <laughs> in the future, they take calves off of muscular men and put them on the elbows of other men. <laughs> put the hand back on. He's, that guy was fucking shredded. I remember thinking that if I ate enough meat, I could be as strong as, as Mark McGuire. And what shocked me, so when Mark McGuire was a big deal, I was into baseball cards, and... Uh, the difference between his rookie card and his like 70 home run yeah. physique was outrageous. Barry Barely Bonds. the same person. Barry Bonds Barry was Bonds. a speedster. Barry Bonds had, I don't know, 25 stolen bases his first year or two. Like he was a fast guy. He turned into an armored rhinoceros man. Like, his skull was, grew so much. He, his skull <laughs> grew. He got me, a meteor head. A meteor <laughs> head. He he went up there and looked huge. I remember 19, I think it was 90, was it 97, 98 when they had the home run race? I remember it very yeah, well. Every day watching the news and look, they both hit another one. Or it's like, fuck, he hit, mm -hmm. he hit three today. Yeah. And it's like it was it was a crazy year. That was really my dad's fun. got the the paper for 72 from uh from McGuire. It was kind of neat. I do remember, like, I, I was a kid, but I remember even at the time being like, Jesus I wonder Christ. if he is on steroids. And then you see a picture of, like, it's laughable to think that Barry Bonds and Mark McGuire weren't on roids back in the But I guess yeah. people just didn't have the, the eyes for it. It wasn't as common.
the cream, like the clear. No, no, no. I, maybe you were rampant young because I, I was young. Yeah. Every, like in my universe, everyone knew McGuire was on steroids. It was just oh, okay. It was a common. You, you know what it is? It's that I'm from St. Louis, and so. There was a bunch of fucking like we don't know <laughs> if, he's, <laughs> if he's roided up. It's like that guy has dozens of veins visible on his forearm. Yeah, I'm a bra- I'm from Atlanta. Hank Aaron had the record. Okay, we knew about the steroids. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, you, you guys didn't <laughs> look like at Mark that. McGuire? Look at that. That's no, really Mark McGuire what? doesn't. Hank Aaron had Mark the record McGuire. before. Hank Aaron set that record fucking seventy. Oh, was he on the Braves? Something. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's where the record used to be. Who has the record now? Barry Bonds? Barry Bonds. Do they he asterisk 72 Barry Bonds? fucking home uh, runs. <laughs> do they asterisk Barry Bonds and Mark McGuire? I don't or know no? if they asterisk anyone. I don't re- I don't remember them doing They shouldn't. It. They shouldn't. What do Probably you think, not. John? Do you think that steroids should be allowed in professional sports? People already do it. Yeah. They're just good at hiding it. I say let's see the most roided up hormonal monsters fight each other that's Have what we're you seen here the for. runner we're at the end there, of an empire that's what we do right there dude i saw <laughs> don't, I saw don't those uh don't those uh dudes that transition into female usually take hormone therapy oh i mean yes. the females that but transition into the... dudes or vice versa yes like i don't know who's yeah. tougher is a guy who's on hormone suppressants tougher or a girl who's on steroids tougher i i kind of misgendered both of them but work with me yeah, no, it would, it would depend what you went through. Trans men or uh, trans women. Let's have the puberty, fight yeah. to the death. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. if you go through puberty as a man, you get the man shoulders, the man hands, like the better leverage. Sure, and but then you get on T suppressants, you lose your like strength and muscle and ability to hold that to some extent. You'll be all right. Or yeah. the alternative is a chick on well, a, a newly formed man on T who's jacked and grows a beard. Oh, he's jacked. I'd have to well, see pictures. He's on T. Mm. Well, I mean, that doesn't it doesn't grow muscles. It's not, you know, it's, well, it's, it's more like they're trying to grow muscles. Well, what are your guys' fighting. thoughts oh. on all those females, you know, in the not well, trans men as a female and the athletes and always kicking the females ass? Do you think do you think that's fail? Yeah, so no, trans women competing against not. traditional women. Um obviously not it's not fair. fair. Yeah, not it's not fair. fair. No. Of not course, it's fair not fair. <laughs> you have to be a real. I like the ones who aren't even on like hormone suppressants. Like they're just they just flat out identified as girls. <laughs> but there's like, an easy solution, guys. I, I, I've been saying all along: abolish all women's and men's sports. We have one league now for every sport. Dude, but that just abolishes all non male sports. <laughs> <laughs> just, that's not fair. Women should be able to play sports if they want. May the best person win. <laughs> and, and we're, we're going to see. Look, Gosh. I guarantee you next year, the Yankees, half a dozen women on there, Taylor. Tell me they won't. They absolutely won't. You're right. You know right. what? I yes. like just <laughs> a single fucking woman on there the Yankees. There won't Yankee. be a single woman because they'll Not be like, one. you are terrible at pitching. Get what if that was the here. league rules? That's how they spice the game up. Every team must have three women starters. <laughs> oh, you know what? You know, in the NHL, I would be mm-hmm. down for if they're like, all right, all goalies have to be women now. Oh. <sighs> Dude, the the scores of NHL games are now fifteen to eleven. Like it's <laughs> like huge scores. That'd be big. All right. Well, hang on. Nah, what's just the, get a big. I don't know anything about women's hockey. Just I know it exists. <laughs> How? What's the speed difference on a slap shot from a man versus a woman? In Night and day. <laughs> it's uh, women it's don't tend huge. to take like as players. many slap shots because so like Zdeno Chara could shoot at one hundred and thirteen miles an hour. Okay, so uh, let's say a let's say the so, average man's doing 105. Yeah, like an average NHLer can can shoot it very fast. There's no way a woman can even approach that. Like if a woman really? could take a slapper that hit mid 80s, I'd be pretty maybe mid 80s. Maybe is there a case? usually women play with higher flex sticks that are more conducive to wrist shots than slap shots, and so they don't take as many slap shots. Could they? Is there a? Would there be a case for a woman being more Gretzky like, like, like in and out, bobbing and weaving, more, more, uh, more quick on her feet? No, it would. Uh, she'd just be too slow. the The NHL, the male players, would be too fast for her to get away, and they'd close the distance. And also, uh, there's not really hitting in. Uh, I have a question for you guys. Yeah. Did, did you guys see that clip Sucks. of the? Uh, the one chick on the MMA after she kicked that person's ass, she showed those tits to everyone. What do you think yeah. would have happened if there was a dude showing his dick? He'd go to jail. 
Yeah. That's why I was and it too. is different. I think everyone can agree that, you know, tits are a lot more light and there's more levity in everyone does showing agree. tits it's, than a guy pulling his cock out. Well, I'm not sure how many states it is, but I think it's the vast majority of states. It's perfectly legal for women to be topless in public. Yeah, I think I'm so. Almost as, it, positive. as it should be. Freedom. Um, so, so it's a completely different thing. And, and you know, it's a, a, a titty is a completely different thing than a dick. Show my kids I, I've now seen want. the girl showing her boobs to the crowd, and I approve. Her yeah, only I'm favorite. Fans. <laughs> she's got a she's she's an OnlyFans model. That was like some foxy boxing thing, I think. Yeah, uh -huh. good for her, and she won her fight. So Daniela solid. Hemsley. Yeah, Shout out Daniela. Cool. Keep fighting. Keep winning. Okay. True ass. Facts. The Titan. Facts. Keep flashing. Yeah. Most importantly. <laughs> <laughs> she go. doesn't really need to fight as far as I'm concerned. Just keep showing the jugs. <laughs> She's been banned from YouTube boxing. Was she the one that made out with her opponent? I, I saw that the other day. Like one of the chicks was going to kiss the other one to make her uncomfortable. And the other chick was like, yeah, let's fucking make out. Like grabbed her. It's, it's great. What, what What is the Cueto class? People keep telling me about it, but I haven't looked into it. Hmm? He asked what is creator like, clash? Yeah, is that like YouTube titles or what do they do? There's a couple YouTube boxing promotions, and that's one of them. I forget who owns or runs Creator Clash, but um, yeah, YouTubers fight each other. Apparently, they really get paid. They oh, iDubs owns Creator Clash. Thanks, Zach. And uh, okay. yeah, they go yeah. through with it. They put on a fight. It's a good show. Oh, Woody, I was talking to you a little bit about real MMA during PKN this week. I think women's mixed martial arts is kind of done in the UFC for a while, or at least it has taken this huge step backwards because we did have. Not too long ago, obviously Ronda was the queen, and but that she bled a little bit of her pop into Amanda Nunez, so that mm -hmm. Amanda Nunez carried that flag onward a little bit, and obviously not the same way. But then you had you had Rose and mm -hmm. you had Shevchenko. You had these three pretty good on the mic ladies champions, and Nunez to a lesser extent, but she's got her own audience. Now all mm -hmm. of them are essentially out of the game. I, I haven't seen Shev Shevchenko's training. I think Rose to come has back. a fight coming. Rose, I, I don't know about that. I, okay. I believe that she said it or that you heard it. Yeah, yeah. We'll yeah. see. I, last time, last thing I heard from Rose was she lost a jits tournament or something or a grappling tournament to to a kid. I remember that. Um, was it a boy or a girl? It was a girl. Um, oh, yikes! But uh, but but yeah, I I, I don't know. I just don't care. I, I think they're gonna kill the one forty five pound. Uh, weight class because there's no. I reason think I heard Dana do. say that, so you're probably right. I think they should kill 135 too. Really, Rocky. I like the big girls. I mean, who? It's just Holly Holm. It's just Holly Holm. Is that it? It used to and be the real class. The out last week. That's where Ronda fought. Yeah. What I mean, do you guys? Where, uh, what do you guys think about Foggy Fresh? I don't know who that is. Who's this? No. Oh Foggy wait, Fresh. Fr uh, Froggy Fresh. He's the guy. Oh. That was really he was he got kicked out of iDubs boxing thing because he trained with Sam Hyde. Is that right? I think yeah. so. Yeah. He gave a hard time to iDubs' girlfriend, wife person. Hmm. I think yeah, so. I, I don't really know what I don't follow the iDubs stuff at all. I don't really know much about him. I know that apparently his boxing event lost a bunch of money. Oh, it did? I think yeah, yeah I think he lost like two hundred thousand or something like that in the negative. Yeah, oh that's, yikes! It's pretty fucking awful. I thought these things were swimming in cash. Yeah, he should have spent less time uh, trying to fight. Isn't Sam that Hyde. the one that had wings? No, no, no. Th this is uh, that's a different one. the The Keemstar one did the wings. Oh, you're the, right. The, you're right. The you're right. iDubs one was the one that the only thing I know about the iDubs one was like, and it's because I'm a Sam Hyde fan. Was like him just being like, no, he, he can't, he, he can't come, and you can't associate with him. You can't be affiliated with him at all. Because of uh, 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 the sponsors are going to pull out if you do. It's like, no, that's retarded. Mm -hmm. That's not true. You think the sponsors are going to pull out of your event because a guy trained for three days in a way that wasn't even publicized until you made a big to do about it? Really? Mm. You think you think fucking Blue Apron's going to give a shit? Like, no, like <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's fucking ridiculous. So yeah, I, I would imagine he's probably done with his whole fighting thing now. If they lost a quarter million, right? If you that's would think true, so. maybe I, I I haven't known many of the fighters for a while. Like obviously, I know Jake Paul and Logan Paul at the top and stuff, and I knew Wings, mm -hmm. but a lot of times I'm like, I don't know either of these YouTubers. They're not yeah the proper level of star. I guess proper level of star is more expensive. 
I saw one way that like iDubs event got hated on is I think maybe I might be wrong, but I believe that the froggy fresh guy was supposed to fight this other guy named Chris Ray gun. Who's also like, I guess they're both shorter guys. And because the froggy guy got kicked out, I dubs and their organization had Chris Ray gun. Who's like five, four, a shorter guy fight some dude, like, seven eight inches taller than him and like 50 pounds heavier and i saw the clip where like this guy this poor dude who agreed to the fight with someone else is getting his shit rocked by someone who he has no business mm. fighting it's totally unfair to him to put him in the ring with this guy and it's i saw people shitting on him like oh yeah really like this this is a better uh, this is a better look than well, just letting yeah, this guy fight just and, putting a five foot four guy out there against a five foot eleven guy and like and let like, alone on. foggy fresh i think he trained for over six months Doing this too, he could. Man, I, Sam I, Hardy, I actually I don't, he put I don't a lot know of anything about Froggy Fresh. I don't know what kind too. of content he does or anything. But I gotta be honest, yeah. uh, I don't even like watching professionals box. So I, I've just never understood the big. It's only interesting if it's someone you actually know, like Wings, to me. Yeah, or like, Harley. If, I will watch any of you guys fight. Like I watch Harley fight people I know in fucking real life. But the idea of showing up to watch. A guy who should be somewhere playing Call of Duty get into the hmm. ring and do combat with a guy who should be somewhere playing Halo or something. <laughs> That's not my bag, you know. I, it's just not my idea. Of fun. No, I, I want to go watch motors two professional are athletes because I'm with Kyle a hundred percent. Every nearly every time I watch a boxing fight, I'm disappointed, even if it ends in a knockout. It just seemed like eight rounds of patty cakes and undamaging punches that I know are accumulating. Until there's finally a finish. It's boring. It's always boring. Yet somehow, when the next fight rolls along, I forget that and they get me hyped. Yeah, I've stopped. No, like, I, I Nate, Nate Diaz is about to fight uh, the Paul brother. Um, I'm not Jake, watching that shit. It's going to be fucking stupid. I don't, I don't fucking care. Nate's going to get smoked. Wait, the uh, professional that, fighter is going to... Oh, it's boxing. Okay, never mind. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, he's, he's Jake retired, Paul's a pro fighter, too. He's like... Take Jake Paul's YouTube success away, right? Just pretend he was never famous. But this guy with dynamite in his hands knocks out the former 170-pound UFC champion twice. And you're like, oh, shit, I guess this guy's a good fighter, right? And yeah, he beat I, Ben Askren. He beat um, – Did he fight Tyrone. Anderson Silva? Tyron Woodley is the, is the one he is, is one Woodley knocked the fuck out. But it's not Tyrone. Fight. Who is it? It's Tyrone. Ty run okay um so woodley twice i think he beat silva right anderson silva yeah yeah dude you'd be impressed with this guy if he'd never no, been on I do YouTube. Agree. jake paul is pretty impressive like it, fuck like you up. said if you took away his youtube frame and everything else he, he trained for like a few years and extremely hard at it like you mm -hmm. can't just become a fighter out of nowhere one day you gotta train for that yeah, yeah, I've got to comment on it. Like, I am, you are cracking me up with that tiny little mason jar you're drinking water out of four ounces at a time. <laughs> 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 you got to jug the size of a, a UFC fighter's torso and you're filling up a three ounce cup. Because you're, you're very measured with your water. I'm, look at me over here, just willy nilly drinking water like it's free. Like, <laughs> and you're. <laughs> That's you're, his year's supply, with Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> when you're doing your water fasts for like three days, like personally, if I go like six hours without any liquid, I notice it intensely. Like because I'm drinking over a gallon a day of water usually. How how long? You said you've done three days. Do you do that regularly? Yeah. So me personally, on a regular day. I've actually drank a lot more water than I usually do just because the room I'm in has no windows and no AC. So it's like super hot. Oh yeah. That's the only reason why I'm drinking water right now. It's like a sauna. Like I'm pouring down sweat right now. <laughs> yeah, you're wearing a suit jacket. <laughs> yeah. But usually I maybe drink one cup of water a day. Why is the room so even. hot? What? Why is the room so hot? Oh, this is my garage. You're in your garage? Oh. Okay. Yeah. That begs the question, why are you not inside? Yeah. Uh so the reason why I'm not inside <laughs> the reason why I'm yeah. not inside is these walls are a lot more soundproof than every other oh, room. Okay. 
So I would bother because there's lots of kids outside my house, but there's like a park and there's like a busy street. So I rather not people hear someone stealing someone's shit or like hearing a kid scream mm-hmm. in the background. So yeah. if you were inside, you'd hear the outside more than your garage? Probably, yeah. Okay. Huh. So not what, what I would have expected. Who who was it that I guess gave you the idea that like to go on the water cleanses? Oh no, I just do it sometimes. Like I don't do it on purpose. It's just like I forget to drink water. My yeah. theory is that because he gets his water fucking in the wilderness from a spring, <laughs> he rations it. It's very <laughs> difficult. Simple as that. Yeah. Taylor, if you want wanted to, go to come miles. up the faucet, you wouldn't just drink it willy nilly either. <laughs> yeah, if I had to that's, go to that's a, actually a two true. Yeah. Spigot. <laughs> yeah, I mean there was there was that time on on fish tank I recall where you had not drank anything but coffee for like four straight days and you were like dry heaving trying to fall asleep because you were so dehydrated that I think Sam, I think Jet had to come up and be like, please drink some water. John, is is that what happened? Uh, Basically, because I'm not going to lie, I didn't like the bottle water crap they had or the tap water. Um. Mm -hmm. The bottled water, I figure, the at water least with below coffee, your standards. I figure at least with coffee, it steams, and then it gets filtered through a coffee filter. So I figure that's a little bit better. Yeah. So you you don't even like the bottled water. Uh uh-uh. uh. No. Because it's in uh, plastic. Because of the plastic, maybe? which lowers your tea. Yeah, and usually if I drink bottled water, it makes my mouth super dry. So when so the first time <laughs> I went on drinking only spring water for a year. Mm-hmm. And I went back, I beat I was gone some of like a week without my spring water. So I drank some bottled water from the store. That shit tastes so fucking nasty. When I drink Are bottled you, uh, water, when I drink bottled water, it makes my mouth super wet. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> are you are you a water brand snob? Like are you like ah uh, Dasani? No. But like Evian you'll drink. Or that's that shit in the I bet you drink the shit in the glass bottles. Voss. Right. Uh, uh, why would I buy that if I could just use that money in gas to go collect spring water? Smart. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Duh. Yeah. Like I do. Where are you collecting the the spring water? Is it really just a spigot, like in the ground that you're pumping? No, it, it comes straight out of the ground. Like there's no spigot. It comes out of a hole out of the ground. Oh, okay. So, like, you're just holding the jug right yeah. out. How, how far away is this from you that you have to it's go? It's about to 10, 15 minutes drive. And then from the park lot, at the spot I go is Terminal Falls. And then from the park lot, it's like a five minute hike. Hike in. They actually built a fence to prevent me from collecting my spring water, which I've been doing it for so long. People have been complaining, I guess. So now I have to go under what, the what, fence. What have they? The fence. So, so now you have to break in to get the spring water because you got some... Well, I'm not breaking in. It's public property. They just made the fence to make it look nicer. And they okay. cut down a whole bunch of trees to try to prevent me from going where I go. But It's not going to work. It's public property. What it's they not going to stop. Yeah. No. That's, so a 15-minute drive and a five-minute hike, get the water. How often are you going back? It's like every day? Every other day? About once a week. If if I, I fill my spring water a lot. I actually so usually I, I bring it like ten gallons usually to my father because my father really likes the spring water. He drinks a lot more water than I do. Mm-hmm. Um it's actually my mother's birthday today, so happy birthday, mom. Oh, um, shout out to your mom. Yeah, shout out to my mom. Top J mom, John's happy mom. Birthday. <laughs> but um so I usually collect multiple containers for a few different people because it, you know, there's some people that's not physically able to go out and do that every day. So mm-hmm. I usually collect it for them, and they really appreciate it. You collect oh, water nice for cripples? You. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is what this is what actual good people do. <laughs> this is he collects water for cripples. <laughs> Dude, I, there's no way. This morning, this anyone. morning, I showed uh, one of my colleagues where I go to collect spring water, and she was able to collect some. She was pretty psyched about it. 
<laughs> I went up, on dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's killing me. The the pinky up cup. <laughs> I can't remember uh, where we were hiking, but we were up on some mountain and the water flowed straight out of the rock at like chest level. And they that's had... what Top J is talking about. That's what he collects from. Oh, I thought it was maybe a spring like bubbling out of the ground. I've seen that too. Like on my dad's property, there's a spring that just water actually trick comes straight out of the ground. Now there's a creek. The creek goes down there, joins the other creek, and that's the only. And I'm sure that water is pure as fuck because it's just like bubbling out of the sand, you know? Yeah. But I drank that water out that poured out of the mountain. And that was really like it was even cold. It was great. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. When you can do that and like actually drink from a stream or like that, because I've done that too, like that shit that's like coming out. I did it in Colorado where it's like a clean stream coming out of the rock. It it genuinely is like be- better water. It's like this is like, and maybe it's like part of like being out in nature and like feeling it's yeah. cool. Where it's like, oh, like I'm just like grabbing water from a spring. It's so refreshing, and you're also being active and it's hot. So of course it's that's got to be part of it. Be you know, I got some three dollar yeah. a can water downstairs and it probably would taste better if you did a blind taste would it though it. because it probably doesn't have the minerals because so lots of it times does. they add the minerals to the water but the minerals that they add you cannot just body cannot absorb it but it's like water? natural green water the minerals you can't absorb what's that pretentious ass water i can't Perrier, san pellegrino nah the new shit in cans um bubbly La- water La- laqua uh, liquid anyway. death Liquid death, yeah. Do they add it to that, or does it? Do they get it from some for, sort of fucking fancy aquifer? I don't know where that water is coming from, but that's some tasty water. I've got my mini fridge downstairs stacked that up. Perrier and San Pellegrino, that like sparkling mineral water. That shit's oh, good. not sparkling. Fuck. I'm that. not gonna no. lie. I do like liquid death. Sometimes I do drink that every once in a while. I saw I someone like the... say that sparkling water tastes like static. Dude, sparkling uh, carbonation yeah, is great. exactly right. I don't know Fuck how you can just shit. like you ever drink it water. accidentally. I'll spit it out in your fancy face. You sub, <laughs> you serve me bubbly without my permission. Right Have you ever been to like a nice floor. Italian place where they like bring mm-hmm. you that big glass jug of the sparkling water? I I ask for flat. You probably water go for still in every scenario. Mm-hmm. Yes, I want I want flat every scenario. I never want sparkling ever, ever, never, ever. It's so stupid and awful. <laughs> Every now and then, uh, Crazy, a, a fast better. food restaurant will fuck up their mix. They're like out of the syrup that makes Diet Coke, Diet Coke, and not club soda that's brown. And you'll get that hit of just fucking club soda, and it's disgusting. Any movie when someone orders a club soda, I'd rather get. I'd rather you spit in my mouth. I'd rather you spit in my mouth and serve me a club soda that I have to finish. At Kyle least is we'll right about point. everything. He's club completely soda. on target with this. You're crazy. You're both crazy. Really? Like sparkling water is delicious, especially if it's got, like a little lemon flavor. A refined <laughs> palate you have. Well, I don't think it's because I'm a fancy boy. I think it's just the, the carbonation. I know, but great. I, but but I but I, I kind of posed it that way and made you defend that point. Now you're framing <laughs> it. I'm a and then I'm a and then I'm a fancy pants. <laughs> He's <laughs> like, yeah, seen, out see, of now you got to pivot Missourian. over to that. You've lost. The, you've lost. <laughs> now I've lost the plot. Now I'm defending being a fancy pants. <laughs> yeah. about how good the I don't know. Is, you're not a. You're not really a common man. You've got these yeah. highfalutin ideas up there Fucking in fancy elite. Missouri. <laughs> Missouri up there in the fanciest Dude. state. <laughs> I read. Up, I read up about your fancy state this uh, hmm. this week, and I learned a All few good things. things. Unless it's obviously Anheuser Anheuser Busch, obviously. Uh, right there in town. That's that's where they yeah, they that's do not their good business. For us, this whole Bud Light thing. Well, see, the thing is that it seems like lo- the lobbying that they've been doing since I don't know what is Bud the eighteen hundreds. Yeah, <laughs> y'all have the weakest alcohol laws in the world. Maybe we like do, like yeah. even in Korea, they're like, oh, I don't know about the, that one. <laughs> you guys, you can have an open container as a passenger in a moving vehicle. Yes, you know how you insane can. that is to me, dude. I, if you yeah, have a yeah. if you have a bottle of wine that you went on a picnic and had, and it's been hot as fuck in the back seat of your car for six months, and they pull you over in Georgia, you are going to fucking jail, <laughs> dude. <laughs> oh, dude, no road sodas. If you're a passenger, one hundred percent legal in Missouri. If you're sitting Wild. in the passenger seat, you can just drink. I don't really know anybody who does that, but like you can if you're just riding around with someone. Your open container laws, apparently, there just aren't any. You can just drink openly anywhere in public, yeah. essentially. Yeah, yeah well, down here, they... Super not strict laws about that. Oh, they only... We have drive-through liquor and fireworks stores. 
I've seen those. They're glorious. Kentucky has them as well. I, yeah. it, um, I think I think they had liquor, fireworks, and guns at one. Yeah, of them. yeah, they have ammo there too. It's like, bro, let's park if we're getting a firearm. Like, we've got time. <laughs> Dude, Missouri is the land of freedom. We have the best gun laws. We have the best, like, freest uh, weed laws. We're not like those fucking pussies in Illinois that See, legalized weed that in a way that's like not even good. Yeah, and we even have like good weed. Because Anheuser, you would think, would fight it to the point, but it would just never they make did. it through the legislature. <laughs> Apparently they did, yeah. but Wild it, that they couldn't keep it down. Mm, yeah, because they're a they, huge employer here, and I imagine they're going to be doing a lot of layoffs before too long. I, Do they I have uh, legal mushrooms, though, too? Uh, no, no, I don't think we have. I think, is it Oregon, maybe, that yeah. has all the drugs legal? But I don't know anyone yeah, else that does. They, they just passed that like a year ago. I think, well, people could do meth and cocaine. So like now downtown, if you go downtown and Bend, you'd be seeing these dudes outside these restaurants just fucking snorting cocaine. You'd be like, what the fuck? Oh, do you live in Oregon? Yeah, Bend in Central oh, okay. Oregon. But cocaine's no, not legal, sure. right? Yeah. Well, it no. is to X amount. We're like, this is what would happen. If you get a little bit over, they fine you eighty dollars or something like that. Huh. Pretty nice that so have you, you uh, got yourself a little little miniature beaker, it, it appears. Like, <laughs> what? What's weird? Yeah, this is like a, what is it, the Stein for ants? Whoa, slow down, Woody. <laughs> That's two days of water you're looking at right there, bud. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. Guzzling Woody, selfish Woody. <laughs> just in this whole, a water hoarder. <laughs> I got this water from West Virginia. It's a big yeah. effort. I'm not gonna just guzzle it. Have you a, uh, like a motorcycle with a <laughs> with an office? Have you tank seen people to his back? Have you seen people in Oregon who are on Trank? People don't know Trank is a new drug people are doing. They're combining fentanyl with um animal tranquilizers. What and, the uh, fuck? And the people and, and so what you'll see, the the way you'll know that someone is on Trank, apparently, according to the dead. internet videos that I've seen, they're standing flat footed. But they are bent at the waist all the way oh, down. Oh, yo, that's, and like, that's heroin. That, and like that's heroin. Hanging. That's heroin. That's everyone in I, Portland. I'm well, telling I, you. I, I've Frank. seen what Kyle saw, and and I also have seen that being a tranquilizer fentanyl combo. Yeah. Um, and I, and the people stand weird. They're just. He says bent at the waist, but I, I see it as more like curled in the yeah. spine. Like you know, if you were to touch your toes, mm-hmm. but you're bad at it. Exactly. That's, yeah, that, yeah, that's oh. heroin. Those people are on heroin. Yeah, that's just heroin addicts in Portland. Are you denying? But either way, it could, it could be that too. Because I think <laughs> yes. it comes down. They were You're, standing though, not sitting. But it's in heroin. And these are look at these. Look friends. at these two. Right. Look at these two religious folks praying. Get up off your feet, you trank lazies. But hold up. Tie your shoes. On all three drugs. On all three of them, like a depressor. On all three of them, like a downer. Yeah, yeah. Heroin's well, a I huge mean, animal downer. tranquilizers. Usually do. Usually do put you yeah. down. Look at that! Didn't even put the didn't even put the syringe down, man. Yeah, that, uh, those pictures are closer to what I saw before. I saw such a some, horrible some drug. Don't stuff. fuck with heroin, Jesus! Right, but bent over with two hands down, right? Like just I saw like sidewalks full of them, like a dozen people yeah. like that, and and I mean like hanging like like they're puppets, and and, and completely bent over their hair, like, like they're just there's I saw a lot of crazy people, and it was Philly. It was Philly, I think, where I where I saw it. Every so time sweet. I see some post apocalyptic shit, it's Philly. <laughs> Philly's awesome. I agree. Yeah, I see Portland. Portland's just as bad. I'm sure. Um, yeah, the only thing I've ever, the worst I've ever seen in real life was uh, walking back to our hotel from the, I don't know what they call it, the pier or the wharf in Seattle. I don't know whatever they call it, but I, I saw oh, so yeah, yeah. many hobos <laughs> under this covered area, and it was like. It was like in the movies when you uncover the vampire's lair and they're all kind of piled up on top of each other and they <laughs> recoil from the light and they yeah. all move so rapidly that you can't tell what part of each one is part of the other. Yeah. It's like so we were they're like walking. an amorphous entity. It was the honestly, it was the exact night where of uh, the wings 1v1 because me and White Boy were and a bunch of other people walking back from eating crab. And I remember that 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 car's lights illuminating this big coven of them and just be, oh, that's where they can, are. No, just pick can you show that Zach, the video that I linked? It's just people leaning. 
What do you yeah, think? Yeah, it's, it's the pose that I was trying to describe. It's the, uh, yeah, I mean, it's this called, is what I was talking about. Called, I wanted uh, to show people exactly what it looked like, but I was afraid of looking fat, so I hunted down the video <laughs> instead. <laughs> it's oh, dude, I I wouldn't do that position either. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm that. yeah, this is called nodding out on heroin. This is fucking sick. Well, oh, according so you, to the in, in in the video's description, it says exactly what I said, um, and that they are on trank. And then yes, it and Trank, that as I is Trank. a way to get clicks. It's heroin because you can go to any other city huh. that doesn't have a story about Trank, and people do this. It's nodding out. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Well, it- heroin and fentanyl are often uh, oh, yeah. a similar thing. So it could be. Maybe. Yeah. I'd- it's just I when I hear stuff like that, I always assume it's like a bath salts thing where it's like, are we going to talk about fentanyl again, or are we going to get better ratings? Well, what's this thing? Like, you- yeah, I'm with you on the. The bath salts popped into my head too. You don't know. The yeah. thing people always need to remember about bath salts: that man who ate the other man's face in Florida, his blood sober. was clean, sober, sober as a bird. He ate that man's what? face sober, which is the hardest time to eat someone. The hardest. If I'm going to eat someone, I want to be <laughs> fucked up. I want to like, beer at least. <laughs> I want to wake up in the morning and be like, "Why do I feel so full?" And be like, "Oh, I need no. a beer to wash that face down." I need a See, Bud Light. I if, I'm Bud gonna, Light. if I'm gonna swallow some man, I need a. Bud you ever Light eat a beer? Through. Yes. Oh. <laughs> I would hate to eat Taylor's face. Yeah, I wouldn't want to eat my face. I mean, either. Licking mm. that beard out of my. I, is it? Is it like a coarse very that guy. beard? Is it coarse? Oh, it's a very coarse beard. Wait, what? What's that guy from? What's that? Sh- the, you know, you know what I'm talking about. I know that exactly from. Uh, he's do you want, in do you want the, the character's name, the actor's the name. Jeez, he talks like that. He has his entire face eaten. Tristan Tatel, yeah. oh, Jake He's the Paul. pedophile. I would say Jake Paul wins. Yeah. He's on a better diet. He's not limited to Romanian prison macros. <laughs> he doesn't he's, have a speech yeah. impediment. He's, he's not, like he's not pushing forty years old. How old is uh, Andrew Tate? Forty. Oh know. wait, I thought we were talking about Diaz and and Paul. I think he's saying this, Nate. Like, oh, Diaz. To happen. Oh, yeah, okay. Nate Diaz yeah. is thirty-eight. Wow, Kyle, I, he got older when I wasn't looking. Yeah, man. I, I saw a Two clip of past. the. Um, I don't know if it was Nate or Nick Diaz. Like they look so similar, but it was like on the street of Brazil or wherever the fuck they're from, and it was this this dude. Stock. Who clearly was just trying to like fight and antagonize him? I imagine that happens to them all the time. This dude was like throwing real punches at him. Like if he hadn't moved, he would have been Nick Diaz or Nate Diaz would have been hit. And you see like the Diaz brother like back up in that like very responsible like I'm a weapon style. <laughs> and he he kicks he leg kicks the guy in a way that like I would think as a viewer like whatever. And the guy 50%. immediately immediately st- oh if that if 50 and immediately starts limping and Nate, Nate Diaz even like retreated, like turned around and like kind of jogged it up away to make it clear on camera. Like I'm not the guy here. Like I'm trying and <laughs> like, Oh, that's his body. If he, if that he video. just a black he, man, isn't it? Red short. Yes, it is a black guy. They're friends, but, but, but to, to, to oh. completely make your point stick and stay the way it was. I saw him at Mardi Gras choke a random dude, the fuck out and drop him in the street. Like he was trying to attack. He him. attained him like what he did, white boy, not off the ground because he's you know he didn't want to kill him. Like, yeah, it's crazy. It's irresponsible. <laughs> Woody, <laughs> could do it again. I'd do I know it you again. would. I'd watch again. Well, nobody wants to stop you. <laughs> Hands off. Welcome to my boy. It's out. Street. Hey, the way he dropped. <laughs> Today we are doing the thirty-minute nuke. <laughs> and everyone will be like, "Wow, that's so brave, Alex." <laughs> they give him lots of subs because he's fucking retarded now. <laughs> if you had retarded white boy, that would have been shitty. That would have sucked. Yeah. Maybe no did. more dolphin dives for him. Like, like that no. would. Oh, oh, so this, this, this guy was. Gonna... This, this guy was is not him a friend choking this fucker out. Yeah, he dropped him in the street, left him like that. And this is a real guy who was trying to fuck with him, not a friend. Yes, obviously. Okay. this is a random dude on the street. I thought it was Mardi Gras, but it's like it's that kind of environment. It's like bars on both sides of the street kind of thing. God, how how dumb do you have to be to tussle so- with a professional fighter? I'm not sure he knew who he was at all. I mean, he's. I don't, I don't want to fight anyone in public. I mean, you don't want to fight anyone at all, really. I don't want to fight like, anyone like, at all. I'll, I'll, I think I'll I would, probably lose. I would run if I could most of the time. Taylor's like 
how dumb do you have to be to tussle with a professional fighter? And I'm like, yeah, that broken hand took weeks to heal and yeah. <laughs> two surgeries. <laughs> it's yeah, I should have known. <laughs> <laughs> and, he does it for a living. And you did that to yourself, right? Oh no, he did a he did a thing to it. That's right. I remember now. Yeah, he did a um it was a move that typically is just a pain move, so I didn't tap. But they I call it the hand crippler. It's what he should have tapped. Or something. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I should have tapped. That's very shitty to do a pain move to someone who's like way <laughs> lower than you at that level. Like it's that's that's genuinely like a a piss poor etiquette. It shows lack of character. He like if I'm, I, we've used the example yeah. before. If I if I'm literally teaching Kyle how to ice skate and I fucking check him into the boards, I'm a prick. I'm a douchebag. I just destroyed trust I have with him. In if anything, Kyle should be out there thinking this is kind of not my thing, but it's making like. I'm learning something at least. Like we're having a little bit of fun. Can you imagine that betrayal to go, hey, here you are trying something with me that I know you're way better at and you stab me in the back? Like, no, that's very I hear you. I didn't see it through that lens, but I, I could see how you would. I I just. He should see like, it through that lens. You got to like, keep in mind, not Taylor, you, him. this is Danny, right? Or somebody, was it the Asian kid? Uh, this is Joe that broke the hand. Da- his oh, brother well, is yeah. the one that elbowed me in the head, which I. Yeah. That and like. then the Asian kid kicked your legs real good. That, that, I'm yeah, glad yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad I never asked to go to fight yeah. fight camp up there at Joe's house. They would have beat me to death. Jesus Christ, <laughs> dude, that's like oh fucking God. like like, like going that hard on meeting? someone who's trying to learn is pathetic. The Asian guy, his name's Andy, Korean, raging Korean or something. Maybe was his fighting name, but uh, he was the only one that I, well, him and Danny, I thought went too hard on me. Uh, I was just out of my league and yeah, couldn't do anything they wanted to me. Yeah, leg kicks in particular. I mean, I'm glad I he's not it. gay. Right? You'd be and I'd be sodomized. <laughs> Nothing yeah. I could do. Yeah, you couldn't stop him. You you'd, you you couldn't stop him. And and you, some people go bite him. You really want to piss him off? <laughs> yeah, right. He was oh, horny now before. Right? Now he's furious. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It was a little loving we were, at first, uh, and then I bit him. <laughs> we, we were talking a bit about the, the Oregon drug stuff. I wanted to know, John, I think you're like very anti-drug, but have you messed around with any weed, mushrooms, if you're somewhere where it's legal, or just no interest? Uh, so I have tried weed in the past. Um, I don't do it personally because I basically die. So, for example, I tried a gummy one time, like 10 milligrams. I ended up throwing up for like 10 hours straight. Um, Jesus Christ. Yeah, so I, I stay away from it. I think I'm allergic to some of some of the cannabinoids or something like that. So, me personally, I I can't do it or I will get like sick usually. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, some people just don't drive when you know, they get stressed out. The and don't first feel time good. I ever smoked, I got violently ill and swore it off for years. And look at me now, just just really enjoying it. Just look at him now, high as a kite, just really all high. the time, <laughs> all the time. Almost. <laughs> what about you guys? What's your views on that? Sleep. Uh, I, I mean, I I smoke weed. Um, yeah, but I am pretty scared of hard drugs i have no desire to fuck with anything harder than what's the hardest mode? drug that you want to try if it was legal mm. that you would that you would definitely be like uh, yeah all right line me up one of those legality isn't really like if cocaine was legal i don't want to do cocaine i don't want to do mdn may ever again i don't want to like i'm not really? after we had that guest two weeks on ago i have no desire to do lsd or high dose like Dude, mushrooms. he abused it for years what He's crazy so th- this is what i would say too so magic mushrooms they got to be extremely good for you um, so for example, it makes, so it makes new narrow pathways. Okay. And a lot of people, someone I personally know, um, so he's like 60 plus years old and his wife is 60 plus years old too. Okay. Um, and she had dementia and she had a Parkinson where you shake a lot mm-hmm. and he would a micro dose on, on magic mushrooms and Oh, so she wasn't able to do anything. She wasn't able to eat. She wasn't able to get dressed or even have a, a talk, really. And after a few months of micro dosing on magic mushrooms, she was able to talk again. She was able to cook, dress herself, and go to the bathroom by herself, all kinds of things. Um, and I think a big part of that reason why is because 
usually as people get older, nail pathways get shut down, closed off. In magic mushrooms, they make new nail pathways, which can help out a lot. So I think if you use it responsibly, it could be extremely good for you. Obviously, if mm-hmm. someone's using acid or LSD or magic mushrooms in high doses on a regular basis, it's probably not that benefit beneficial for you at that point. It's yeah. probably sounds like an addiction. You're going to break your um, brain. Yeah. But I think if you use it responsibly, it can be <clears throat> helpful for a lot of people. Remember yeah, I think a lot of people, I, I know admit. people who have gotten off of SSRIs because they switched to microdosing mushrooms, which is like, there is no way that's not way better for you than fucking SSRIs. Do you What's remember SSRIs? when the guest wouldn't admit it's the to, selective uh, serotonin reuptake inhibitor? It's stuff like Prozac, Wellbutrin. Oh. We were asking the guest how often he did LSD and he was, he kept talking around the question. He's like, well, you know, as much as much as you need, you know, you gotta yeah. therapeutically dose your, I'm like, how much do you do? How often? And what he wanted it's like every day for the last 30 years or whatever is what he wants to say or what he yeah. can't say. The reason like, like that's why he's fucking weird like that. I, I feel like mm-hmm. he's given LSD a bad name because I had such a, who, who was your guest? Uh, we mm-hmm. had some guy who killed his family on a few weeks ago and um, he, he fell asleep. <laughs> Oh my God, <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude! I, I, after after we got off, my I uh, I was talking to my girlfriend. She said, and, and I'll tell it this way: that way you'll learn who the guest is too. Um, she said, "Who who was guest tonight?" And I was like, "It was this guy who fell asleep at the wheel and had a car accident, and his wife and unborn child were were killed." And she goes, "Oh, so he killed his family?" And I went, "Ooh, shit! I didn't even think of." about it like that until you just phrased it that way i didn't think about it like that until you texted me later that night that yeah that's I was like, oh that's a that's a oh it's way it's, to the think sa- about it. it's one of the yeah, sad, it's very sad oh things. even that it was the 364th day of their um of their relationship or their marriage i can't remember their which their yeah. marriage it was their anim- she died on their anniversary pregnant with their child yeah so then the guy um just did LSD and and mushrooms and other drugs to try to deal with the guilt and everything else from that. But he's he was wacky. He had he had hurt his brain clearly. Yeah. If you if you do too many of those psychedelics, you really do fuck yourself. I, I know the I mentioned him on the show, the fire poi guy that I oh, used yeah. to know back in the day. That dude has really messed with himself through enormous doses of mushrooms and LSD. Uh th- that shit is true. That like if you do a fuck ton of that stuff for a long time, you literally enter your own world where you are incapable of articulating your inner thoughts in a way that's cohesive to anyone but yourself. Yeah, that doesn't like, and you're just like, you're just like relaying subjective experiences in your brain in a way that like, and all of it comes down to like, well, you haven't experienced it, so you won't get it. It's like, well, but if you're an expert in this, you should be able to articulate it in a way that I can garner what you're saying, like as someone who hasn't experienced it. So marijuana incredibly hard. Marijuana yeah. and uh, and opiates and things like that. High the highs like that. Right afterwards, I always feel like, or even alcohol. After the high goes away, I'm like, oh, I want to do that again. I want I want to make it that strong again. Let's see how much it takes. And it's it, mm-hmm. that's a bad thing. But with LSD, uh, the next day I was thinking, oh man, that was wonderful. They say it takes a full month to to get my brain chemistry right so that I'll have the same wonderful experience again. I don't want any diminishing returns from this. And I was fully happy to have to wait however long it took at least a month like i didn't feel like i could be addicted to do you LSD. build a tolerance to With LSD? ketamine something interesting ha- like so they call you susceptible to new ideas right like you're reprogramming your head and you like uh-huh. it's, it's, yeah. yeah depression or whatever it is your mission is and they call it neuroplasticity right which basically is just an open to new ideas and mm-hmm. you take it every week on a schedule and the idea is that yeah, you, know, you just spend the next five weeks or so open to new ideas and it's supposed to be somewhat lasting and and you're impressionable. So just reminded me of that when Kyle said it takes a month to fully reset. Like, oh, okay, yeah, on ketamine, they use that to their advantage. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. I, I loved LSD. So I, I just I hated that he he you know, he was a kook and he was he was kind of the LSD guy. And, and that was that was so wacky, <laughs> that whole thing. Anyway. That was. That was so fucking funny when you just started fighting with that guy and then Woody came back and like didn't know what he came back to and was like, oh, uh, anyway, 
how about how what what kind of monkeys did you see in Costa Rica? <laughs> like, just trying to, trying to, like, trying to get it back scam to like, monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> and then he'd be, and then Woody would like, dude, that was so funny. Like I remember Woody and I so many times tried to like say something to like come to the table with him, where he would be like. <laughs> Like, what do you be like? You know, but these internal thoughts, they're causing me stress and this and that. And he'd be like, it's not real. That's not real. And it's like, yeah, but it's real to Woody. And so it's manifesting in his brain and impacting his behavior. So what's more real than that? It's not real. And it's okay. And it's like, what are we talking about? What are we talking about? Here? You're calling me a liar? I feel like you're calling me a liar right now. I feel like, like you're laughing at me. Kyle, you're just fucking smug, you prick. <laughs> <laughs> there, I feel like so there's funny. something too, we like accepting meaner. what's what's around you and being okay with it and, and at peace. He took that to such an extreme. It was like nothing was ever worth working on. Just have peace yeah. with what is. Yeah. Do you and, remember? And Taylor's like, what if you're 200 pounds overweight? Who's to say what's good and bad? Just be okay with what you are. And it's like, but yeah. there's self improvement's a real thing. You can improve your. Your physical health, your financial health, your you know, like emotional health, or like, there are things you can work on yes. and get better. And he was just okay with accepting whatever you had. Do you remember the part where like he literally in one of his monologues was like, "So maybe you start drinking all the time. It's okay. You'll get through it. Maybe <laughs> you start that. doing cocaine all the time. You'll get through it." And I want to be like, or you die. <laughs> or you die because you overdose on fucking fentanyl because you thought it was cocaine and it wasn't. And you leave behind your family and your friends in a very painful, upsetting thing because you did <laughs> fentanyl on accident. Like what? Like it's okay. What are you? You're, you're crazy. <laughs> yeah. That guy was a kook and I couldn't help but think that we needed to say that he was a kook lest any of our impressionable wonderful <laughs> fandom be drawn to the dark side by him and end up in costa rica getting god oh. knows what done to dude, you dude our I, fans I, saw I, right did you look at the do you look at the comments on that episode mm -mm. our fans saw through it <laughs> did they Good. yes what yes is? they were okay. like this dude will not fucking answer how much lsd he takes or like you know, or shit like <laughs> Great. how on earth how on earth do you go to Costa Rica when your wife is threatening to kill your children? Thanks. Thank God yeah. someone mentioned that. That's absurd. <laughs> I don't read anything. It's glad. It's good to see that everybody was catching on. Because when I when I hear I'm craziness, audience, when I hear craziness, I'm like, you know, I know that everyone, when they take information in, it doesn't get processed the same way. And so mm -hmm. I could imagine some impressionable person nodding along sagely if they're only listening to the audio and they're not seeing me staring daggers into this man's brain what looking for the scars on the side of his head for he banged <laughs> his skull off the asphalt when he killed his family like that guy had had a severe brain trauma i guarantee it and he had abused the strongest psychedelic drugs available to mankind for at least a decade right and 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 then you know I'll let all that go until you insult me. <laughs> I was have, I could have been a lot meaner. I was having some George Costanza, the joke store called moments like like later on that night cooking fajitas or some shit. <laughs> Dude, I did what too, guys... but like then I would think I'm like, oh, that's such a fucking sad story. I'm not gonna make it's fun so of that sad. Guy. Yeah, I mean he did it. Dude, it I'm, it's still a terrible story. We would never do yeah. that if we had our wife or, or kid or any loved one in the car fall asleep at the wheel. We'd pull over. It's so irresponsible. You're telling me what a, a sleepiness came over me. He was probably on something when he fucking wrecked. Like like based on what I know about him, that's probably what fucking happened. I I wonder if they checked his blood alcohol content. What if they checked his blood for drugs? Who knows what he was on when he fell asleep at the wheel? How do you fall asleep? I've, I've drowsy driven by myself. I'll admit it. But I don't do it anymore. Mm. I pull the fuck over, or I get out and get coffee, or throw some water in my face. I wake the fuck up. I don't. Mm. And yeah, he, he did that with his family in the car. And you wouldn't do that, and you wouldn't go to Costa Rica afterward. You couldn't drag me to Costa Rica with that man. He's gonna take you off in the wilderness, and some weird shit's gonna go down because he's gonna Dude, hear all the stuff the, I said about him. The <laughs> early part of that episode where like he was, I like tried to establish he was an expert in anything, and I was like, so you're not just taking novices to costa rica and giving them <laughs> seven grams of mushrooms are you and he's like 
no, that's exactly what I'm doing. And it's yeah. like, oh, okay. He's like, you know, Taylor, that's sometimes, kind of sketchy. You, sometimes mm-hmm. you just you take think the whole sketchy, idea John? put it so well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Let me so- tell you the best part of it and fast forward. So one of his patients, this is a married man with two or three children. His wife says, I have a gun. It's hidden in the house because I'm thinking about killing you and, our, and all of our children. That's what I'm thinking about, honey. She says that to her husband. Her husband goes to our guest and says, yes, I better go with you to Costa Rica for a week and do seven or eight grams of uh, uh, mushrooms. And he does. Yeah. What the fuck? (laughs) Yeah. And he, I remember him spinning it it as like, and (laughs) in the end, the kids didn't get killed. And it's like, that has nothing to do with your trip to Costa Rica. Yeah. Nothing. Not even tangentially related. Not, the wife no. was bluffing. And I was blown. She didn't I, mean I remember it. I remember when we came back around to that story and I kept being like I kept just basically just laying it out like we just yeah, did. You're smug ass. And being being exasperated by it. And him accusing me of calling him a liar and making the story up. And what I should have said is, sir. Why would anyone make that story up about themselves? Do you realize what a loon you look like if everything you just said is true? That's what I should have said. <laughs> but it didn't come to me at the time. What I, what I was said was like, no, I believe you. Although this is the third time you've like acted like I'm calling you a liar. So now I'm starting to not believe you a little bit. Like, like you, you're fucking crying. Bust out protest too much. I think. Well, I mean, you there. have to believe that story because it's so not helpful in proving any point he made. That like, There's if no he motivation. were to, ma- if he was going to make up a story, he would make up one that makes any sense at all. What do you? If know? that is your best story, to like how how helpful. I'm going the other way. I think he's cool. Yeah, <laughs> these guys. Yeah, you, Dude, just you and him should do like a little like mushrooms. <laughs> uh, what if what if Woody and that guy had like their own little like like 30 minute little little once a month podcast where they checked in with each other and Woody told his ketamine stories and that guy told his recent criminal adventures <laughs> and it, is, it is just it's two people entirely talking past each other the entire time there's no conversation strangers in the night <laughs> just, dude ships in the night just right I had a hard time night. getting him to answer anything like i was curious all right yeah. for all his faults he's a subject matter expert on these psychedelics or at least you know from a user perspective not yeah. a doctor perspective and i wanted to hear like what's your approach what's your setting what do you do how do you when you guide novices through this are you on drugs or are you the sober person there who's sort of like just coaching everyone i couldn't get answers or really questions out during that and he dominated the no. airwaves he was in yeah his brain was ruined his brain was ruined <laughs> because of the Adam. drugs look i love drugs but 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 enough is enough at some point god damn dude like you're ruined you can't carry on a conversation anymore you're i think i i wonder what i don't all right sorry he was on drugs during the show so we don't know what sober him is like maybe it's coherent he was but, uh what, oh, didn't you guys said he's been on it for 30 plus years or is that a different guy we Same don't guy. really know. He Same wouldn't really tell yeah, us exactly really know. how so long. So if, if he was off of drugs, he might be even more crazy because he's dependent on it. Yeah, I think Zach's really? correct too. It's it's what I've been thinking as well that he hasn't been sober since his wife died. Uh, oh. I remember him saying he did DMT. Well, I mean that's just our presumption. I think. But right, that's crazy. It's like that's that'd be a long time to to go. It seems likely. He seems to have a never-ending supply of hallucinogens. Maybe, but where? I, I didn't where? consider that. Little... Where does someone have been? Right? Dude, you could have hooked up with him. You could have been your guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that guy was scary. I, um, don't don't fucking ride shotgun with him. If you do go to Costa Rica, don't don't fucking hop in the car with him. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> fucking, I'll hop on the back. Who do you guys think is going to uh, 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 become the next president? Oh, it's, oh, look, I I I have some outstanding bets. I said it was going to be Trump a year or so ago. Uh, I'll stand by them when he. It seems like he'll lose. Not because, Trump man, and not Biden. I don't care. It's going to be polls Gavin Newsom. I don't care Wait, what that's the polls your prediction are or your hope. No, it's my prediction. It's, it's going to dream. Biden is going to be ushered out because he has fucking dementia, and 
then they're going to bring in. And I think the most popular left leaning person nationally is that guy, right? The, the California governor. I, I yeah. So I'm, I'm only halfway with you. I think that Gavin Newsom will be the next president if Biden dies, which he might. Um, Biden can't run again. Like there's, he's just he's too running. senile, too old. He looks, no, they're announcing it, but like he'll drop out and they'll put someone more palatable up. There. That was my guess as well, but, but we'll see. I mean, it's up to him in the end. We'll see no, what he isn't. wants to do. You think it's up oh, to Joe Biden? Let's not get into a conspiracy theory in the middle of this. Let's just talk about what we think is going to happen. <laughs> no, that's not a conspiracy theory. He's a senile old man. He's the president. It's up to him if he wants to run again. He can say, I'm running, God damn it. And they'll have to but, line up behind him. I don't know, he he might win win again. <laughs> they literally they, wouldn't. But they will. They have to. They, they They're about to. Trump I think we're going to see not, it. Not if they find someone better. They'll... I think they're going to pivot to Gavin Newsom because he's way more palatable. He's smarter. He's a he's a, anyone is better on the mic than Joe. Uh, I Biden. think. So, yeah. So here's yeah. my. I bet that Joe Biden runs against runs for president of the United States, and he is the Democratic nominee. Okay. I, I, I bet, bet Joe is, Biden is going to run, and he's going to be a Republican this time around, though. <laughs> just, a real just, wild card pick over there. Because, <laughs> because he, he, switches parties. He, he steals Trump's nomination in the general, and then he switches back to Democrat, and he doesn't have to go up against anyone. They're like, fuck! This is like a magic card, like a reverse combo. An infinite vote glitch. I'm, I'm both the incumbents. Hey, I gotta vote for me. Vote for Biden or Biden. Um, so, so uh, did you see uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene yes. with the pictures of Hunter Biden? Do you in know Congress? what I realized, or who I realized she looks like so much? Is she has a very Ron Perlman skull? You don't want to change off this topic. <laughs> so does though, my I dog. Think... <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. So there was a um, weaponization of the government committee hearing, and Marjorie Taylor Greene, knowing this cameras there, is being the crazy version of her. And they're talking about Hunter Biden's tax evasion, which he's pled guilty to and paid the fines. And somehow she brings up like pretty much revenge porn photos of him with like two whores. Uh, go ahead, Kyle. So here's her justification. I love when they when I don't know if she was a lawyer. I, she, I don't know what she was. Um, her Probably. justification was he wrote off the funds he paid though that hooker with to make that porn that's the money that the did he question. really that's yeah. really I don't know. funny wait wait, wait. what's your source on and that because i don't know marjorie taylor true. green oh marjorie <laughs> taylor green she's that. holding she's holding the poster <laughs> up of him and 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 she has i she first she had text that proved what she was saying i skipped over that i didn't care then she had at least two poster boards each of them had at least two to three scenes of Hunter Biden having sex with this woman, and and she's used black bars to block out his cock and her, and all the faces, and it mm -hmm. is hilarious. Look, she she starts with this, and wait, is that photoshopped flipping. or is that real? That's real, and then she starts mm -hmm. flipping, and dude, it's it's very graphic. You see all of him except for his dick and and his face, and she's on her knees sucking him, and then she's got her hands out like he's like like she's she's like. Presenting well, this is helpful. Well, I, I don't think we should show exactly what she showed, even oh, though you don't she, think we should show a prostitute sucking Hunter Biden's dick on the show. Well, she censored <laughs> it with black bars, Taylor. I'm saying, you know, <laughs> I, I don't think we can show even the black bars, though. It was very revealing. I saw Hunter. So what, what's going on with I don't follow any of this. What's going on with Hunter Biden now? The, the same shit, same thing. So, what's going on is there are people from the IRS that said that they weren't allowed to fully investigate Hunter Biden's taxes and don't know what's true. Don't know how credible they are, whatever, but that's what's happening. Yeah. And usually she, they say that cause it's all above board and you're not going to find anything. <laughs> so, well, they haven't found anything. There's no evidence, but it might be true. We'll see. Uh, maybe there'll be some evidence. Um, but she kind of just dragged in the revenge porn photos to embarrass him and put on mm. a show because she's more of a, theater person than a politician that's kind of politician all, i like i think I like a all politician that's got this. no there's a certain like there's a certain kind of politician that uh, is almost auditioning for roles in the media post political career and mm. not really proposing bills and trying to govern and that's i mean they all like either from... they all either get a job in media or they are like nikki haley and they get like a board position at boeing 
for $2 million, no call, no show jobs afterward because they make like favorable calls towards those companies while they're in office. Yeah, I'll agree. They're, they often have shady post politics careers, but they don't all not focus on governing and focus instead on trying to get as much attention and sort of make themselves reality stars. I like that. I, 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 I think so. I think so little of these people. I, I like props, AOC, aids. MTG. Who oh, even again, is the people. House of Representative person for St. Louis? Like, I don't know them. No, I couldn't tell. Gun to my right, head. Nobody no knows. Marjorie Taylor They'd Greene is something They'd special like up there showing revenge 13. porn of Hunter Biden on television. Who's 13? Well, I was he was like, guessing that St. Louis like, had oh. a bunch. It wouldn't be yeah, 13. But I, it wouldn't be. Th- yeah. The whole well, state. Oh, no. How it. many do we have? We have like, I think we have 11. Or for the state. 10, 10 or 11. Yeah, in the state. Yeah. Yeah. So St. Louis probably, I'm making it up by maybe three. 13 but, too many? It was you said for the city. I was asking for the city. Oh, oh the I city. Mean, yeah. I yeah. The they probably have St. more than one. St. Louis but. is one of those cities that like gets less when they reevaluate over the years because the city property is separated. The murder from, rate. Well, <laughs> the murder rate is so <laughs> terrible. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. it's because the, the city proper is separated from the suburb. People don't know. St. Louis suburbs, incredibly nice, wonderful <laughs> place to live. The city I is had a question. Is um, I don't know if you guys saw, I don't know if this is real or not, but I saw something about Michigan possibly passing a law about misgendering people. And if you misgender them, it could be considered a felony. I don't know if it's true or not, but have you guys heard anything about that? In Michigan? I haven't heard yeah. about that. If it is, I don't like it because that's that's not very free speech. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we have to worry about anything like that. That sounds like Canadian uh, stuff with the compelled speech. That's what Jordan Peterson was so upset about, if you remember. I do. I, I have oh, not seen anything. Oh, there's a Michigan pronouns law. According to the news leak, Newsweek, it's probably unconstitutional. I'm, I wasn't aware of it either. Um, it doesn't it's definitely look like it's unconstitutional. If it's, it's just proposed. Yeah, if it's about like what you can say, you know, that's uncon. But I guess they already control what you can say in a lot of ways. Yeah, there's some ways you like you're not allowed to do hate speech, and then where the line for hate speech begins and ends is tricky. Yeah, I think it's not really the Constitution a- that that it's five tech companies' terms of service that dictate the ability to communicate in free public. Now it's not really the Constitution. Well, Twitter seems to be a bit more um, free-ish as of late, right? Kind of. I agree with both of you. Yeah, yeah. I, like, I think the hate does seem like is free speech. It is, yeah. You you don't need free speech to protect popular shit. Hold you up, need to protect I think, really unpopular. I think they speech. do have that. They have it on there, so you can't say sorts and things like if you call someone a slut, you would get in trouble for that on Twitter. I think. Well, that's yeah, just an I, insult, really. But what if they be. were a slut though? Is it an insult <laughs> or is it a fax? <laughs> what if they wow, were a slut? Mean, well, <laughs> check me. <laughs> yeah, I, I do like that about your your Twitter, John. I, I see it. And when girls tweet at you in a way where they're trying to get attention from you, you just block them. You don't respond to women on social media. You say, that's not for me. I'm not interested. Is that something you, so the you stand only, by? So I do respond to some. It depends on what we're talking about. For example, if it's business related, I would talk to them without doubt. If they know something I don't know, like if they know something, like let's say if they got $2 million, specific quill path they've done, obviously they know something I don't know. In this scenario, a girl knows them. more than yeah. a boy? Come on. He's a humble guy. He's a top J. He goes for information anywhere that, that it's found. No, I'm not buying it. That. If someone has $2 million, they obviously got it somehow. And if they didn't have it before their career, within two years, Let they got tell you how dollars. to find a sick yeah. old man. Total morons can be multimillionaires, I assure you. No, that, that is true. <laughs> I agree. That can't be true. Which is why I like to find out exactly what they have to talk about. And mm-hmm. I'm pretty good at digging through information and finding if it's bullshit or if it's true. And if it's I true, you know, I like to find out. myself. Taylor, what do you think about running some sort of nursing home scam? Like where we mm. go in there and and what I'm thinking is we we go around, we find some of the old people who are not liking the way things are ran there. Mm-hmm. And we see if we can get them all to say that maybe at night things happen, that maybe they happen, maybe they don't. But the old folks are saying they happen, you know, and we cook up a little evidence uh, like better call Saul, but like more sinister. Yeah, we make up the abuse and stuff. It okay. never happened. 
Yeah. Where's where's the payoff? What do we? Well, get? we'll sue. We'll sue. We're gonna we're we're gonna be part of the the suit. We're gonna be we're gonna get involved with that. Uh, okay, dude. I don't even think we'd have to make shit up. There's a million videos of like old guys having like in a nursing home having to have their bedding changed and then some attendant beating the shit out of them. There's there's a ton of those videos. So we well, can just find one of those videos, reverse track it. Well, that just sounds like. I mean, how else are they going to learn, right? That's like. No, I don't. I, I do. I don't think you should be elderly people. I'd make it kind of feel like failures though. against like, educating set up the a elderly, box. which is a kind of ageism. I would, it is. I would, you need to educate them. You know, spare the rod, spoil the boomer. The <laughs> like, grandma. <that's> the <laughs> spare the rod, spoil the boomer. I like that's it. That's what you got to do. You got to. I would allege. I would allege I hit my elders with a stick no wider than my thumb <laughs> to make sure <laughs> that, I'm, that I'm disciplining them correctly. <laughs> I would allege they were making what? the old lady use a litter box or something, something crazy like that. We can go along with this. I feel like we can really <laughs> make so some cash. Up. Yeah, right. Her, her poor knees are all fucked up, so she can't even squat over enough. She's yeah. spraying her old lady shit all over, and then you're like yeah. getting mad at her for for doing it. Yeah, I don't like the scenario I invented. It's upsetting. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> no, I, but I, I do I like your that's... idea. Yeah, so everybody I, likes the old. I have a question for John. So you have you done the training at Hustler University? Yeah, I, I have. Yeah, I like What's it. What's it like? Um, so in a sense, most of that information you can find on the internet. I will mm-hmm. say that is true. A lot of people do talk about it. I just like how easy it is to have all the information at one spot, so I don't have to swift through, you know, different websites and YouTube accounts to find all what the good courses. Information. Did you take? Um, I've done Hustling crypto one-on-one. on the what hustling uh one. drop oh, shipping what? and a couple yeah. other things what was it i missed before drop shipping i said crypto and uh drop shipping crypto and, and drop then like i've looked at a couple other ones but i haven't gone in depth how much is a course i believe if you want to sign up for hustle university is 50 dollars a month i believe that's what i thought and and does that get you unlimited courses or just... Yeah, it gives you everything that's in there. Okay. What are do, the courses you... made up of? Is it like a kind of like a college course where you log into a portal and then there's like a slideshow with a quiz at the end, that kind of thing? So yeah, th- there's a lot of test taking. And if you don't pass the test, you don't get to move on. Um, so you have to pass the test usually. And then the all sometimes they do live streams when the people that's teaching the course would go on and answer questions and stuff like that. I think it's actually pretty good. Okay. What what, what did would you, you say? Did you is try the... it? Did you try drop shipping? Did you try crypto? Yeah. So I didn't try uh, crypto from what they've done. I made my younger brother do that and he's actually pretty good at it. Mm-hmm. Um, I have tried drop shipping and I'm going to be honest. If you're going, if you're trying to find how to make a drop shipping website, like on YouTube, it's going to take you 10 times longer for Hustlers University. I was pissed because I made my website before Hustlers University, before I signed up. Mm-hmm. And I got on there and I looked at the dropship. It was like, are you fucking kidding me? It's, they give you the answer right here. And it took me like hours and hours to find something simple, how to fix a, you know, part of the website on YouTube. So I, I just like how convenient it is. They literally have every information you need for whatever course you're learning. Um, hmm. I think it's a lot easier. Like if you try and make a drop shipping website, I highly recommend doing it at Hustlers University because they teach you everything you need to know. Do they because give you I, uh, as far as drop shipping, do they have a specific a specific company that they're looping you in for your fulfillment? Or no. Okay. Like they they recommend uh what's it called? Shopify. You don't have to do Shopify though, like uh, oh. And then, for example, like let's say the products, they give you multiple options, really good ones. But, you know, before, like if you're trying to do drop shipping, there's not that many people you could really go if you're trying to get cheap products. Like usually if you're trying to get cheap products, it's usually China. If you're trying to do something more advanced, it's, which is what I did at first with, before I did Hustlers University, I found a local company in the States to sell drop ship their products, not realizing their products is just Chinese products. Anyways, it's just 
assembled mm. in the States. See, mm-hmm. that's like 90% of the stuff. If, the stuff you find on Amazon, for example, a lot of the stuff you find on there, you can find it for a tenth of the price on like Alibaba or something like that. And obviously it's, the shipping's going to take longer, but if you're trying to save money, tenth of the price is a tenth of the price. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you are you still a member of Hustler University or now that you've taken the courses you're you've you're interested in, you're dipping out? No, I am currently still a member because they they do add on new courses every week. Not not every week, my bad. Like every X amount of period of time they add on a new course. For example, just the other day on July fifteenth, or it might have been the fourteenth actually, they released AI and how to use AI to make like cartoons or anime and short mm-hmm. videos and how to profit off of that. Do you have access to the account now and you could read us the, the classes he's offering? I don't know if, if I could, I might get kicked out for that. Like, I know there's lots of real. He'd kick you out have. of the university? I, th- I might. Because I know when you sign up, there's a whole bunch of different rules. And like, that kind of sucks. Other universities let you know which classes are available. Yeah. No, they, they let you know what classes are available. Like, I can. I could read you the courses, I'm sure, but like in great detail, probably not. Yeah, yeah. Just right, like right, right. Obviously, the content in. is. Yeah, the content's definitely, we don't want that selling. for free. Okay. We just want to know, like, like, pussy eating. What, what, like, what kind of stuff is he? <laughs> pussy eating is <laughs> bullshit. I, I've, I've had sex for a long time. If the female orgasm was real, I'd have seen it by now. That's getting goddamn right. <laughs> dude, it's like, dude, the, what it's his like wife the... has assured him there's no such thing. That <laughs> yeah. it's bullshit. Mm-hmm. The clit, it's like they're the like, I can't find ever. the clit. Dude, the clit, let me tell you, it's like a red, it's a red herring. It's like cow tipping. It's not real. <laughs> yep. It's not That's fun. The... That should be the official position of the show. Is that the clit? <laughs> it, it's not. It's not the G spot that's made up. It's the clit. It's <laughs> <that's made up laughs> not real. And people want it. They they just say that to make you think that you're bad at sex. Like exactly. Oh, if you could find the clit, you'd be good. But it's not true. They just want yeah. you to feel bad about yourself. <laughs> yeah. So one of them is a uh, crypto uh, day trading, okay. uh, drop shipping, and then uh, AI, and there's a few other things on here like about walking out and, and fitness and all that stuff. Um, I believe there's six main ones that you can make money off of. I believe one of them is copywriting. Um, mm-hmm. Let me see. What's this other one? There's a couple that didn't you don't, spike don't, interest. You do what? not get into copywriting. If, if that, they're telling you to do copywriting as money, that's not true. Don't do that. Okay, stop no. there because that one really appealed to me. And, and the reason why is I feel like drop shipping and crypto are like the classic kind of, you know, oh, trust me, there's easy money out there. Mm-hmm. Copywriting. It's not easy money. You got to know what you're doing. Okay, I, I, I hear you. But sort of the meme or like, you know, the, the, the pitch is there's easy money. But copywriting, yeah. I'd never heard of before. Another one I heard of was, um, with like basic Photoshop skills, you can build corporate logos and there's a market out there. People pay a thousand dollars for what takes you 20, 40 minutes to do. And I was like, Oh shit. One, I don't have that skill. And it's like, yeah, shit. If you could go to hustle university, market yourself as a logo creator, maybe yeah. there's a business there. And the reason copywriting and logo creation appealed to me is because it's not as widely known as crypto and drop shipping. Like there, maybe there's the, the an actual I opportunity. Are, I, I, I do know about true. copywriting there. Copywriting is super saturated. Any, I have written copy. I can professionally write copy if I need to for any company that hires me easily. It's not hard if you're a good writer. Mm -hmm. The thing is, is that anyone can write decent copy. And now I get competent writing at all. Yeah. If you guys have ever heard of this, copy is the words for an ad. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, I should have said that. Yeah. Like if you, uh, when you see an article in a catalog, when you hear what we're reading in ads, that's called copy. The description of an item is sometimes called copy. Like when you, Mm -hmm. you know, you click on a t shirt. I think learning the skill of copywriting is extremely useful if you're doing like drop shipping, because then you know how to copyright yourself and then you don't have to go out and pay someone. Crazy the, the skill with copywriting is just writing. And when you're a better writer, you're better at articulating yourself because you can form sentences and, and, and thoughts better. The thing with being cop- like being a copywriter pursuing it is that it's so fucking cheap 
to get someone to write copy for you. And generally, an in, a company of any major size is not outsourcing copy. They have internal people who are familiar enough with the product or brand to write exactly oh, yeah. in the voice that they want. And so the idea that like you could just be like, hey, uh, I'm literate. Blue, blue apron. You need copy. They're going to be like, oh, no, that's taken care of. I'm like, no, you don't. You don't. We're not going to hire you. Like, you're not going to blow Blue Apron's mind with some revolutionary copy because it's advertising. The thing is, how many times in here do we have to mention the the URL? How many times in here do we have to say these specific words and not mention this specific word? Like, that's that's how that shit is actually structured. And so, do not learn copywriting if you're trying to make money because Are you anyone make money who's competent logos. Can do it. When, when that's the same thing. Kid, it's super saturated. You're not going to make money making logos. There are a thousand kids on Fiverr who can do it just as well as you. Yeah. And any major Better. company that's going to pay thousands of dollars for a logo is going <laughs> to use their in-house team. Yeah, correction. There's a thousand kids on Fiverr who can do it better than me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. But I, I only was uh, found those ideas appealing because I hadn't heard them before. Mm -hmm. they're, they're yeah. New yeah that. Me. Yeah. That. That. That sets a bell off for me, telling people to get into copywriting. No, no, no. Especially with AI right now. AI can already write competent copy. Already. Like, it's See, it's already I want over. A real, I want a real Hustlers University that actually teaches you how to commit crimes. Like, like here's some crimes mm, I'd like yes. to know how to commit more more effectively. I'd like to rob vending machines. Yeah, okay? I'm taking burglary 3000. I, I think, <laughs> I think about it like this. There's a lot of money in vending machines. Maybe a couple hundred dollars. No, there's right. not. <laughs> All right. Well, you learn as you go, Taylor. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna rob See? vending machine. We've already how much is already... a vending machine? Like six dollars. This, this is why you start somewhere. So you're telling me we're well, gonna have to hit a lot of them. There, there, ATM machines, Bible. Kyle. You need to learn to rob ATM no, machines. No, see, that's federal. There, there's a Bible I... who made a YouTube video, a music video, explaining on how to rob banks by stealing people's credit card information. Like, if you really want to learn that, just go listen. I, I can send you the song. Like. See, he made a whole problem. music video teaching people how to wall. You know what might be a good business, cards. Kyle? Mm. It seems really easy. Stealing catalytic converters. They're expensive, and you can get one in two and a half minutes with a Sawzall. Do in most cars South, even have shoot. those? All, all cars, cars have All those. modern cars have them. Oh, I It's part of the exhaust, a catalytic converter. Oh. Yes. Yeah, so, so, I, I thought don't know. they stopped putting them on. Oh, Am I like wrong? the new ones. Maybe no, not. Right. I mean, it the be Teslas. <laughs> wasn't it used to be like a smelly thing, or maybe they made it not smell bad or something? I, a that's catalytic converter removes pollutants from your exhaust, Timmy, and you see, it's very valuable to thieves because of the valuable materials inside: palladium, platinum, and many other precious metals. Is that really why it's valuable? Goddamn right. Yeah, they're expensive to make, and the uh, internet says all cars after 1974 have them now. Okay, Teslas and such, but let, let's just say <laughs> all what are they for? <laughs> It's the exhaust and wait, are you joking? No. Oh, it, through some kind of magic, when the exhaust passes it, it gets cleaner on the other side. Boom. Okay. Yeah, no, I did. That was probably a stupid question. I didn't know that. I, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It so it's a very expensive part of your car that makes your exhaust cleaner. And not only that, it's back there hanging off like a bull's balls or something. It's like, you want this? Because it's go to the back of any. Oh, is car. that that huge thing? Yeah, no, exactly. that's the muffler, the, the big thing in the back. That's for sound. In really? front of it is a is catalytic the, converter. Okay. It's that it tube like, that's uh, before the the muffler, right? That maybe fat. Zach can pull up a picture. If, if yeah. doesn't it do have like platinum in it or something like that? And that's why it does have platinum. There's a lot of rare metals in there, which makes them expensive. Yeah. On the very back is a muffler. There, that's a catalytic okay. converter. And there's the O2 sensor on it. What is the actual amount of money on or maybe you don't know? Like, a new one would be like could... 1200 1500. So oh, I don't shit. know how the stolen market works, but See that's a th probably ahead, way a few hundred bucks it's, maybe, a couple it, hundred. Right? Bucks. You think $250 for that? But if yeah. you have a sawzall, um ex muffler <laughs> tubing is very easy to cut through. You could get through it with a with a cordless sawzall and a good blade. Uh, and a good blade. And I really think each cut would take 15 seconds maybe yeah not more than 20 Damn. Yeah. so in under a minute Fast. you've got that thing removed and you're you know on your skateboard running away where do you go to, where do you go this car is all over on. the place no 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 like where do you <laughs> once i once i've got it in my hands do i already have to have a guy 
can I just Yeah, go? that's where Hustlers well, yeah. University comes in. I don't know how to sell it. Yeah, that's where Hustlers University it it looks looks hooked really up. Like, you got, <laughs> do you have $50,000 worth of catalytic converters and not know what to do with them? Hi, I'm <laughs> Troy McClure. You may remember me from such criminal enterprises as car thievery. Where do I find a chop shop? <laughs> yeah, but well, uh, where do I find So catalytic a converters go bad because um, they clog up. And uh, um, they're often stolen. So there's a market for them. No, if be- you just mount down the viable <laughs> metals, you can right. sell the metals almost anywhere. Oh, I didn't consider but that. But where do you go? Like, Yeah, so, right? Where do you find a chop shop? Where do you find someone yeah. who buys obviously stolen catalytic converters? I feel like I would go up there and they'd see that I didn't know what I was doing. And I'd be like, hey, gentlemen... You know what I would Cattle, do? With I, do you want a little bit of white china? And they're like, "What are you talking about?" And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> "It's like I'm not saying." You guys, you guys want I'm a sorry. catalytic converter, sir? That's a muffler. <laughs> that's a muffler. Put them on. <laughs> Fuck! No, no wonder no. I've been Here's, getting hosed. <laughs> Here's what you do: you put them on fucking Craigslist in that area. Wait for the guys who you just stole them from to buy them back from you. They're, a new Dodge Ram catalytic converter is thirty five hundred dollars or some shit. Mm-hmm. Selling for a grand a pop. You're killing it. Sir, this can't be fit your truck perfectly. Kyle right I'll there. put it back on there for you for about, you know fifteen hundred. They make guards. Dude, they make even like, the tubing guards that, protect them. That I cut fits your truck. What are the odds? Dude, I measured it perfect for you. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking tack it in there. That's what we do at Kyle's catalytic converter replacement service. That's what we do that at Kyle's you recently us. reclaimed con- catalytic converter. You just sent us a picture of, of, of the old pipes, and we come with one perfect. Look at this. I matched Ooh, you're, the you're, you're telling me that this came off, that this happened today. That's crazy because this is had, you can see here, it says Kyle on it. And I've and this has been like this for years. <laughs> you can buy yeah, it has the same armored, number. Sometimes the factories mix up. You can buy these armored plates now to protect your uh your oh. catalytic converter. It's called I can't it's got a, a a catchy name. It's called like a cat cage or some shit. But no, it's it's like armor plates that goes that's around. And, huh? That's good. That's a good sign that they're selling lots of things to protect valuable car parts now. I think in major hmm. cities, people's cars get get robbed all the fucking time. The Kia robberies. Dude, my brother and- my brother drives a Kia, and his insurance oh. has skyrocketed. Yeah, like oh, up really? like up forty fifty percent because of the the Kia boys stealing all the Kias. The one I, this is interesting because I, I really like that it's thought out to just be annoying as fuck. Dollars. That's four hundred thirty. I'll make. Fuck you! <laughs> Fuck. So you the, the, one the one I saw, the one I saw was like metal, and it shielded the entire catalytic converter, like it made it invisible, uh, you know, and, and sealed to the bottom. I of don't the car. see why I don't just cut to both sides. Oh, it's locked. I see. Yeah. So you have to cut the. I don't know if I brought a sawzall, I can get through that cable, right? Is it that hard? I saw. I saw a video the other day. Black dude caught a guy cutting his off. And he's holding him at pistol point, waiting on the cops to show up. Yeah. Thought you was gonna steal my shit. Fuck you, <laughs> dude. It when you look at cars as spare parts. So I used to be into off roading a lot. This is a long time ago, like more than fifteen years ago. And uh, like I would break a uh, a CV joint in my Tacoma, and it's like fuck, this is expensive. I can't find them in stock. This is an issue. But they're sitting all over here. They're just mm. parking lots full of Tacomas. I never did it, but it's hard not to you think. Go to a, if, have you ever? Would you ever go to the scrapyard and and get a part off an old truck? Because we would do it all the time. If we needed a, when we would like, we built a '55 Chevrolet kind of from scratch, and we needed mm. a front end. We went to the scrapyard and got a front end. You know? That makes sense. I didn't, kind of didn't have that skill set, like finding a junkyard and dealing with the junker I, so it was, if you yeah. ever want to get into it they, like like there there'll be you go to a major salvage yard and they'll have pulled all of the primo parts off of everything so if you were if you wanted say the side mirror off an acura that might just be inside on a shelf somewhere the trans all of the transmissions and and like the premium oh. little doodads that are they're in there on a shelf somewhere but you can go out into the fields out there and dig shocks and fucking. Yeah, I thought I would have to go and... out there with my own jack and remove the tire and make it happen. Maybe I would. That they would help you. They'd give you anything you want. In my experience, I, we've oh. done a lot of that. Like, like we would, we would go there all the time and get parts for all sorts of things. Yeah, yeah. I don't have any experience with that. I would just go to AutoZone and wait for t- 
ship. <laughs> yeah. O'Reilly. Think some of the, we've definitely bought transmissions from there before. Yeah, I think a couple of transmissions from there. Uh, rear ends, brake cal- brake stuff especially. It'll just be lying there. They've, they've already disassembled it off the cars. Hmm. It's probably a wrap, eh? Four hours in. Yeah, I can yes, see it that. Is. John, where can everybody Hungry. find you and your stuff? They can find me um, on Instagram, Business Jack 2022. Uh, YouTube, John Tent. Uh, Twitter is John Tent G. And then my website is streets.com with threes instead of E's. But All right. Those, cool. those are my main social medias. So check them out. Links in the description. Check out John. And also check out the sponsors Bird Dogs, Lock and Load, and of course, Ferro Distro. Mm. All right. PKA 657.